Hello everyone, welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're here to play some Nightfall, published by Red Raven Games. Hello, hello, hello everybody. Hello, how's it going? Welcome to joining live, welcome to joining later. Today we're going to be doing a full playthrough, full playthrough of an entire, entire campaign mode. Okay? In one stream. In one stream. Okay. So if you're new to the channel, we usually play kind of like longish streams. We go deep in games, we interact with our chat. We play multiple episode campaigns. We play legacy games, go all the way through that kind of stuff. Sometimes we quit in the middle just because it's not, not, not doing it for us. Um, but yeah, we usually play like, you know, pretty epic games. So when I saw this game, full disclosure, uh, I saw it was on the Gen Con 2022 list. Um, and then I was like, okay, Red Raven Games, we love Sleeping Gods. Uh, it's fantasy theme. The art looks good. Um, let's email them and see if we can grab a copy at, at, at Gen Con, like get one held or or get a press copy or something. And they said, uh, like right last minute, they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll get you one. But uh, the copies actually didn't show up to Gen Con on time. And I was interested because it's fantasy themed and it mentioned it had a campaign that you can play in one sitting. I was like, okay, okay, okay. It's fantasy themes, got a campaign. Okay, I'm already interested. Red Raven Games, Sleeping Gods behind it, you know? But I'm like, oh, this is a smaller game. It's not an epic Sleeping Gods kind of game. Um, and seeing the price of it, I was like, okay, it's like around a 40-ish dollar US game, maybe $30 you find on sale, that kind of stuff. Um, but I was like, what? It's got a campaign in there? No way, I have to try this. So I just asked them, you know? And uh, they were like, yeah, we didn't get them, uh, but we'll send you one. So I was like, okay, I want to try it. I'm, I'm super intrigued to see what you guys did here. Um, and yeah, so they sent us a copy. So full disclosure, we did not buy this with our money. Also, a little background. Uh, we've played a couple times. We played the co-op mode, which you need to know. You need to kind of know the standard mode. You have to read the standard mode rules. There's a standard, uh, like, 2v2 or, or 1v... No, 3v3, I think it goes up to or something. I forget. But you can basically... Maybe it's only a 1v1. I, I, no, it has to be higher players. No, it's like you can do 2v1. Yeah, a oh, four-player game. I think it goes up to four players. There's a skirmish mode. Like, you can tell I didn't care about the skirmish mode at all. Um, but this game, like, the main game mode is a skirmish mode. You sit down for, like, 30 minutes, and you have demons battling knights. And you go through the motions with some standees on a board. You fight, trying to, like, block damage, damage the other player, play cards, you know, move around, do range attacks, melee attacks, the standard generic stuff, Okay. But I didn't care about this, this, this regular standard mode, but you have to read the whole rules for how standard works. Then there's some rules, not complete, but there's some rules to play a co-op mode. It's, the rules that came in the rule book actually are broken. You can't actually fully play co-op mode. You'll get stuck and you'll have to like make up house rules, but they since put a PDF online clarifying some of those broken spots. Um, not frustrated at all with that. Uh, but we were learning the game was a little rough. So we then had to learn the co-op mode. Uh, so we never played the standard mode. So we played co-op mode a couple times. Okay. So there's a co-op mode where you can have just one side. If you're playing up to three players only, you can play one side fighting against the demons. Like play the knights against demons. You can't do it the other way around though. There's only an AI deck for the demons, not the knights. Very weird. Um, and then there's also a campaign mode they, they tacked on here with a story mode by Ryan Lockett supposedly. It's got its own rules, but you need to know the standard rules. You need to know the co-op rules and the campaign rules to play the campaign. So I had to learn three different modes just to get in here to play this campaign mode. A little frustrating, especially when they're not complete. Um, we were going to stream this game in the co-op mode, three-player. I had it scheduled and everything. Uh, Kyle wasn't able to come. Mel and I were going to play it two-player. And to be honest, at the time, I didn't know there was an updated rule book posted recently on BGG because it wasn't in the file section. It was hidden in the rules section by the designer. Anyways, um, but we played the co-op mode a couple times, and honestly, I was not interested. I was not interested in even playing the stream that night. When Kyle couldn't come, I was like, okay, maybe we'll play a three-player co-op, and it'll be more interesting. As soon as he canceled, I was like, I don't even want to play this co-op game. It's so, like, so... I don't know, simple, boring, like nothing interesting. It's lame, feels tacked on, wasn't finished. I don't know, kind of garbage. Um, but I was all in for the campaign mode. So I, I kept the stream today, the, the stream I scheduled also this stream, because I wanted to try the co-op mode, show that off. Because I know there's a lot of co-op fans on the channel. You know, you can play that solo too. 
but it's like honestly it's not worth your time i, I don't think it is personally if, if you look at the kind of games i like it, it's not worth your time but again it's like 30 bucks so like you know if you're bored you want to play for 20 minutes like okay but there's a lot more games out there for 20 minutes you could you get more out of in my opinion but anyways so we're here to play the co-op mode which is the only thing that interests me in the whole box okay Camping. Campaign mode. Camp campaign mode. Thank you, Mel. No problem. No problem. Thank you, Mel. <laughs> so today we're playing the campaign mode. You will never see the co-op mode played, but even though we're playing co-op, we still are playing the co-op mode. You kind of see how it works a little bit. You'll get the idea. Yeah. You'll get the idea. But just playing one-off little one skirmish, you, like, can you play the co-op mode? It's the same every time. There's no difference. You just, like, kind of randomize the map, and it's still the same layout, and you're just, you know, I don't know. It's weird. Very boring. Very boring. Um, but that's me. In my opinion, you got it there. So if you're, yeah, anyways, but there's probably other videos out there. You'll see where people will play the skirmish mode and they'll play the, the co-op mode alone. And, or you can check out the rules in BGG. Actually, let's go there. Let's go there. So here's the game on BGG. Um, again, by Alex or T Alex Davis or Davies um, and Ryan Lockett, who did the, the campaign mode published by Red Raven Games. It's only a 2.0 weight. This is like a very, Simple, simple-ish game. Supposedly, it's, community says it's two to four, six, the best with four. So you can play up to six players. My, okay, I stand corrected. So maybe you can't play. You can play 3v3 in the dual mode. You can only play up to three players in the co-op slash solo mode. And you can only play two player in the campaign mode, okay? Keep that in mind. If you're buying this to play the whole bunch of people, you can only play the little dual mode for a half hour. Okay? Or or 45 to 60 minutes. Um, if you're playing the co-op mode, it's even shorter, and it's just up to three. On one side, only playing the knights. And then um, campaign mode, you can play one or two players. And that's it. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but, but I just want to show you guys, this is like... I was getting frustrated with the rules. I just need you guys. I'm, I'm like trying to be really upfront, open, and honest about this game. It, it's like didn't feel complete when we opened it up, started playing with it uh, last weekend, and then through the week, um, I was super frustrated with it. But then I was like, okay, now it's time for me to do my usual with a game that feels like kind of incomplete. Uh, let's go to the the BGG forums and see what's going on. And right away, red flags, red flags. This game's out in retail. It, you know, it was. Uh, hot game at Gen Con, even though it didn't arrive there, but they were demoing it and stuff. Um, but it was very, it was, I think it was very popular on the list. I think people were like, I think it was like people thumbing, were interested. thumbsing it up. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's ranked 53, or sorry, not ranked 53. Only has 53 posts, period. I was like, uh oh. And then when you look down, more than half are rules questions. <laughs> That's how you know you got a red flag when more of your posts are about what the hell is going on in your rules. How does the game work? I can't play it. Uh, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. Like people aren't as interested. They're not generally talking about the game like, hey, cool, where do I buy this? Or hey, what do you guys like the best about it? You know, no, people are coming here just going, man, WTF, what do I do in this situation? Or when there's a tie, how do we break a tie? Like in co op, how does the AI even work? These cards don't even make sense. Um, so yeah. So I'm just letting you guys know up front, if you're okay digging through BGG, again, it's only 29 posts because the game's not popular, at least not yet. Um, still fairly new, I think, mm -hmm. because it looks like people have only been asking questions for the last like two weeks, or well, maybe a month. So it looks like it came out about a month ago. Okay, so in the last month, yeah, look at lots of questions. And then the designers in here answering questions, at least they were for a bit, which is awesome. Uh, and then you can tell they were getting frustrated with the questions, so then they updated the PDF for the rules and then just dropped it in here as like a post. So if you're looking for the updated rule book, it's hiding here in this post right here from this guy, Ryan Lockett. Designer, publisher, latest version, the Dropbox link is here. I don't know if I put this in the, in the video description, but I'm going to because I want you guys to be able to look at it before you even touch this game you can check out all the modes, because I'm not playing all the modes on the channel. I, I refuse to play the other modes on the channel. But uh, you might find it fun for a little $30 co-op campaign game or something. Um, yeah, I did put the updated rulebook in the video description. So if you want to check out the latest rulebook, if you've been playing this, you're frustrated, you're like, okay, I'm going to go watch a YouTube video, and you clicked, you came here later, and you're here watching in the future, and you're like, oh, I want to see how this campaign works, or I couldn't figure out the co-op mode. Why? 
Why, when, what do you do in this situation? How do you break ties? How, how does the AI move when this happens? Because the rule book doesn't cover it. Um, yeah, check out this rule book. It'll help you in more situations than the, the one you had in the box will. Uh, and it's linked down below in the video description. Okay, I just want to get that away super upfront. Like, I don't want anyone like take it out of your cart right now. If you like, we're about to buy this game. And you're like, oh my God, Rob's playing it. I must buy it. Or it's Red Raven Games. They're known for quality. Uh, this isn't up there with Sleeping Gods. This isn't like a Sleeping Gods game, okay? Just keep that in mind. Um, another thing... Yeah. Doesn't mean the game's not fun, doesn't mean it's not cool, doesn't mean it's not for you, but I need to point these things out. Because it's like, they're kind of like a rarity for the games we play on the channel. And I, I like to highlight this stuff. Because it matters for some people, it matters for me. Because, um, like, even if a game's fun, you still have to learn the game to get to the fun. And if that part's not fun and, hurt and like, is incomplete and is half-assed, uh, sometimes you never get to the fun game. So, I just want to put that out there. Some people hate, like, struggling and sitting on BGG forums and waiting for developers to answer their questions. Uh, all right. I also want to highlight something which I learned before and made sense is I think I learned this after we got it. Uh, what was this game called before? This game was on Kickstarter. I don't remember. This one. one. This game used to be called Rift Nights. It was a canceled, failed Kickstarter, okay? So anyone who's like, man, Kickstarter is not a pre-order system. Well, I'm sitting here playing a completed game that failed on Kickstarter. Oh my god, the project will never happen because they didn't get their money on Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I learned this is a failed game. Nobody wanted to back it. Well, okay, 1,100 well, 1, people wanted to back it. It did fund. Okay. <laughs> this goes into the whole rabbit hole of fake funding goals, everybody. We can talk about a bunch of projects that have... They wouldn't make as much as we really needed, but uh, we did only need this according to Kickstarter, but... We actually needed like 10 times more, whoops. Um, but in this case, the funny part, they canceled it because they weren't getting what they needed, but they didn't need anything because they still made the game. So that's weird. And that explains some of the rushed, unpolished, placeholder art kind of feel of this game, like, and, and the buggy rule book and the kind of slap together rule book and the, you know, it's, it's like they paid for all the art and the game design and they were like, you know what, let's just release this thing anyway and try to recoup some costs and, and get the game out the door. That's how it feels. So just so you guys know. But uh, I haven't played the campaign, but we're going to play it today. So maybe that'll totally change my impressions. These are my impressions after playing co-op mode, I think, three times we played it. So just so you know. Okay? Just want to be out, out there, up front, open and honest. There you go. This is what I know. This is what I know. All right. Um, hmm. Before we get into, I don't know, you have any other nope. stuff? Nope. Okay. I think that's good. Okay. I just, I just need to get that off my chest. I, know, I didn't I want to forget. I didn't want to get to the end of the stream and be like, oh, by the way, guys, and everyone's all left. And I'm like, oh, there, there's this. And they already went and bought it. And oh, gone, yeah, yeah. You know? No, no, no. That's no problem. But I just want to give a shout out to Robin Williams and Patrick, who both became uh, members to the channel uh, between our last oh, yes. stream. And I think Patrick was right before we went live. <laughs> who is here? Thank so, you, Patrick. Thank you so much. I just want to give you a shout out and say thank you. So yes, much. thank you. Thank you. Thank My name should be in the credits already. I did put them in there. I just forgot. Yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah. All right. So, with that out of the way, let's have some fun. Let's check out this campaign mode that can be played in a single sitting. Okay. It's kind of like intrigues me. You know, when you, <laughs> you know, when you hear about those games when they're like, you know, every year there's a new game on Kickstarter that has the big tagline, like, you know, 4X in an hour. 4X in one sitting, 4X in less than two hours, the fastest 4X game ever, full 4X experience in, li in like 20 minutes, 4X in your pocket, you know? <laughs> Add water, complete 4X game, you know, whatever they say, right? Mm -hmm. This game intrigued me because they were like three to four hour campaign, like three or four hours per sitting, because that's usually what I play. Yeah, right, eh? <laughs> They're like, no, no, the full game in three to four hours, done. So buckle in, this might be like a four, five, six hour stream, I don't know, maybe it's 
three hours? I, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we die. Maybe we die and fail. I don't know. I think you can keep playing as long as you keep having uh, knights to play with. So, like, obviously, if we die, we just grab another one, you know, and there's, like, a whole bunch. So I'm assuming we'll get to the end. Um, but we've not played it. There's a whole story section in the book that we'll read through. You guys will help us make choices. Um, and we are trying to save, like, villagers, find keys, relics, items, and fend off these demons. We're knights that are, like, kind of trying to kind of survive the night is usually what the standard mode's about. Is like, you're some knights... Um, you're some knights basically trying to protect some elders who are trying to close a gate that is summoning, like, demons are coming out of this gate. And you're trying to find this little girl named Eleven. I was, Eleven. I was like, this sounds like a TV show. So, so you try to find this little girl named Eleven, and she goes to this underground bunker, and she's trying to, like, close the gate with her special powers. And then, oh, no, wait. Oh, <laughs> never mind. That's a different story. Uh, sorry. I'm getting, close, though. I'm close. getting them all confused. But anyways, um, yes, there is a gate where demons are coming out of. That's the other side in the default game. And you are the knights trying to like survive the night, night surviving the night, um, trying to keep these elders alive while these elders are trying to use their powers to close the gates. And the demons are trying to kill all the elders while summoning uh, minions. And you can summon, uh, or you can have uh, golems uh, that you can control, which are like little minions. <laughs> but yeah, so. Also, remember we were talking, so Daniel, no, we don't talk. Daniel G is here today. Remember we were talking about No, the no, we weren't talking about anything. Daniel no, no, is aware no. of that. No, no, no. Yeah. Daniel says, I saw the message <laughs> about the game you bought just for me. <laughs> no, I really bought it for the free shipping on my order, but hey, other than that. <laughs> I was going to just add a couple packs of sleeves. They were out of stock. And I was like, you know what? I need to add just a cheap game to get that free shipping. And I'm like, it's not like free shipping. Because it's like the shipping's like $11. So it's like kind of like if I buy another game. And you know, all know I have like a wish list of endless games that you guys recommend or I want to get that retail that I leave. And some of them I'm like, no, not right now. I'll leave them on my wish list for a while. Maybe I'll add them onto order in the future. You know, maybe I'll be more interested later. So I'm looking through my wish list. Everything is pre order out of stock. And then, I, and then I was about to just give up and cancel the whole order and be mm -hmm. like, I don't even want half this stuff right now. I don't care. I'll just wait till later and, and place the order. And then uh, I went and uh, I had the G.I. Joe deck building expansion on my wish list still. And supposedly Renegade Games is sending that to us. I, I don't know if it's ever shown up, but they said they'll send it to us. And uh, so I just was like, you know what? I'll just take it out of my wish list, even though, even though I really want it, even though you guys don't want me to play it. I still want to get it. Mm -hmm. um, so then I was like, I took it on my wish list. And I was like, damn, I wonder when, when those deck building games are showing up. And I was like, oh, what about that other deck building game that they aren't going to send us? And I was like, oh, yeah. Basically, it's like $11 discount. If I add that on the order, I get the free shipping. Okay, I see. Yeah, okay. And it was in stock. And it was in stock. It was like, so yeah. It was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, let's throw it on there. Let's do it. Um, yeah. We Let, did want to play it. Let's stream it for three people. Yes. We did want to play it. <laughs> Maybe only one person. And if Daniel... You're and not, if Daniel if, can't show up, Daniel, then I don't know what we're going to do. Daniel, we need to work together to figure out the best day to play that so that you're <laughs> available. Because if you're not here, uh, I, it's, it's, I don't want to go back... To those, all for nothing. I don't want to go back to those days in like 2012 we're streaming or whatever, 2013 we're streaming to like nobody. Nobody's chatting. There might be a couple of people watching, but nobody was chatting. It was the empty chat. For like three hour games of like Dark Souls board game and stuff. I mean, we were able to focus on the game in those situations. There were other games too. Yeah, we were able yeah, to focus on the Yeah, we could just put game. our head down and, and play. But it's so funny. We get like one. I remember back in the early days of streaming, we'd be playing a game and we were streaming it on YouTube. And then it's like, or even on Twitch, I remember. And we'd have like 10 people watching or like three people watching and stuff sometimes. Anywhere in, the, in between there. Mm -hmm. And then like halfway through, all of a sudden you just get one random person just going, Hey guys, you missed this, or this rule, you're playing this rule a little weird, or this, I think it's supposed to work this way. And that was it. You get like one message, the whole chat, the whole stream, and all it was is to correct one thing. Just one time in the whole stream. I was like, wow, thank you so much. That's amazing. It was such a good feeling. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Now I have no problem looking up and people going, Rob, you missed I this. Know, Rob, right? you missed this. And the point up, don't forget this. Rob, you missed this. Oh my God, free forgot. It's like, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> it's so different how it used to be. Uh, the climb, the climb up the hill. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> and now, yeah, nowadays Daniel says you get interrupted by gifted subs. I know. What is that? Like, I don't know what I like better. The quiet. The chat staying quiet and just watching. Sit there and be quiet. <laughs> you just watch and keep your mouth shut. But it's cool what it's grown into. I know. I'm just joking. But it's funny how it used to be, though. Oops. Yeah. No, I remember those days. Yeah, yeah. You'd be streaming, like, for, like, hours. Go take a break. Come back. And, like, oh, there's a message. Like, one time in the whole stream. <laughs> now we miss so many. Yeah. We can't even read them all I out, love it. I out love loud. Because I remember when we, when it was kind of at that manageable level where, you know, one would come up every now and again and we could read it out and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Now we can't read everybody's messages. We do read them. I do at least. Mm -hmm. But I can't, we can't read them out loud. Yeah, fun times. Yeah. Fun times watching grow. Um, but yeah. Thank you all. Yes, thank you, thank you. Okay. Um... <laughs> Are we getting to, into it already? I guess so. Sure, whatever. Nobody has any distracting. We're gonna be here today. forever. It's a full campaign today. We gotta get it to the business. You know, everybody's just Sunday lying on the couch watching us. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's all different times around the world. I know. Right? Like, I know. I'm some of them should be going to bed right now, probably. <laughs> some of them are sleeping, but we're still on in their other room on a monitor <laughs> somewhere. They're gonna run when we scream in our mics. Yeah. Uh, okay. So they give you this big pad because this campaign is obviously replayable um and on this little map here you're going to be wandering around this map and you're kind of investigating little numbered locations and yes i think the map's the same every time and the storybook so the rule book is half rule book and half storybook so when you get Halfway through rules, once you read all the standard rules, 29 pages of standard rules, co-op rules, and campaign rules. And again, we've not played the campaigns. We read the rules, but we're going to have to go over them again for sure today. Um, just to make sure we do it as right as we can. But do not expect us to get all the rules 100% in this game. Because uh, whoever wrote this rule book didn't expect you to get the rules 100% correct in this game. Uh, so, this is the Nightfall campaign storybook introduction here by ryan lockett so there the rules for campaign are only a couple pages that are different um and it tells you kind of like how to get started but we're going to be roaming around on this map investigating spots and then going to the storybook section to read uh read the entries and make decisions and you guys can get involved on that it should be fun i got mel set up with the computer so she can type uh she types way faster than me she doesn't need to stare at the keyboard half the time and uh, hopefully she can type some poll options like really fast, like just some quick. Well, they should only be numbers anyways, but yeah. Oh, yeah. But even so. They are all A and B. I didn't look. I never looked in this before. No, I, I put based on this. I just like assumed like where to go. I didn't even know that there would be options in there, but I just figured it'd be like, okay. No, I knew there'd be options in here. I talked about oh. it, but then. Um, I just assumed it was numbers. Yeah, I was thinking for even, the options in the so. story because it's supposed to be a branching path maybe yeah but it's the same map every time and you were trying to wander around we're going to investigate these spots like this well right here for example you could investigate this well that's number one you go to the storybook you read number one and maybe it just tells you some story and you go on your way maybe it gives you a choice based on that choice you go read another entry sometimes you can uh basically lock yourself out of locations based on something that happens uh, and it will tell you to cross off numbers as soon as you explore a number you circle it to show where you've been so you can go back to a place you've circled and explore again because you may have gotten a key you need or some villager or um, uh, a relic you need or something. I don't know. I'm just assuming based on uh, kind of what I read from the rules and kind of how this is laid out and what they described. So I'm only guessing like that we're going to experience this all together. Anyone who's not played this, we've not played this. So I'm kind of excited um, to see how this goes. And while we're moving around, so you can move from zero to two spaces. So you can like wander to different squares or, of the grid. So I could like, I think we start here and, uh, we could like wander to here. For example, there's nothing to do here. So you can go zero to two spaces. If you don't explore on your turn, you can actually move an extra space. And then on the next turn, we could say not move at all. And we could go and explore 18 right here and circle it. Then we go to the book, read 18, 18 might tell you now, cross off number one you can't go back there ever again because of what happened and eventually it tells you when you've run out of time so every round when we move on the map you cross off a time 
when you're done all your time and you get to the end, every time is crossed off, you go to 28 and do what 28 is. I think you can probably go to 28 before the end if you feel you're ready, but there's a whole point system to this where you want to kind of, it's just a score thing at the end when you finish. I guess you read the story and then add up your score. Um, I saw there's a score thing here in the rules. Uh, so you can like calculate your final score. So based on knights who stayed alive and relics you have and res villagers you rescued and elders you rescued and unspent scrolls or keys, one point for unused elixirs, 10 points if you're playing normal mode, which we're going to play, 20 if you're playing hard mode, and 30 if you failed the, minus 30, sorry, if you failed the campaign. So obviously you don't want to like just run right to the final fight because I'm sure you need things to help you. And villagers and relics, they kind of give you abilities to kind of beef you up and grow and evolve during this campaign. Um, you might want to have your knight all healed up maybe or something. I, elixirs, I'm not sure they says during battle on your turn, you may lose one elixir to restore health of your knight completely. So you might want to go find more elixirs before you go into the final fight kind of thing. Um, the villagers, it says, you may find villagers when you do mark the appropriate villager on your sheet. Retrieve their card from the villager deck. So there's a villager deck over here. This is the AI deck. And this is their knight power deck. So every turn we're just kind of like drawing cards. And they're multi-use cards. Uh, so you can choose to do like uh, ability on the top of the card, ability on the bottom of the card, or even a minor ability. It's not that great uh, on the back of the card, uh, which is neat. So this one, for example, you could uh, do a range attack for two damage or do two, two range attacks, I guess is how it is. Um, or you could use this ability. This one's a seal, so it actually can go in front of you and, and create a passive effect. But if you use this part, you can't do this bottom part. If you do the bottom part, you can't do the top part. Or you could just do the back part where you could do a melee attack, a range attack, move one space, increase your defense by one, heal for one, or use some magic, which is you need magic to do your ability on your knight. Okay? So we're going to be trying to build ourselves up to make it so we can do more things on our turn. Um, and the relic cards and villager cards here, it shows a couple examples. Um, you can get a relic card that could just, I guess you use it in combat to just do some damage for this one. And this villager, it says relics cost two fewer coins. So they kind of help you out as you go forward if you want to buy relics, I guess. Um, and we'll be using these tiles as we go. Sometimes we'll, I guess we'll come into combats because it's, it's, that's the main game is of this game. The main competitive game and the co-op game are you setting up these maps and uh, just fighting each other on them. And uh, so sometimes we'll come into fights on these, these map tiles and there's two sides. So we'll build little maps as we come into encounters, I assume, and then we'll kind of fight on those. Uh, and you'll see how that part works when we get there. Yeah, battles. Battles are a thing. Yeah, battles are a thing. Um, and yeah, so when we move around, we're going to be writing on this map. So I just want to show that sheet. We don't need to have that. Uh, we can probably put this on a clipboard to make it easier to write on. Um, but we're wandering around the map, and then on the back side, we're kind of keeping track of rescued villagers. And it even tells you what they do. So you could, I assume, replay this, because I'm assuming you're not going to, in that time limit, you're not going to be able to get all of these, and since they're scoring you on them, they might you might kind of like uh, Destinies, I feel. You might kind of like learn the best route to go, oh, and yeah. where to like get the best things you want to play with. Because they even describe here what they do, so I'm assuming the reason why is because next time you play, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, we got to get that blood amulet. Remember that one. Let's go get it. Um... Yeah, it says you may use once per battle on your turn. I don't know, I guess there's like a cost to them or something. I don't know what this is. How much money or how many scrolls to buy it, I think. I think that's what it is, but I'll check. You can write your players, your date and difficulty, fallen knights, rescued elders, and kind of like, you know, keep a record of how you improved playing the campaign mode over and over again, I guess. And supposedly we can buy scrolls. Uh, at any time for five coins each, but you can't buy keys, you can't buy elixirs, you can't buy coins with coins. I guess that makes sense. Uh, so yeah. Let's check. Actually, let's check here. So I know we're going to start, we're going to have to, uh, each draw. I can't these either yet. Sorry, I oh yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, we'll, uh, each get two knights and we can kind of like pick your knight and, uh, these are the demons. We'll shuffle these up. Okay. And out of these knights. So here's a knight. Oh. Man. Let's get that knight up there. Hello, knight. 
Um, there's the knight. Uh, so, for example, I get to choose from the Wraith Knight. So, the knights, you can spend two magic to do their abilities. Many times you can spend magic for them. Uh, this guy can deal two damage to one adjacent enemy, then deal one damage to one enemy adjacent to the first target. And then they have a passive ability, deal two damage to a close or adjacent enemy whenever another knight or elder is killed. And they start at one armor and six health. I don't know if they all do that, I'm assuming. Some of the demons have like different health values and stuff, I know. Uh, and then the other knight I have to choose from is the flame knight. He has the halo of fire ability here. Choose a close, so in the same space as you, or an adjacent tile. Uh, so in a close or adjacent tile, deal one damage to all enemies there and place fire token. Uh, and there's these little fire tokens that come with the game. Everything standees and tokens with the game and cards. There's no miniatures. Um, hence the like $30 to $40 cost. Uh, enemies that move on to or off that tile take damage. Okay, so you put some fire down and start burning things. Uh, burning blade, your melee attacks damage all close enemies. Ooh. Okay. Is there one that stands out to you? I don't know. You want to see mine? Does that matter before you pick? No. And again, if, if your knight dies, uh, you just draw another one and keep going. But obviously we lose points for that, so we kind of want to like keep our knights alive and keep going. Um, I think I'll do the Wraith Knight, and we'll shuffle this guy back in. So there's a chance we could see the Fire Knight eventually. But those up. Uh, and I, don't, you, I don't know, actually. I think... You have the Holy Knight. Holy Knights, Batman. Uh, deal two damage to one adjacent enemy. Heal two to... An ally close to the target. Mm. I mean, heal is good. Yeah, we gotta keep these elders alive and, and keep ourselves alive. Healing aura, heal yourself or a close ally one when you move to a new tile. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And the other knight you have to choose from is the Earth Knight. Uh, place a slag golem, which is kind of like another minion, uh, on a closer adjacent tile and move an enemy there one. Slag like golems have two health and take two actions at the start of your turn. And, and the minions can only do basic actions, uh, and they can only move, heal, or attack. And this, well, these ones have two health, so when you attack them, they kind of lay the minion down. And if it's their turn and they, they have one damage on them by laying the, the minion down, they have to heal for their first action to stand back up, and then they can like move or attack. Uh, going after their, their AI like targeting priority if they're the minion on the AI side, or the enemy side, the rival side, whatever. But our side, we can choose what they do. Um, when you or a slag golem damage a close enemy, you may move them one. I'm thinking about taking the holy knight. Holy knight, I for would For the heal. I would too, for sure. It just seems, seems good. I would too, for sure. Seems good. <laughs> Jerry says, still 12 a.m. Uh, it's, it's still 12 a.m. Still early here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, that's crazy. Yeah, usually we see people in Jerry's neck of the woods like show up for our like uh, later streams around like 8 p.m. They all mm -hmm. start showing up our time because mm -hmm. uh, it's like, you know, 8 a.m. their time kind of thing, um, which is cool. Okay, uh, so that's done. Let's see here. What do we got? Uh, that's cooperative mode. Let's check the campaign stuff. So basically in the campaign mode, explore the countryside and read from a storybook as you en endeavor to rescue villagers before the final battle in the Abbey. To set up the campaign mode, follow the standard instructions on 6 to 7 with these changes. Place the location tiles in a pile. Done. Shuffle the cooperative card deck. Done. Uh, retrieve a page from the campaign map. Done. Return these components to the box. So there's normally like a victory point tracker and stuff. You play within the standard mode. We're obviously not using that here. Uh, write your chosen difficulty. Mel, this is you. <laughs> uh, so players, Mel and Rob. Difficulty standard or whatever. What is the date? Or medium. October medium difficulty. 2nd. Yeah, let's do medium difficulty with four elixirs. So I don't know where elixirs go right here. Just right that we have like four, you know, put like four of them or something. I, I don't know. Okay. Probably should use a pencil because we'll be changing numbers. Oh yeah, time. good call, good call. I kept saying I have a pencil. I just have for one this, as so. well. Sorry. <sighs> Sorry. All right. 
How to play. First read the introduction on page 30. Okay. Introduction. The elder had arrived only a few hours ago, stumbling weakly with the loss of blood. His message, Thornamar Abbey was under attack. The rift to a strange netherworld resting in the heart of the mountains beyond, the evergreen forest had been fastened tight by the elders for decades, but tonight it was growing weaker by the minute. As the inebriated patreons argued over the best way to bind the elders' jagged leg wound, word spread through the village of uncanny eyes and disturbing noises in the woods. Several townsfolk were already missing from where they were expected to be at this late hour. Had dark visitors already emerged from the rift like an old foe you had almost forgotten dropping by for an unexpected visit? As quiet panic spreads like a pox, you've been summoned from a comfortable chair near glowing embers to meet the dark wind and face a swarm of otherworldly beings. You have little time to spare. You must arrive at Thornmar Abbey by midnight. The abbey looms beyond the forest, beckoning you to either a grand victory or to or your true journey's end but you must first search the valley for stray demons who might cut down the entire village before you think to spare a backwards glance you clasp steel in cold hands and begin to search there's a little picture there um all right okay we're not losing just the yeah. Oh, yeah. Even though it said we could, we're not going to. Oh, we're going to. <laughs> We've never played before. And all, all we play is a little co-op mode to know like how that works, but I don't know if that was enough training. <laughs> it's okay. We... we have help from the chat today. So. Okay, okay. You guys will lead us in the correct direction, I'm sure. All right. Uh, after that, players take turns exploring the map and reading from the storybook. On your turn, you may move zero to two squares and then explore. Read a storybook number. You may choose not to explore and move one extra square. After moving and exploring, cross off one time box on the side of the map. Okay, so we know that. Okay. When you cross off the final box, you must immediately read 28, which is the final battle at the Abbey. Use pen slash pencil slash marker to show your location on the map with the dotted line. Mark your path. You may move anywhere, but you can not cross water. To cross a river in the middle of the map, you must move on one of the four bridges. You start in the center of town at the square with the well. Okay, I was right. After moving, drawing a dotted line, you may read one of the story numbers in your current square. Circle the number like I explained before. Um, turn to the number in the book, read it out loud. Sometimes you get to make a choice, or you must make a choice. That's where I got that from. Some choices require you to lose something, like a key or a coin, or uh, uh, to make the choice. You cannot make these choices if you cannot lose a specified resource. Okay. If it instructs you to cross off a number on the map, you may not visit it again on a future turn. You can, however, explore a circle number that has not been crossed off. When the storybook instructs you to gain a keyword, write it on your keyword list. Oh, down. Okay, I see. Um, so write it on your keyword list. Make sure to follow the correct instructions if you have a specific keyword. Resources. As you explore, you gain keys, coins, scrolls, lectures. Write these on your sheet. When you lose a resource, write the new total on your sheet. Also, at any time, you may purchase a scroll for five coins. So there's the relics. Anytime outside of a battle or reading from the storybook, you may pay scrolls and or coins to buy relics. When you buy a relic, mark it on the sheet. So we can just buy any relic on the sheet? I thought... I thought but we have to have... So we need to have coin? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So when, if we have enough to purchase so, them, okay. yeah. So we'll talk... That'll be another decision Oh, that'll then. be another, yeah. Yeah, okay. I thought we found the relics, but it's only we find villagers, I think. Yeah, it says, as you explore, you may find villagers. I assume we also find these relics. Maybe we will as well. Maybe there's both options. Uh, I, don't I don't know. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. But there's only, like, one card for each, so I don't think so, but... Uh, okay, so when you buy a relic, mark it on the sheet and retrieve the appropriate card from the relic deck. Relics can be used once per battle. So villagers, as you explore, you may find villagers. When you do, mark the appropriate villager on your sheet, retrieve the card. Uh, villagers are passive bonuses that apply as soon as you gain them. Elixirs during battle on your turn, spend one, restore your health. We talked about it already. This is a free action on your turn, but you cannot do it during anyone else's turn. Defeat. If all your knights are defeated, you lose the campaign, add up your final score. Uh, battles. We'll talk about battles when that happens. And then there's these things like we fight against two demons, but there could be looming demons that kind of wait in a queue and come in a, uh, later, but it's always, it's always only max two demons on the board is what that's saying. And then there's some modified rules that change how combat works from the co-op into the campaign mode. 
Um, talks about setting up battles, the final battle. We'll, we'll check this out. That's it. That's all the campaign rules. So that's all we really need to know. Then let's just carry on. Okay, so I'm just going to flip this over because yep, we yep. are starting here. Yep. So based on that, I don't know what it'll look like on the green screen here. Oh, yeah, you oh, can see. Perfect. Okay, so uh, on the tile we're on, so again, you can move zero to two spaces, then you can explore if you want. If you don't explore, you don't have to, you can move an additional space. So in this little square here where we start at the well, there's space number one, there's 19, and I think that's it. I think that's it. We could move here, for example, go to seven, check what's going on in this little pen over here. We could like there's go over, for sure. we'd go over here to six to check what's going on with this house, or 20 for this house, 15 for this house. We could go up here, one, two, and cross the bridge. That's the only spot you can cross water, so we couldn't go like one, two. We have to like go through the bridge, I guess. There's number 12 here, a cemetery. There's two here, which is uh, like some kind of church or something. I mean, that's a weird thing on top of the church. Mm. <laughs> I think it's just the minions, uh, they're imps, the right? The gargoyles or... No, it's like they're imps. imps. I think it's what their imps look like. Oh, yeah, we didn't show that. Oh, this? Can you show them how many freaking standees are in this game? Yep. Uh, nope, that's not the button I'm looking for. Oh, sorry. There it is, okay. Yeah, so we just put them in a little basket so we can see them, because you want to grab them, and they're all on standees. But here's all the elders. There's, like, a ton of demons, ton of knights, and then all the different, like, their minions. They have little bone crusher minions for certain demons. Uh, there's, like, ice golems for one of the knights. There's, like, stone golems for one of the knights, regular golems. Uh, there's a ton of standees in this game. Tons. So those are off, off screen. I forgot to talk Basket about that. Basket not included in the game. Basket is not included, yes. <laughs> so that this, just stops us. This is our... That, um... that stops me from knocking them all over when I'm trying <laughs> to set up the stream, uh, which has happened. We use but... it for multiple games that we yeah. have. <laughs> standees yeah. or minions. All right, I just want to point that out. Um, okay, so let's continue to look around the map. We've got this thing up here that's number 10. We got something going on on the other side of the water here. 13, 26, this log. 18, this tree with a hole in it. Look at this little cave, number five, oh, number wow. nine over here, 14 over here. What's going on? And I, you can't do everything. There's no way with only this much time. Because every time you like move an explorer and things get locked out. So you can't go to like everything, I'm sure. And you can revisit things. So uh, 21, 17, 30, 25, 8. I don't know. I don't know what to do. So I guess there's options. We can either stay on this pot, this square that we're on and explore 1 or 19, or we can move. Do you want a poll in that for those options? I don't know. Or would you even want to move? Like, I think I would want to explore something where we are first. Then let's do that. So you want me to do it? Yeah, just do uh, 1 or 19. We're going to stay where we are, and we can either do 1 or 19. Do you want us to check the well? or check this house number 19 okay and that's where we'll start we'll see i don't like i don't know i haven't read any story i know nothing mm -hmm. so like uh we'll see how this kicks off i don't know i'm assuming since they tell you to start at the well they probably assume most players will read one but we don't have to read one we don't have to like who cares but maybe it'll get i was thinking maybe it would give us some information or it won't will it break the game if we don't read one <laughs> it's like it doesn't make any sense after that who knows Hey, Osiris. Hello. Says, Hello, Mel and Rob. I got my Nightfall coming this week. Osiris, why did you buy Nightfall? Which, <laughs> seriously, which mode were you most excited about? Why, why, did, I need to know. Tell me in a couple sentences why you wanted to buy it. Did you buy it just because Red Raven Games? Did you buy it because how it looked? Did you buy it because you were excited when it was on Kickstarter? You know, did you demo it at Gen Con or something at a convention? Uh, did you want to play the campaign mode? Have you seen it on a YouTube video or something? I'm super curious. I want to know what interested people. I said what interested me. I thought it was like this cheap game with like a little campaign mode you play in one day and it's fantasy themed from the guys who did Sleeping Gods. I want to see what this is about. I got to see it. That's what drove me to it. But I'm, I'm curious. Any of you who have bought this, played this, anything, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you're watching later, leave your thoughts down below too. Just because you're not here live doesn't mean that I don't, I, I can't, I can't read your, uh, you know, your thoughts and stuff. So uh, leave it in the comments. I'm curious uh, what drew you to this game. Oh, Cyrus just bought it blindly because it's Red Raven Games on the box. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Hmm, interesting. I mean, it's at a price point you can do that. Yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, it's definitely could be impulse buy or free shipping territory based mm -hmm. on the game I added to free shipping. Mm -hmm. It's in that same price range. Just curious. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's close the poll. Oh, that's me now. Well, I could do it too, but... No, I like this. This is fun. I can have some... Okay, 52% say one. Well, that was close. That was a close one. Thank you, everyone, that voted. Okay, so we're going to number one. I'm going to go in the book here and read number one. Okay. A biting autumn wind infected with decom decomposing remnants of the season's harvest rips through the village, grasping a bucket perched on the old well and tossing it to the ground. You notice bloody, uh, you know, sorry, you notice blood on the side of the well. Your vision follows the drippy, damp trail over the dirt and end up, end up, sorry, the front steps of the Ram of Toil, an ancient ale administering establishment where the pine wood is so thick with spilt porter, it's almost black. Okay. Uh, this is also the point I should say spoiler warning. Oh, yeah, I guess. You're going to definitely hear story entry, and if you want to play this little campaign mode fresh, you're not going to hear every entry today, because we can only go to so many places. I'm sure you're not going to see every combat that's possible. Um, but it's hard to judge this game until you see some combat. But I'm sure they have a trailer or a how-to-play video or something out there. Uh, the, or the rule book I linked down below, where you can just see how regular combat works if you don't want to watch from this point on. Um, but I'd highly recommend watching a little bit to see how it works, and at least still see a combat happen to understand the main hook of the other modes in this game and stuff. Um, so yeah. Matthew's heading out. See you later, Matthew. Have a Bye, good day. Matthew. But yeah, just spoiler warning, spoiler warning, spoiler warning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and sorry, I think the order should be once we have selected and you started reading the story, then I cross this off. So it does, forget, is right? after that. It's right after it that. It is okay. after. So you, it's said in the rule book, you move, explore, then cross off a time. Then cross off. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm doing it. Because right maybe order. sometimes it'll tell you, just like some of the other 8,000 campaign games we played, it might say, you don't cross off time because what you did, you didn't find anything. So right. we're not going to, we're not going to take that time resource away from you. You make another choice, you know? So don't cross off time before exploring. That would be incorrect, okay? okay? Big time, don't 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 do that. Bad, bad, bad. But at least you're doing it in pencils, so we can correct it if we need to. But yeah, if you're doing it in permanent marker, I don't do it till it tells you like you're done, you're exploring. <laughs> Hello, Kate. Hi, okay. Kate. All right. Roger says I like Sandies. Nothing wrong with Sandies at yeah, all. Yeah, I like them too. Actually, I like how I don't have to wait for Mel to paint the Sandies before we can play the game. Yeah. I agree. But they don't look as good as Mel's painted minis. Uh -huh. See, see how I turned that around? <laughs> Thanks. See, see what I did there? All right. That was Elder's Blood, says a pale boy with a frightened grin. So two options here. We could search inside the well. So you could just put A and B in a pole. Oh, okay. Or relight the village lantern. I mean, you could type... Search in the well or relight the village lantern, whatever you want to do. You're a fast typer. You can do whatever, but well, I've already, going forward, you just do yeah, that. I've already done that now. So. But yes, just letting you know. <laughs> that's why I told you to do the polls, because if we need to type some kind of like more detailed description, you're way faster at that stuff. Yeah, I was going to, sorry. But then... And again, I don't know if this is going to be like a long, long, long stream, so okay. it, it'll definitely speed it up if you are doing the poll typing. Yeah, because then I can do it well once you put up the... Option. And also you can click on the blue bar up there. Uh, and it gives you this button to click. It's easier than clicking the little three dots and trying oh, to... Oh, like that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Roger, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, Roger, yeah. Chris, hello. Hey, Chris. Okay, so sorry. A was, if people are just tuning in for the okay. poll, A was... So vote on the poll in the chat if you're watching. You guys can help drive this campaign. Um, and play along with us for sure. A is search inside the well. B is relight the village lantern. And then we go to a different story entry based on such things. Here's a question. Has anyone ever found anything good inside a well? I don't know. Maybe this game gives us like a super sword right off the start or something. <laughs> super sword, yeah. Or, uh, you know. Um, like maybe there's like a villager hiding. Or like a, a fl flamingo with like a, you know, a harness on the back and we can ride it and get across the map faster or something, you know. But sometimes flamingos go in wells to take baths and stuff, I think. You know, a little chocobo, do a little chocobo riding around the map. Uh, 
Um, all right. 57% one A. Wow, we have quite the divided crew today. Interesting, but it's very cold still. Quite the divided crew yeah, today. Interesting. I thought more people would be curious looking in the well, but relighting a lantern, I mean, that would be cool. All right. Turn to 1.1. Okay, well, let me turn to 1.1. Oh, there it is. Uh, okay. You drop the fallen bucket into the damp chasm and hear a dark splash, hauling it back up over moss-covered stone. Within the icy water, you find a few coins. Gain two coins. Oh. Cross off number one. Return to the map. Good job, guys. We found two coins. Found money. Somebody was tossing coins in a well. Who okay, knew? I guess that makes sense. <laughs> uh, side note, Steven's recommending a game. Hi, hey, Rob Mel, I think a good game you'll like to play with Kyle is Tainted Grail, as it would be a game I think you'll like. Well, we already spent probably like 50 hours streaming it on the channel uh, and playing it already, and, and that was when we streamed half the campaign and, and, and then recorded and edited the other half because we didn't think people would want to sit there and watch super long streams. Uh, that's when I was still kind of like not sure if I wanted to fully go into streaming and not just edited playthroughs. And the spoiler stuff as well at the and time. And spoiler stuff, yes, because uh, not everyone had their game at the time. Yeah. Um, but yes, we fully have experienced Tainted Grail, uh, all the good, all the bad. We know all about that game. I don't think I'd ever want to play that game with Kyle um, just because of how the uh, combat system is kind of like messy, convoluted, slow, clunky um, to have three players there all trying to take turns playing cards and stuff and you know um, but the story part of it choosing options the lore the theme the like deciding where to go that's awesome but the whole survival aspect the difficulty and all that kind of stuff um, and the, the racing, um, to keep the men ears lit and keep rushing and pushing forward and feeling constricted and stuff like that. I'm not sure if I'd want to put that experience on, uh, someone who casually comes over and play games at, at once a week, you know, that's more of like a hardcore gamers game, uh, can be kind of a little depressing. Um, not sure I would want to, Kyle might love it, but I just don't know if he'd want to go through that experience or if we'd want to drag it and make it longer with a third player. I, I don't know if I'd want to do that. And dragging it out to only once a week. But yeah, th that's that's where we're at with with uh, Tainted Grail. But yes, we fully played Tainted Grail before. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, front to back. Uh, none of the expansions though. Um, but yeah. Uh, Buell, I was gonna do a coffee chat to kind of look at that crowdfunding campaign. I did read up on some of the rules changes. They don't seem too major. Um, they don't seem like they'd fix the clunky, slow combat. Um, that's like, it's fun to do a few times, but I like the way they did it different in that game, though. I love the way it's different combat. Um, but that part of the game, just like, I love the story. I love the upgrading my characters and stuff. But those little diplomacy and the diplomacy ones, I think, were quicker. But the whole combat in that game, like, I remember sitting there, like, on stream or recording for, like, 30 minutes for one combat. You're, like, sitting there playing the connect the card game. Yeah, it's like a puzzle. Yeah, it's like a puzzle, but it's like... It, it, it was an interesting puzzle at the beginning, but that puzzle, like, man, I'm not, I don't want to play that for 120 hours of all the expansions and uh, all that stuff. And from my understanding, they didn't change that at all. They just fixed some of the annoying stuff that, like, we kind of even found fun. So I, I don't know. But yeah, I just think it's another, like, cash in on the license uh, or the, uh, you know, what the previous Kickstarter hype did. But I don't know. Tina Grail didn't seem like uh, after we played it, there was like no talk of it really. Some people asked, like, are you gonna play the expansions? I was just like, no, not really interested. And I didn't hear many people talking about the expansions or anything. I just kept hearing the complaints about the game, and then I just never heard about the game again. And then everyone just kind of went, Frosthaven. What? Yeah. Frosthaven. Everyone thought it was gonna be the second coming and like, you know, be the thing that takes out Gloomhaven or be another, you know, big huge game like Gloomhaven kind of thing, but it was like a lot of people didn't really want to even finish it is from what I was reading. I remember when we were, we were playing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a definitely not a game for everybody. It's very um, kind of like mixed. Um, but I love the freaking story, the choices and stuff. It just sucks in that game too. There's some spots that broke and things and that was very frustrating where like you just get stuck and it wasn't like play tested enough. Um, but hopefully they fix that in the new game. But like, to be honest, uh, Tainted Grail Kings of Ruin, like same combat and same chance that the first printing is full of bugs and errors. So I'm not excited, but on the second printing of Kings of Ruin, we'll talk. We'll talk. That, that's where I'm at right now. Because I'm I'm in the opposite camp. Yeah. I loved 
the combat system. It yeah, did yeah. not bother me at yeah. all. I thought it was so unique and so interesting, and I loved that it little puzzle aspect. Interesting. Of it. I for do a agree while. that sometimes it got slogged, but it didn't bother me. I still really, really enjoyed mm -hmm. it. So yeah, for a while. Yeah. But again, we played old Tin and Grail, so if yeah. you're watching this, they have a 2.0. They fixed some of the complaints, quote unquote, fixed. So if you were like, man, I don't think Tin and Grail is for me, maybe go look into it. And don't listen to me because I played the old broken version, not the busted? not the the old and busted, not the new hotness, the <laughs> fixed version. So don't listen to me. Go look into it. it might be for you. Um, but most of about the game was awesome. I, I really loved it overall. It yeah, great I game. really liked it a lot. Yeah, great game. Just some rough things about it. Um, but anyways, that's my two cents there. But Steven, you're right. If I never played that, I would definitely want to play that with Mel. Because uh, if I could go back, I would play it again, no problem. But I just don't think it's a game I would play with Kyle. But I do like the recommendation. For the story part, for sure. I would love making the choices oh, yeah. and leveling up his characters and stuff. But oh, yeah. yeah. He might actually like the combat too, because the little yeah. puzzle, but yeah. And if you're only doing it once a week, like... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, more streamlined. Hmm. I don't know if it's more streamlined, Tobold. Everything I read, I don't know if streamlined is the right word. I think just changed. It just like changed a couple things that people didn't like. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say streamlined is the word. Altered a bit, maybe. Yeah. But uh, all right. So we're back to the map. Where are we going? Uh. Back to the current campaign we're working on. Not this one that may come out in two years on Kickstarter. Jeez. The only space left to explore on this spot is nineteen. I don't know if we explore it or we just move and explore somewhere else. Is it less grindy, Tobold? Yeah, I'll look into it. I haven't like fully deeply looked into it. I just looked at like a point form rundown of the changes because I was curious about the update pack and stuff. Not that I would go back and play the original Tina Grail. We spent enough hours there. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. But I was curious about the update pack. Like, what did it change? Because that's probably what's like different about the new game too, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll look into it more deep. So this is just my thoughts now. Totally can change. Totally can change. Yeah. Uh, we'll discuss it in a future stream or maybe I'll discuss it in the Discord. Maybe we'll do some polls again. Just like we did for Massive Darkness 2, like, would you guys be interested in playing it? Like, for our members, you know, our members and our producers and stuff. Because you guys support the channel, and if you don't want to sit there and have us busy playing that game for 50, 60 hours... When we yeah, could, over when we, something else. Over something else, like, it's just more Tainted Grail, you know? Like, maybe, maybe you guys aren't interested in watching on the channel. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there'll be other channels that'll play through it that just won't be as cool as us, so that's the only problem. I'm, I'm also not interested in the expansion for Tainted Grail, I'm interested in, like, yeah. the new standalone yeah, yeah. stuff only. That's just me. All right. Okay, so do we want to explore 19? Or do you think we should move? I don't know. Actually, let's just start with you. We're not going to do pull for everything. Okay. We can't. We'll be here for 12 hours. Right. So what you do at this point is, I'm going to put it on you, Mel. Is there anything on the map you want to go to and gun for? We don't have to literally just crawl and stay in our space, explore everything. We only have so much time. So you can tell they want you to replay this and play in the future. So let's not just, like, we could explore just everything in the village and then wander out. But is there anywhere else you'd want to go? Or should we just do that? I want you to make the choice, not look at the chat, not look at me. If you want to stay there and explore that, do it. But if there is something else that looks interesting to you or a new space, just go there. And then if there's a choice there, we'll put a poll in. Or we'll just do the single choice that's there, for example. You know, that kind of thing. I don't want to do literally a poll like, should we move? Should we move one space? I Should know. we move two spaces? Okay, now we got that answer. Let's do a poll. Should we go west? Should we go east for the first movement point? Should we go north? You know what I mean? Yeah. Then it's like, okay, for the second movement point, you can't be doing polls for every single thing. Um, so yeah, I know you're new to this poll thing, but uh, that's that's how I, I try to keep it like flowing a bit. So I want you to make the choice though, because honestly, I'm super overwhelmed right now. There's way too many little goodies to go dig into and, and explore. And uh, yeah. And I want to do everything, but I know I can't. But I do want to leave stuff. Obviously, we can't go everywhere. So I want to leave it so people who might get this game or want to get this in the future to go explore all the places we didn't go. And we can be annoying. So if they're really like, you guys need to go up here and everyone's yelling at us in chat, we can just not go there on purpose. And they feel they, they have to discover it on their own kind of thing. True. True. <laughs> uh, I'm less tempted to cross. The Chris is saying complete the village and move on. But what were you saying? You're tempted to cross I'm where? I'm less tempted to cross the water onto this side. Uh, like, I'm interested okay. in staying over here, okay. seeing, like, what some of these things, these, like, little All random right. things are. 
Um, so do you want to check 19? Do you want to move like this way? Do you want to go up this way? Like there's a lot of numbers here. Maybe we go like east through or like, what are you thinking? I'm thinking of 16, of moving to this space and searching 16. And that's the only one in that space? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to go to 16. And you got to draw the I gotta line. I got to draw the line. I'm going to. You got to draw a dotted line. I, I don't know why, but it's just to show, I guess, the path you went. Like. I don't think it comes up later, maybe. Maybe this is just like a record to kind of look. Oh, remember that time we wandered this direction? Yeah, I don't know. Remember we went this, this path and this big S and all this? I don't know. Uh, let's see. All right. 16? Yes. Just make sure I don't read the wrong entry. Not like I ever do that. Uh, shriveled stalks and wiry vines are all that remain of the recent harvest. A woman stands at the edge of the field, muttering curses, her voice muffled by the wind. Where is that fool? If he were here, I'd give him a walloping to remember. Who's missing, you ask? That fool blacksmith. He's wasting time near the lake or the woods. Send him home if you see him, will you? The woman gives you a stained bottle of dark liquid. Gain one elixir. Cross off 16. Okay. And return to the map. Okay, so now we have some direction. Now we have a little side quest available to us. Five. Side quest unlocked. Oh, does it say that? No. Oh. Um, so we could go look for the blacksmith. And she was saying he's either by the lake or the woods. And we send him home if we see him. Or do we help him and say, don't go home. She's ru running around the yard with Not a rolling pin. And she's going to club you one. So maybe we can save him. Or we can send him to his doom with his wife at home. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe there's a Kraken in the lake in the southeast corner. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Anyone played Resident Evil 4 at the dock and shot in the water? Anybody? Anybody? Back on the GameCube or one of the 1800 oh, re-release versions? I didn't even see that versions? there was one here. Oopsies, that's fine. Oh, there's a 4? I didn't even see that that was there. Oh. Uh, do you need your glasses? No. I just didn't even notice it. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay, so let's Hmm. Do we go check out the lake and see if he's there? The lake or the Here's wood? The thing. Here's the thing. I want you to put a poll and go stay in the village, go to the woods or the lake. That's what I want to know. I want to know which way. Should we go into the village, keep poking around? We can even poke around in the same space. Or do we go to the lake or we go to the woods? At least get a general direction. So go to the woods or go to the lake? Add option. And stay in town. Okay. Yeah. Because there's a lot to do here. So, like, should we stay lake in town? <laughs> like, all right, he says, lake time. <laughs> uh, in the village, lake, or the woods. And just the general direction. And then we'll kind of just go whichever way. There's, like, a lot of different ways you can go. So, go ahead and vote. The poll is in the chat. Uh, and we'll see. I'm just quickly, um, he didn't say what that guy's name was, did he? Or did she? The blacksmith. If we can find him, knights with full health deal one plus one damage during melee. Oh, he's a villager, I see. Yeah, well, I assume. And is if he's a blacksmith, I don't yeah, know if yeah. that's his name. So I don't if know we if you're find him, be reading that. I mean, that might be cheating. Is that cheating, do you think? I don't know. I have no it's idea. On there. And I'm just joking around. They shouldn't put that there. Look at you making. Look at it. Look at you making educated decisions with this. <laughs> with this, all the information in front of you. <laughs> I'm just wandering blind. All right, so let's. Uh... Oh, he's having some emoji fun today. Yeah, yeah. He wants to go to the lake. <laughs> I love it. Surfing. Uh, all right. Stay in town. Thirty-nine percent. Okay. So. Let's go back one, and then we'll put up the option of these four. Okay. So we're going to go here. So we could go to 26 or 15. 6, 15, or 20? 6, 15, 20. Or actually... I already did it, so nope. I can... We can end it. And you can do another one. <laughs> 
Sorry. Because we should put, like, we can put more options. I think you can put four options. Put 19 also, because we can reach it. So 15, 26, 19. There's also seven, but I don't think you put that many options. But I don't think we can reach that. Yeah, we can't reach that. We can only go one, two. All right. Six, 15. Oh, I'm trying to do my Technically, you do 11, right? but yeah. 15, 6, 15, 19, and 20. Is that all you can? Yep. yep. Yeah, that's all I can do. Sure. I put them in order, not necessarily sure, where they sure. are on this basis. So we have uh, 6, 15, 20, 19. I'm sorry. If we go 19, I'm going to feel bad that I just didn't do it when we were there. Who cares? It's all good. We're just going to wander around. Like, we're just experiencing the campaign mode till the final fight. We'll just go to a few places, check it out. Hopefully, we see a combat so we can show you guys how that works. Um, That's true. But I know this is meant to be a replayable campaign. They give you a whole bunch of sheets, so you can almost play again and go different places. Gandalf Pendragon, thank you so much for subscribing. Gandalf, wow, thank you so much. The Gandalf. <laughs> the Gandalf <laughs> Has it joined us? Welcome. Not Rob Dolph, but Gandalf. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Uh, All right. Close it up. Fifteen. What a number fifteen. All right. Yeah, these dotted lines, like. I know. Yeah, like silly. I guess you'd have to be using a pen for that or something. That's fine. Uh, 15. Oh, we got another one. New sub. Twin. Trin Nguyen An. Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so I much. I probably said that completely wrong, but thank you. Oh, Gandalf's in the chat. Hello, thank Gandalf. Thank you, Gandalf. Welcome. Gladly. <laughs> All right. 15. Cracking open the door of the Ram of Toil Tavern, a wave of sour ale, 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 sour ale, and sweet bread fills your nose. Blood trails from the door to a nearby table where, until recently, the injured elder had lain. The elder is upstairs in one of the beds. He's all right, explains Mary, one of the tavern keepers. Couldn't settle down, though. Kept screaming about the demons. He had this, said to give it to you. Mary places a tattered parchment in your hands. Gain one scroll. Ooh. Cross off 15, return to the map. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh. Should we draw three cards, reduce our threat, or deal four damage to an enemy? Gandalf just arrived. I mean... I don't know. Right now, I would probably say draw three cards. Draw three cards? Okay. Uh, we got a scroll? Is that what you just told me? Yep, got a scroll. We got a scroll. Okay, so I'm just making sure I've done everything correct. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, let's explore another place in town. Uh, just you pick one. Uh, or I'll pick one. I want to go check out six. Okay. We'll stay there. And then I'll go to six. Okay. Where is six? Oh, right here. A woman with raven hair opens to your knock. Her features creased in mild irritation. Yes, come in if you must. Hurry up. Sacks of parchment and piles of ancient books have turned this cottage into a labyrinth of loose lore stoic reasoning, and pretentious verse. The raven-haired woman has already disappeared with one of its winding, wordy passageways. Has already disappeared within one of its winding, wordy passageways. My studies have mainly focused on the southern swamp temples, says the woman from behind the stack of tomes, her voice muffled. I didn't expect the abbey to be any threat for a long time. She reappears with a box of scrolls. I did learn some, something fascinating. Hidden in the back of my grandfather's journal many years ago, a local scholar named Crumble Ratmark was blamed for the rift at the abbey. He had an, an interest in strange magics, and the villagers thought he had summoned monsters from the rift with the dark spell. His journal says they locked him in the catacombs beneath the Wolson Chapel to the northwest of the village. Oh, what was it called again? The what chapel? Wolson Chapel. Wolson Chapel, okay. W-O-L-C-E-N, chapel to the northwest of the village. Perhaps you can find some answers there. Gain one scroll, cross off six, return to the map. Gain one scroll. Okay. Return to the map. I mean, do we head that way? I don't know. 
Hey Brian, uh, so far we've just kind of explored a little map here. We're only playing campaign mode today. There's a competitive mode, a cooperative mode. We played the cooperative mode, not the competitive mode. Didn't really like the cooperative mode that much, but you're going to see some of that in this part of the game. This is a cheap game, uh, 30 to 40 bucks. Do not expect it to be Sleeping Gods. Do not think of Sleeping Gods at all when playing this game, I would, wouldn't say. Um, no. But it does have some Ryan Lockett wandering around a map, story writing kind of stuff. That's my two cents. Uh, but you just came in, we're just exploring around. We haven't even got to the first combat or anything yet, um, so you'll get to see that soon and get an idea of how deep the game is. Uh, but yeah, and we've never played the campaign before, so we're still kind of new to the game. We've only played the co-op mode like three times. But that's just like a little 30-minute play session, little skirmish battle thing. Uh, how big a table footprint, Sean? Um, Not that bad. I don't know, three feet by... Two and a half feet? I don't know. Does that make sense? I'm trying to think of play mat size. I don't know. You can play it probably on like a 3x3 three three like X-Wing kind of size skirmish map-ish. I don't know. And if you're playing solo, even smaller. It depends what mode you're playing. There, it's like a rabbit hole. Uh, but that's, the, that's my answer. That's my answer. Was it? Not too bad. Yeah. Um, I'm tempted to check out this thing here. 11? Okay. Yeah, so we'll have to move yep. one, two. Unless you want to check out 20 before we leave, but I don't think... Can you get right to 11? Yeah, we can move one, two. Okay, then do it. Okay, so I'm just gonna... That's like, I thought you were like, we couldn't get there right away, so I was like, well, let's go some other direction. 11. An obsidian mausoleum near the edge of town houses the bones of forgotten queens and nameless warriors. A dark place with narrow passages where children never dare venture past the first few steps. Something stirs within the narrow halls, a violet mist running along the ground, a static hum in the air. As you venture deeper, you arrive at a long corridor. The sound of distant thunder echoes through the halls, and a group of demons emerges oh no. from the shadows. Battle, if victorious, turn to 11.1. .1. So here's the battle. So this is what you get. We got to set this up based on the map tile letters from the nine tiles that come with the game. If it had an R beside the letter, that means it's the reverse side of the tile, and it'll tell you on that. And then here's what we set up on there. We'll set up two imp minions, uh, whatever a dread miss is, an elder, two imps, an elder. We start here, storm fiend, and an elder, and then an empty tile. So that's what we're going to set up right now in the middle of the board. And we'll put this off to the side. So if we win, we go to 11.1. .1. And if we don't, Sorry, we lose. I don't know. A F E D H G B. F. Where's D? E. Is that a D? I don't know. I, I know the letters letter. are like yeah. I, I think, think so. so. This is a C yep. and an I, so I think so. <laughs> Sorry. D H G. And some of the tiles, just so you guys know, uh, you can enter from all four ways, uh, unless it's the edge. Some of them have abilities when you enter, like giving you an extra health. Uh, if an enemy is here when you enter, you lose a health. Uh, discard a card to gain two magic that you can use on your ability. And this one has cross the water. Oh, this is a tile that's like split in half and the rules are not very clear like how it works. It's kind of like very confusing. Um, but you basically just treat it as like two spaces. Unless you're attacking from adjacent into it and hitting all enemies and stuff, you hit everyone on the tile. But if you're on the tile, you can only like attack things on your side of the water. And you have to use like extra movement or a movement, I guess, to get across. I don't know if it's extra movement or whatever, but um, but it's just basically a split tile. It's weird. I don't know why it exists in the game, but it's a thing. Okay, so we start, if you can grab our knights. Oh yeah, I should have already done Wraith Knight and the Holy Knight. What did your Wraith look like? A uh, big dude with a red helmet and an axe. So many of them keep banging. I know, it's, it's, there's way too many of them. That's okay. <laughs> right here is mine. Oh, he's mixed with Elder's Kid, this is mine. Okay, we start in here. Okay, we need three elders total. One, two, three. And the elders are standees. They have these little plastic things on them to mark their health. So once they get down to zero from six, they're dead and gone. 
So we're trying to keep them alive at all costs because they're the ones who are going to help us close the rift, I guess. Okay. Speaking of combat, here's the combat. All right. <laughs> uh, we need two, uh, four imps total. Four imps. I think there is only four imps in the yep. game, right? So if any more imps spawn while there's all on the map, we don't spawn anymore because they're limited by components. Two imps here. These are little imps. They're just minions. They only have two health. They can only do basic stuff. They go at the end of the round. Uh, we need a storm fiend. Deem oh, I guess that's in here. The demons, right? Storm fiend. Here, you can be the storm fiend on your side, I guess. Uh, storm fiend goes here. Okay, and then the other one is the dread miss. Oh, dread mistress. So the dread mistress, uh, when she does her magic ability, deal two damage to an adjacent enemy. Then move there, uh, move them to your tile. She has a passive ability, petrifying gaze. When you move to a new tile, you must, you may slow a close knight or deal one damage to a golem. And uh, yeah. And she goes somewhere. Uh, she goes up here. Uh, oh. I... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, stupid. I think we choose, right? I don't know. I know we choose for. I I don't know. That's why this like half pile is stupid because the game like doesn't recognize it. It like doesn't talk about how you like put things on it and stuff. Like so, if I were to move into there, like you know, uh, you know, the AI, like where which where do they land? Yeah, so, it says enemies ignore the water. Yeah, in co-op mode, enemies ignore the water. But what does that mean? Because, like, I need to attack enemies. Are they on my side of the water or the opposite side? Because I can't melee arrange them in one case or the other. So it's like, yeah, that was a very frustrating thing. Couldn't find the answer for that online at that time. Uh, all right. So we'll just put it up there. Yeah, we'll just, like, house rule things to be quicker. I, I don't want to deal with this. I'm not looking up rules for this game. I've done that enough. Very frustrating. Um... Even though it's a retail game, definitely it's got that Kickstarter like quality vibe to the uh, the rules for sure. Quality. Okay, so we both started here. Okay. Three elders. One, two, three. All right. Okay. So how it's gonna work? Uh oh yeah, we need our cards. Mm -hmm. So this is our knight power cards. I already explained how those work, but you'll see them here. Uh, in the default game, you get three cards. You also have a basic card, okay? Your basic card can do either one of these abilities. A move, heal, and you can heal yourself or a close ally. So an elder or yourself or a minion or whatever on your side. Or you could spend this for a magic. But again, all our abilities take two magic. So I'd have to do this. And I could use a basic power on the back of one of these cards. Magic, heal, gain armor, move, range attack, melee, okay? Or I can use the better, more awesome side of the card, and they're dual use, triple use cards, whatever, multi use cards. Uh, this one, for example, I could heal twice, so I could heal myself one, an adjacent guy, or heal myself or two, whatever. Uh, or I can do this ability, or I can put this in front of me as a passive going forward. You can have only one seal in front of you. If you play another one, discard that one. Um, so on your turn, you literally just play all your cards, but you decide which one of three ways you want to use the cards, okay? Um, so we'll just play with them all, just sitting here, doesn't matter. Um, okay, there's my cards. Um, but how it goes is demons go first. Uh, so the AI demons, they have an AI deck. Uh, they'll draw two cards. They do the abilities that are on the cards and instruct them what to do. They have some rules to them, how they work when another player is not playing them. Uh, because in the campaign mode, we're playing the co-op mode and you're only up to two players. No one controls demons. It's AI. But you can play this in a competitive mode, like I said, where one side you can play up to, uh, two to six players in the competitive mode. And have like, you know, 2v2, 1v1, 3v3. Uh, you can even play three player, one person controlling two demons, playing against the other two players, playing knights, that kind of thing. And you're just fighting around on this like, you know, randomized map, battling each other, trying to save the elders and all that kind of stuff. Um, but co op mode, they're run by this AI deck. And, uh, you know, they'll do the abilities on here. On one card, they'll do the next ability on an upside down card. So they do a major ability and kind of like a minor ability or a secondary ability. I don't know what those are called, but. Um, that's what they'll do. So, uh, you'll see that, but it always goes demon. So it'll go demon, knight, demon, knight. And we just keep going around like that. And at the end of the round, actually the, uh, minions get to go. Um, so yeah, if you can take the minions out before they get to go, you won't have to deal with them. Um, and we need to use little tokens to mark some health. 
little wooden little wooden hearts and a little wooden shield to mark our armor. Okay. So my demon has a vortex ability that says you may use move actions to move closer or adjacent allies or adjacent enemies instead of yourself. But it says in the rule book that his passive ability does not function in cooperative mode. So <laughs> okay, so you can ignore that. We can ignore that. I don't know about yours. Cause sometimes they have like a little. Well, dreaded Mister Dread Mistress. Is she on the list? Uh, yep. Yeah. Activate um, petrifying gaze after moving. Players choose whether to slow a close knight or deal damage to a golem. We choose. Yeah. Because when she moves to a new tile, she's trying to slow a close knight or deal damage to a golem. We'll just choose. Okay, okay cool. Choose okay, so that's good. Yeah, because these, these abilities are all written, assuming you're playing the competitive skirmish game. So to learn, you have to know how that works to then learn the co-op version and play the co-op mode, which has a whole bunch of changes to how it works. Uh, then to play the campaign mode, you have to learn the additional rules on that change how the co-op game works, which changes how the standard game works. So yes, you kind of have to learn all three modes to play the campaign. So just so you guys know, I'll say it again for those who showed up late. Uh, are, we... are we starting with you or with me? You. Me. Okay. Okay. So first card. So what are we trying to do in this one? Just fight and kill the same basic same stuff, thing, right? Yeah. And any elders that's still alive, we get to mark on the back. So in, in the campaign rules, let's just read that battle part. Um, but it didn't really like tell us in the story there what the win condition is. So battles. When the storybook tells you there's a battle, you may you must set up the board and defeat a group of demons. These battles work like cooperative mode, except for a few changes. There's no victory points. To win, you simply defeat all demons. Oh, okay. Uh, but not their minions. You don't have to defeat the minions, but you should. You shouldn't let them get out of control. Uh, when you defeat a demon, only replace it with a new one if there's a looming demon. And then read looming demons to the right, which I already read before. For each battle, set up the board. When you have defeated each demon, the battle ends. You keep reading in the storybook. If a knight dies during the battle, write their name under the fallen knights on your campaign sheet and place your character card in the box. Or tear them up if you want to treat this as a legacy game and then just buy a new copy when you want to play it again. Um, don't do that. Uh, you can no longer use them in the current campaign. Draw a new knight to take their place and place the knight on the starting space at the beginning of your turn with six health and one defense as normal. While defeated knights cannot be used again in the current campaign, defeated demons can be used in other battles in the campaign. They simply retreat, regenerate quickly to fight again. At the end of each battle, mark any saved elders on your campaign sheet. Discard any equipped seal cards and reset your active knight's health to six and their block to one. Okay. Now so we, we have know. three elders that we can possibly save by keeping them alive. Yep, so we just got to kill the demons and it okay. instantly ends. Okay. And they have six health each. So I'm activating this demon here. Yep, the Storm Fiend. So this is the first card. Yep. Blood spawn. All demons all demons place an imp on their tile and lose one health if they were able to do so. All newly placed imps take two actions. Well, we know that they can't do that because we placed all of them out already. There's only four imps in the game, right? Yes. For sure. Yes. You're in charge of the you're in charge of the, the standees. Yes. I can't see. Okay, so that one is done. <laughs> and then we do this one upside down. Shadow Bolt, deal three damage to an adjacent enemy. So adjacent uh, enemy is one of us. One and of we us. can just choose. Um you have heal, I have right? heal, so Yeah. Well, I have two heal cards, but I could use them for damage dealing. And I could destroy all close minions. Yeah, this one can only yeah, I'll I'll take it. So I'll I'll keep my actual defense. Maybe have like a built in some kind of heal thing. Yeah, when I move. I'll I'll keep my defense and I'll just take three. One, two, three. Oh no. And then these are gone. Okay. All right, now it's the holy knight. Now it's turn. my turn. So again, Mel has three regular cards. One, two, three. Some of them actually don't have an ability on them. So you can either choose to use one of these two top options or do one of the minors on the back or basics or whatever they're called. I think it's minor. Okay. Uh, none of my actual abilities here do anything really good. That's when I can deal some damage if I'm in there. So. Let's use my basic card, and I'll just do this to tell myself that I've used this card on my turn. And I will move into here. Unless we want to, I can't slow imps with that deal two damage. I can get rid of one of the imps. 
Start a car. Oh, oh, wait, and I can do this. Let's finish one adjacent. Uh, no, I gotta go this way. Okay, sorry. So I moved for one. Now I'm going to use this bottom ability that says deal two damage to one close enemy and slow them. So I'm gonna deal two damage to this enemy. So slowing normally, uh, when you're playing like the competitive game or when the AI slows us, you have to randomly, you shuffle up your, your cards that are not basic cards. So you keep your basic card, uh, but you would like kind of like, you know, shuffle them up and then your opponent, you know, picks one at random and then you can only use that for one basic ability. And then the other two you can still use. So they can, you can only be slowed once. Um, and it kind of just nerfs you a bit on your turn. But when we slow the enemy, since they don't have a hand of cards, uh, it just deals damage. Yep, so it deals damage. Also, uh, heal yourself or one close ally one when you move to a new tile, which I did, so I should heal myself for one. Okay. Yeah. Then I will do the, I'm going to spend these two magic mm -hmm. to do my magical ability, which is deal two damage to one adjacent enemy. So let's choose this one. These guys have two health, so he's gone. And uh, heal two to an ally close to the target. There's, no one, There's no one close, and no one else needs health anyways, so yeah. that's fine. He's dead. And then... I really want to stay alive yeah, in this yeah. one, so I think I'm just going to take the two health so we don't lose this knight. Okay. Also and a priority in the game, the knights must protect the elders if you're in their space. So this elder is close to Mel because uh, they're in the same space, the same tile. Uh, and when this elder is getting damaged by an attack directly to the elder, the knight must spend defense or health, your choice, to take the hits for the elder. But if Mel was adjacent to the elder and she had at least one armor, she could spend an armor to get in there and eat up some of the damage and try to save the elder. If something is damaging all enemies on the tile, uh, you have the choice in that case. The Elder obviously would be getting damaged, you'd be getting damaged, what other people on your team are getting damaged. But in that case, you can also choose to spend extra armor slash health to soak up damage for the Elder. We want to keep the Elders alive. In the main game, You like it's like super important because they're the ones going to seal the rift um, when you're playing the skirmish mode or the, the co-op little skirmish mode. Um, but in this, we're just trying to save as many Elders for points by the end of the campaign. But we also want to keep ourselves alive so that Potentially in that final battle, we do have more lives, I guess you would say. Well, when we lose knights, we have to pick new knights. And once we're out of all the knights that come in the game, we lose the campaign. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so if we can save all those to the final yeah. battle, we'll have yeah. a better chance. So that that's kind of what's going on there. That's kind of the priority, how, how we're working here. But it's basically just moving around, attacking, healing, and all that kind of stuff. You'll see it as we go. I should have probably showed this. Here's one of the reference cards. Um, but this gives you an, an idea of what you can do in this game. So heal yourself or close ally. Magic ability, you need to discard two magic to do your magic ability. Every character has a magic ability. As you can see here, you can move to an adjacent tile. Defend, uh, where you can gain a defense. So you just move your little shields up, like another resource. Um, range attack, so you can attack adjacent for one damage. Melee, attack close for one damage. Then there's this command symbol. Those are only on the demon's deck of cards, but you would only see that deck if you played this game competitively against another player or players. Um, so they have a thing where they can command and they mess with imps and stuff. Um, but yeah. All right. And then there's also a thing with engagement. This is important. We got to remember this. Uh, so if enemies are in your location, you're engaged. There's this whole disengage thing. So if you try to leave a space with enemies for every enemy you leave uh, in that space, you're taking a damage for each standee that's opposing you in there. Same applies even in co-op to these guys. If they're told on their AI card they have to move, you have to, like, they must move. And they'll still take damage for it, even though if it's just a random card telling them to move somewhere. Um, and if it's not your turn, you're forced to move, you, uh, or you move using defense, uh, you do not take disengagement damage. So if they move us, we don't take the damage. So if they, like, you know, pull us out of a space or whatever, we're fine. Uh, and elders never take disengaged damage, so we can maybe move them around somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you needed this for a visual representation, this is from the default game when you play the competitive or co-op mode. Um, so diagonal is not really a thing. There are some cards that let you attack diagonal, but normally you can only attack orthogonally. Um, and it even explains how it's adjacent and your tile is close. That just gives you like a visual example. 
Um, but that's kind of how it works. But there's lots of cards, or not lots, but there's some cards we've seen that's like, you know, you can attack adjacent or whatever. Hmm. Uh, Edgar, Edgar in Ho 87's asking, Rob, quick question. Will there be any more Arkham Horror LCG videos? Uh, what would the, if I answered yes to that, what would happen? If I answered no to that, what would happen? <laughs> I'm curious. Are you in the point where you're like cleaning up your subscription feed and you're like, I need to unsubscribe from some channels that don't play Arkham Horror? This one used to, and I need to know so I clean them up. <laughs> if that's the case, 100% you can, and you'll find us in the future when we play again. Uh, but we do plan on playing this month, at least the standalone campaign. We do have Scarlet Keys pre-ordered, and we still have two campaigns we want to go back to. So yes. Yes, we will be playing more Arkham Horror LCG. Don't ask me when. I just know this month I want to play some. Whether we get to, it's not 100% locked in. Nothing ever is. Things can change. But uh, yes, we bought cards. We keep buying cards. I keep collecting that damn game. And I keep wanting to go back to it. Just other games distract us and become priorities. So uh, yes, but we are not a fully dedicated Arkham Horror channel. That's not the only thing we play here. But yes, we will play that again in the future. We're filthy casuals, you would say. But, uh, yeah. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. has been a while, for sure. I'm, I'm missing it. The, the problem with that game, too, Edgar, is uh, FFG seems to only release, like, one product a year kind of thing right now because they're doing the whole everything packaged together. So we can kind of, like, take a break from the game for basically, like, a year till it kind of matters, it feels. Um, but right now, they're really pumping out um, Marvel Champions and, like, uh, Lord of the Rings LCG has come back and like I really love those two games too so it's like those are the things that new stuff is showing up and we're like excited to play so um, that's where our LCG love has been going it's those two games right now but hopefully FFG kind of slows down on the Lord of the Rings stuff for a little bit and gives a breather there but they got that Saga thing coming out soon too like they just dropped Agmar Awaken just dropped the starter decks earlier in the year the revised core set they're just like that game's just pumping out stuff it seems Yeah. considering FFG's usual release sometimes in the past they would have six month breaks for lcgs where you'd be like where's the new product come on man um but yeah i'm surprised the lord of the rings the game that's like you know 11 years old it's like the game with the most content coming out for it it's weird even though it's just re-release stuff mainly but uh but yeah it's interesting <laughs> ninja art, ninja art you're not wrong <laughs> yes ninja art yeah don't even talk about that oh my god we try Stop. not to talk about all the things that are coming in the future because it's overwhelming that one i'm trying to like that's one of those kickstarters so there's so many kickstarters guys that i back and you guys are coming in here like so excited i got a shipping notice and i'm like i'm glad i haven't got a shipping notice i don't want that game yet i don't need another game to stress over uh, i'll play it when it comes or I'll, I'll worry about it when it gets here but like i'm the type that just backs games and just forgets about them when they show up they show up um because of like, I already have enough games to play. I don't need more. Um, so yeah, so like, uh, it's a good problem to have. But yeah, so you just bringing that up. Thank you. I've been, <laughs> He's I've, been trying to, now. I've been trying to forget that for a while. I do want it. Don't get me wrong. Same. I want it so bad. I want it to have too many bones back on my table. But right now I'm having fun with Hobblemockets, okay? And I know I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry that got delayed and everything. I feel bad that I have it and you guys don't. But uh, I'm still going to enjoy it. Because there are so many people who got to play Hobblemockets like... Six years ago or whatever and have been loving it since then this is my first time in so i don't feel that bad because it's just like kind of like a re, re like a reissue a second edition a, a cleaned up version kind of thing yeah. so i don't feel that bad but it's like it just sucks not everyone can be playing it along with me too but yeah all right anyways i'm getting my chip theory fixed though is what i'm trying to say so that's helping not worry about too many bones those are your demon cards whenever you're ready take your time i just want to so we demon. know where we are nope this way and then this one goes this way. All right. So let's see what this demon's doing. We got to remember when she moves to a new tile, we got to slow a knight or deal damage to a golem. There's no golem. So, uh, yeah. So we always do the top of the first card and then we flip the other card upside down. And that's how they kind of, that kind of spices up the AI. So the knight stalker uh, says it's going to move three clockwise, ignoring engagement. And then deal five damage to a close enemy or heal to full if no enemies are close. And then it will heal to and use their magic ability. Okay. So moving three clockwise. Again, it says in co op mode, enemies ignore the river. I don't know what the hell that means, but uh, we're just going to pretend it's two spaces here. So one, 
two, three. Then deal five damage to a close enemy, which is this elder. So you could jump in there if you want. Oh, I can, I can. Mm. It's up to you. Yes. That's a lot of damage. Yes, I will. But... I'm going to spend one, run in, five damage. Uh, that brings me down to one, right? One, two, three, four, five. Nope. I'm at six. So I should be at one left. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, so I'll protect the elder. I mean, I don't have to take it all, right? I could get, let the elder get a little bit of damage. No, you would take it all because... Because what? He's, not, he's guarded now with you there. Mm, mm, don't think that's how it works. But, uh, all right. Um, let's see. And then heal to and use your magic ability. Oh, that'll kill me. Oh, then don't do it. Yeah, but it'll kill an elder. Well, that's not as bad. Hmm. Yeah, so I'll let it do the damage down to one on the elder. Then I'll say I moved in on this magic ability, which says deal two damage. Oh, no. Sorry, it's deal two damage to an adjacent enemy. Okay, scratch all that. Scratch all that. Elder's at full. She's actually doing her magic ability, which deal two damage to an adjacent enemy, which is this one. Sorry, buddy. That elder's at four health. And then move them to your tile. Oh, no! Okay. And then that is that. If you want to discard... Oh, yeah. That's okay. I'm just doing it here for now. And then... Okay. Now my turn. I'm in trouble. Well, I think I'll do this, destroy all close enemy minions. That's good. Yeah, but it's also a heal card. You can use heal actions on adjacent allies. Mm, no, I'm going to take two armor for this one. Deal one damage to all close enemies and move them one, or I could just heal two. Uh, no, I'll just heal two. And then for this last card, I could move one or heal. I'm just going to heal myself, and that's my basic card, so it sticks with me. Draw me three new cards, and then end of the round, the imps get to do two actions. Okay. So in this case... Uh, I did, I cut, I, I made my own little reference paper here, uh, quick and dirty. Because I was getting frustrated. This is from the new rule book. Again, I've linked down below. If you're playing with the printed rule book, the game would be broken because you wouldn't know which order they kind of prioritize when ties happen and stuff. Um, but they totally updated the priority order. Uh, so obviously they probably play tested after they printed the game, or they just went based on people's complaints. Uh, so they updated this target hierarchy, and then there's tiebreakers that are new to the, to the rules of the game that were added to a PDF like a month ago. Um, and then it talks about the, when you must move. So I put these on a little reference sheet so I can just look at them off to the side, quick and dirty. I'm just going to throw them in the box so we have them. But um, So first, they want to go after an undefended elder. Then they want to go after a defended elder. This should actually say guarded, unguarded, and guarded, because uh, undefended is not really a thing in the game, um, the way the way it talks. But it, it still makes the same sense. It's just the rest of the rules talk about guarding. Um, but it's just another typo thing. But um, you get the point. Knights with less than three combined health slash defense. Then we have golems. Then we have knights. Okay, so that's the order they're going in. If there's a tie, they'll go after the target with the lowest health. Then the target with the fewest close slash uh, adjacent allies. And then the players would choose if there's still a tie. Okay, so that's how they're that's how the AI is flowing. Okay, so there's no unguarded elder, so he's just moving to the guarded elder, and he'll do one damage, and that will. Oops. Oh, we forgot actually. I was slowed, right? When you move to a new tile, you may slow a close knight or deal one damage to a you goal. You moved on to that tile. Oh, after. that's right. I wasn't there. Never there. mind. Woo. Sorry. No Carry problem. On. No problem. He's <laughs> going to do one damage. He can't do a damage to the elder since I'm there. Yep. So I will take one damage. Okay. And that's the only minion because all the others are gone. There's no golems. We're back around to this guy's turn. Okay. First card. Second card. Okay, add two imps, because why not? And I think it says you spawn them on a demon's space, right? In that, yeah. in that rule. In, in campaign in mode, campaign yes. Well, I let's think. just add them here, okay? 
of a demon party. I mean, an imp party. Until the end of your next turn, whenever a demon or imp is killed, they deal two damage to a close enemy. Uh oh. Okay. I'm going to just leave that out if that's okay to just to remember. Because mm -hmm. I'll probably forget that. Yeah, that sucks. And deal one damage to all close and adjacent enemies. This damage cannot be defended. Okay. So that's just one to me and one to yep. our elder. We need to take out one of these demons and then I'll like. Yeah, I'm almost. Yeah, he's I know. Almost that, there. That'll definitely give us some breathing room, right? Eh? Yeah. She's okay. the we worst one, that. I think, but it's like she hasn't even got any damage yet, so. Whenever a demon or imp is killed. Ooh, okay. So my turn. What's your holy bolt ability? Because you were able to actually do it with one of those cards now. Uh, I did two. it last time too. Yeah, deal two damage to one adjacent enemy, heal two to an ally. Oh, oh. no, no, that doesn't work now. But deal two damage to one adjacent enemy, then slow them. There is no one adjacent. You ignore engagement when you move. You mm -hmm. could actually play that right now to get out of the space. Yeah, and then deal two damage. But then, then I could move back in for the. The only problem is uh, when you kill these minions, is they hurt this guy. No, I can. Okay, I think I, I think I can do something here. So. Let's play this card as a seal. So you ignore engagements when you move. So I will then move for one. So a seal is like an ongoing passive. You can have one seal and play with your character. If you play a new one, it replaces it. But it's like an ongoing effect. Okay. Let's do... And you have to play all your cards on the turn and or discard them. But there is a variant where you can draw a fourth card and you get to choose the three you're playing and you hold one for the next turn. Uh, if you feel like there's not enough choice. So I'm going to use my card for the two magic. And I'm going to deal two damage to one adjacent enemy. Um, I think I'm going to get rid of... I'll do two damage to somebody close, right? Remember? Yep, that's fine. Because then I can heal. Of course, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just debating, I do I get rid of the imp or do I just worry about getting rid of this guy? You can kill a demon. That's amazing. I can. So let's do two damage to the demon. That doesn't do anything. Heal two. We'll just heal him one because that all he is down. Okay. And then. Oh, they will kill him anyway, right? Oh, they... no, no, no. Hold on. I did that in the wrong order. I did that in the wrong order. I did that in the wrong order. He was at this one. I need to do this one first. Deal two damage. Well, it's going back to three. Deal two damage to one adjacent enemy and slow them. So that'll deal three damage here. Oh, and kills the demon. It kills the demon. Boom. Get out of here, demon. That does two damage. Then go back to the uh, deck. That does two, da uh, two damage to this guy. No, I thought it was only when... No, it's imps too. Demons imps. Oh, when a demon or imp is killed. Yeah. Oh, wow. You basically okay. need to get in there and protect that guy. Yeah. Then I do this, where I deal two damage to an adjacent enemy, which is this one. Puts him down to one. No. Then I can heal two to an ally close to the target, so heal him back to three. I like that minion. And then that's it for now. But then I'll jump in there and take the damage from these guys. Mm. I think. One, two, three. Okay. Wait, he doesn't have another turn. Does this go away then? Until the end of your next turn. This was the demons, but he doesn't have another turn because he's dead now. So maybe that didn't even happen. Maybe this goes away when he dies. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense then to me. He's gone. Yep. So then he'd be at five, not. I'd look it up in the rules, but I know there'll be no answer. <laughs> right? Because if he doesn't have another turn, how do we know? Unless. Yeah, he... yeah. No, I like the way you think. Get it out of here. Yeah. I mean, like, we got rid of him. So, oh, there's all my range. Because otherwise I would sit there forever because he'll never have a next turn. So. Yeah, it's like broken. <laughs> so get it out of here. I don't know, it makes sense yep, to me. No, get it out of here. All right, go ahead. All right. Did so, I heal when I moved there? I don't think I did. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. So she is going to terrorize. All demons and imps deal one damage to a close enemy. Okay. So... I don't know if you want to do yours first or yours. I have imps. I don't have oh, it. Oh, she's a demon. Yeah. All demons and imps deal one damage to a close enemy. Uh, sure. I will block one with my shield. Okay, I'll use my defense to move in here to take both and then heal yourself or one 
ally when you move to a new tile. So I'll hit myself for one. Okay. Uh, add one imp. Oh, no. Move one and use your magic ability. So she wants to move. This is the crazy part. She has to move. And we'll, I'll get to do one damage to her, right? Because she'll leave the space. Yep. Um, but the direction where she wants to move, so if I look at hierarchy, she wants to move to, like, adjacent tile with an undefended elder. There is none. A defended elder is none. There's no knight adjacent with three or less combined health. There's no adjacent golem. There's no adjacent knight. So now there's a tie it. There's no target there. So target with the lowest health. Target with the fewest close adjacent allies or the players choose. If you put it here, I have some range I can hit from. Okay. Uh, if an enemy's here and you enter minus one health, you think it's okay? Yeah. Right. I don't need to go in. So she goes that way. She takes the damage because she disengaged from me in here. And then she uses her magic ability. When she goes to a new tile, uh, when you move to a tile, you may slow a close. Yep, there's nobody there to damage. And her magic ability is deal two damage to an adjacent enemy, then move them to your tile. So there's no unguarded elders. They're both guarded because you have knights in the same space. Uh, then we look at defended one. So whichever one is with the lowest health or i guess yeah the one with the lowest health. i have five here i think it's this one here okay so she deals two damage one two it's down to two health and pulls it into her space okay and now it's my turn hmm. and we just have to kill her we don't have to kill all the minions that's true I'm going to deal one damage to all close and adjacent enemies. So I'll knock this minion down. That's two health to show it's one damage. I'll damage her. That's gone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I will just do a range attack for two damage. Knocking her down to two health left. Um, this one. Hmm, I put her one away if I just use a single range attack on this one. But I'm worried about she'll still kill this guy. But you get to go before her, right? Yep. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, so then I'll just uh, add up my armor, I think, is a better play, just in case I have to jump in there. Okay. Um, and then this one, I will just... Heal can only be close, yeah. Yeah. So I'll just take a health. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Imps. So this one will heal and then attack. Oh, I might be dead. I'll take the damage. These ones, we'll, we'll do this one. He'll try to attack this guy twice, but you have to take the hits. Yeah, I'm going to die. Shoot, I did oh. not think that through. No, I think it's... Oh, man. I think it's fine. Okay. Yeah, one, two. Yep, and then the other one attacks and for two. And kills me. Okay. So, so you, get a, is dead. you get a new knight. You'll get the seer knight. Dang it. Uh, so this one will activate the start of your next turn. Uh, which is six health, one defense. Uh, you gain two defense for your magic ability and move any ally one. You have guided spear as your passive. You can use melee attacks on close or adjacent enemies and range attacks on adjacent or diagonal enemies. Oh, I do like this guy actually. Yeah. Okay. So okay. He then had to, I took one and then he'd have to take the other yeah. one. Yeah. So he's down to four. Oh no. Yeah, these imps are dirty, man. Yeah. Maybe I should have gone into that space and then fired and killed one of those. No, but I, wasn't even I didn't even part. realize that those two were going to yeah. attack me. I didn't even think about it. I didn't look either. My bad. All right. That's okay. Uh, now what? Uh, my turn. And the starting tile that we started on was this one? I think so, yeah. Yep. Okay. Do I start on the starting tile uh, here? So it works. I think it said you start on the starting tile. Oh, okay, sure. Go ahead. Yep. I'll take a word for it. Uh, now, he only needs... Oh, she... Oh, she only needs two, so then I'll just do two melee hits. Yep. Boom. Dead. She's dead. Ah! Dead. Okay, combat's over. I'm going to 11.1. .1. Oh, yeah. We heal back up to full and go back to one armor. Okay, discard any seals you have. I don't have any. The only any. thing that they didn't say in the rules is, do I, like, reshuffle these cards now? Like, all the discard is reshuffled back? I don't know. No, well, let's just keep going until okay. the deck's empty. Okay. It says when the decks are empty, just reshuffle them back in, so... Okay. All right. Within the gloom of the mausoleum, a hooded man appears, his wide, wrinkled grin looking out of place amid narrow, sunken cheeks. 
The dead are whispering complaints again, he says, winking. He throws a nod toward one of the alcoves that sleeve the bones of the deceased. They certainly do keep me up late at night, I want to say to them. You're dead. Do you know that? This isn't the silken bedchamber and breakfast inn. But someone is always needing something down here. The old man coughs, putting back his hood. His features suddenly fall in mock despair, and his voice takes on a whiny, high-pitched squeal. A rat knocked my skull on the ground. There's a spider living in my ribcage. My burial clothing is rotting. There's demons walking through the crypt. The old man grins again. That's enough whining today, my dead pretties. He pats a nearby skull, releasing a cloud of dust into the air. Names Grotho Isram. Haven't met. Have we met at the Ram of the Toil for a drink? Can't remember anything these days. Well, I appreciate your help. Can't tolerate demons, you know. Mark Grotho Ezram under Rescued Villagers. Cross off 11. Return to the map. Over there? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I think we can clean up. Yeah, I will. So we rescued three villagers. Put that on the sheet. Let's do the post-combat stuff, actually. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you got to put Fallen Knights. You have to put that Fallen Knight. Oh, night. yeah. Where, where is it? Holy Knight. Yeah, you got to write your Fallen Knights. Can't use it no longer in the campaign. Oh, yeah. You place a knight on the starting space at the beginning of your turn. Six health and one defense. Um, at the end of each battle, mark any saved elders on your campaign sheet, discard any equipped sealed cards, and reset your active knight's health back to six, and they're blocked to one. That's all. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, combat's just like a little puzzle. Yeah. It's just like a little puzzle. That's what this game is. It's just like a short little puzzly game of figuring out abilities and priorities and the multi use cards, how you need to use them, working with your team. Kind of figure out the best positioning and planning. Uh, you know the, what the demons do, but you don't know what they're going to do on their turn, you know? You know their abilities, you know kind of what they're known to do. But when you start flipping cards, sometimes they'll just spawn in. Sometimes they'll attack. Sometimes they'll move all the way across the board out of nowhere. Sometimes they'll pull enemies around. They do all this crazy stuff. It's very chaotic, but you just got to try to like... Kind of like fight the fires and, and also constantly be like taking out the threats, you know? Uh, all right. What are we doing? Uh, can we take a two-minute oh, walk yeah. break before yep. we continue? We'll Sorry. take a little break. We'll be right back.
All right, we're back. Okay, there's nothing else on this tile, so we have to move. Okay. Um, where was it? This thing? Yeah. I Maybe mean, ask the woods or the, the lake at this point? We gotta check yeah, one we gotta of them. Yeah, we gotta go to one of them. We gotta find this blacksmith. Okay, we'll go to the woods or the lake. There's a poll in the live chat you guys can vote. Oh, I just wrote wood, not woods. Sorry. Oops. I need to find the blacksmith because I think, oh, sorry. I also want to, while we're just looking at that, the guy that we just, the villager that we just got. What does he do? Once per campaign, revive a fallen knight. Oh, I wish. Did you get him out? Do we want to? Is that the one we want? What? You rescued him. Get his card out of there. Oh, I didn't get his card out. I thought you were talking about like the fallen knight. Oh, I no. forgot. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, <laughs> this is what happens. Guaranteed. So, uh, the relics, okay, they have this cool library art, and then they show you the relic on them. Okay, that's kind of cool. Little relics, right? But the villagers, this is the first game where I've seen where villagers have a name. Like Prelian and Sarah the Swamp Witch. But on the card, there's no art for Sarah the Swamp Witch. It's just this same generic art that's on the reference cards and used all over in the game. So I feel like that's what happens when you're trying to keep the cost down when the game didn't fund on Kickstarter and you're just still trying to get it out of the door. Because they didn't do any art for the little villagers. Which I thought was super awkward. I was like digging looking for cards with the villagers on them, but it's it's not that. So um, they're just like, just some text. Uh, I thought that was weird in 2022 to see a game without some character art on character cards. Yeah, it's an interesting choice. Yeah. It's just like, yep, we don't have the budget for that. Just uh, print it. But again, keeps the game cost down though too. So do we really care? I don't know, but it's just weird. But yeah. There's two more. Okay. So here is the villager we rescued. It's a little pool uh, under a tree. And it's Grotho Isram. Once per campaign, revive a fallen knight. So yeah, I don't know if that's the one we want, so we'll wait on making that decision. Yep, but... it's just it's just the ability we can use it whenever. It, it's just sitting there. Um, so yeah. Okay. It's like extra extra man. We found an extra man, a one up mushroom. Sweet. Can I close the poll? I think we're good. Uh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought it was. All right, fifty-seven percent. Let's say go to the lake. Okay. So how far can we get? We can get to the lake, one, two. We can get to 17 oh, right or here. 30, yes. But we want to go to the lake, so let's go to 17. Okay. 17. You investigate a smashed barrel while dark waves massage the lakeshore with gentle hands. Beneath a piece of the barrel, you find a note which reads, Krellian, I know we agreed at, to a lower price last week, but the deal is off. If you insist on hearing it from my own mouth, Come to the bandit cave near the waterfall. In case you've forgotten, climb beneath the falling oak and push back the hanging moss to find the entrance. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> you find, uh, you stuff the note in your pocket along with a piece of silver you find beneath the broken barrel. Gain one coin. Gain the keyword bandit. <laughs> oh, I like where this is going. Cross off 17 and return to the map. And then obviously mark a time. I did that, sorry. Okay. Okay. So again, Prelian, which we know is one of the villagers. I know we agreed to a lower price last week, but the deal is off. If you insist on hearing it from my own mouth, come to the bandit cave near the waterfall. In case you've forgotten, climb beneath the fallen oak and push back the hanging moss to find the entrance. So because we have the keyword bandit, it'll let us find the entrance, I guess. This is the waterfall. The fallen oak by the waterfall is this. Your number near here, I guess it's this one 27 or 27. Like, oh, it's 23. 23, yeah. I think, is where it is. <laughs> this is cool. Okay, and sorry, Prelian, just for everybody watching at home, start each battle with three defense instead of one. That is huge. Do we want to find him? We won't be able to get there that fast, but 
Uh, or do we just go to 25 to look for the blacksmith? Maybe he's at the lake? Like, we were going to the lake, right? Mm -hmm. We just couldn't reach there? We just couldn't reach there. All right. Okay, we can go one more. So yeah, we'll yeah. move and we'll go check out 25. Okay. 25 says, at the edge of the sagging dock, dark waters ripple beneath you. Rocking a little boat littered with dried fish guts and little white bones. Option A. Take the boat out. You have to lose a key. We don't have oh, any we don't keys. Have a key. Our B, search the dock. Turn to 25.2 while we're obviously That's going there. Choice. Fish head apes at you from the edge of the dock. The rotting remains of an angler's work. God, thank you so, so much. God just woke me up. Uh, that was loud. God gifted a <laughs> membership and <laughs> Roger won. Thank you. Thank you, Scott, for thank gifting you. that membership to Roger. Scott. Roger, welcome to becoming a member of Rob's Gaming Table. Thank you, thank you, Scott. Thank you so there much, you Roger. Congratulations. Thank you for the thank you for the support, Scott. Love that. Thank you. Sorry. Go ahead again. <laughs> it's like what? Where are we? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, fish head gapes at you from the edge of the dock. The rotting remains of an angler's work, but something glints in its mouth. Cross off twenty five. Gain two silver. Return to the map. Okay, gain two silver. So so. Check this, because we didn't have a key when we went there, we just got locked out of like some story branching options and stuff. So we can never see that again until a future playthrough. That's so cool. Dang, we needed the key. Good thing we can play it this <laughs> many more times. Or go find a key and go back. Oh, we can't go back. No, you can't. You yeah, got locked can't go out. Back. We're locked out of that. Okay. So, so it's like there's the replayability is like you look at your past adventure, you're kind of like, okay, this time we got to remember we go there. It reminds me of Destinies. Like, sometimes you kind of replay it and kind of, like, remember some things and go find things in a different order. Oh, Roger says, first time I won something, you made my day. Oh, Roger, that's so awesome. <laughs> Scott, thank you. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, Roger, if you want to join our Discord, don't forget to, uh, if you use Discord, uh, just Google how to uh, link your YouTube to your Discord, and uh, you can uh, automatically get pulled into our Discord and uh, come chat with our other members and producers. Um, and just talk about random things in the channel and all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Okie dokie. I guess he wasn't at the lake. So do we go to the woods? There, I mean, I don't even know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. This is intriguing. Yeah, go there. Let's 21? go 21. Yep. 21 says, A river stone wall runs along the forest, barely holding back the midnight evergreens, a sea of dark needles that threaten to swallow unwary children and never let them go. As you enter the forest, you find heavy footprints circling muddy puddles. Someone yells for help to the north, and you splash through the soggy leaves to find a man surrounded by monsters. Battle! If playing hard, add one imp to CR. If victorious, turn to 21.1. So it's a battle that's going to use just six tiles. And they're all using, because uh, we're in the um, forest, they're going to use the reverse sides, which is what the R means on them. And then it looks like it's a bunch of imps and stuff. So F-A-B-C-E-G. Oh, not E, sorry. This one. Not this one. This is F-R. Yep. B. This is the top one. I think I'm just missing one. So like this, like this. A A R. Do you have an A R here for me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Do we have a B R? Yep, right here. Okay. I'm just missing one. Do we have an E R? Right do we have a C R? Uh. No, I don't see a C R. Yeah, C R, please. That's all I have. H D and E. Okay, is one of these really C then? These letters. Oh, what about those tiles over there? Oh shoot! I didn't even know there was tiles there. Oh yeah, C R. I didn't even see those tiles. They weren't in the stack. I'm so sorry. I'm going cuckoo, and then E is here. Sorry, I didn't even see those. I don't know why I put those there. Again, do you need your glasses today? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't even see a stack of them there. I'm so sorry. Just kidding. You know why? Because those were the ones that we used in the last one. Anyways. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so we need an elder. Oh, yeah. Put back to Oh, yeah. Six. When I put these away, I probably should. Elder here. Yeah, keep them together because it's easier to set up, which no, is why I, I put them. Also make sure their health is back. Elder here. And, oh, that's it. Just two elders. 
Uh, if you want to look at this page, you can see and grab things and put them on the board to make this quicker. And then I'm going to look for Molten. Oh, here's a demon we got this time. Molten Scion, if you want to grab that big red dude. Lava Wave, deal two damage to a close enemy and move them one, then lose one health. Erupting Gate. When you move to a new tile, deal one damage to all enemies there and then lose one health. Look, he's got nine health, this guy. Always a boss. Um... He's already up here. I don't know which one is first, that's the problem, but I'll just take this one. And then you can have on the other side of the board is the Feral... Feral Reaver. The Rat King. Frenzy's Assault. Move one and then deal one damage to all close enemies. And he's got Feral Agility. Take one of these extra actions on your turn so it can move one space or heal one. Which his does have... Uh... Fail Reaver. At the end of the turn, heal one. If at full health, move one. Oh, okay. So it's going to do the heal first and then the move if, right. if available. I didn't see... Oh, Molten. Molten's yours, up here. Fail Rat's here. Yeah, yours has deal one damage to all enemies and lose one health each time it moves to a new tile. Yeah, which that, is just a standard thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then we're starting down here. And when you enter, to... draw one, discard one. Can't use melee in this space. Oh wow! When you enter, no range in this space. Oh, when you enter here, you gain a defense. This is our first time ever playing on these tiles backsides, like in the grassy side. Because when you play the standard mode, you only use the other side of the tiles, um, which is neat. So this is our first time seeing them. So it's new abilities for us. Okay. Let's put that there. Alrighty. So I'm fur or the feral weaver. We'll go first that one. Yep. 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 That one is that way. Okay, deal three damage to a diagonal enemy. He is right here. There is no diagonal enemy, so that's wonderful. And deal two damage to an adjacent enemy. So it's either going to be myself or Rob. Uh, I'll take it. Oh, we probably should have our cards actually as well. That will be a difference of knowing what, if someone has health versus not. Hmm. I'll take it. I'll take the two. And then, oh, this one's the bottom side. Move one and use your magic ability. So he wants to go to an unguarded elder. Mm -hmm. And his magic ability is move one, then deal one damage to all close enemies. So here, I'm just going to put him down to five. Okay. Oh, new subscriber, Jim Alderson. Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome, Welcome to the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, my turn. Okay. So, um, I can use melee attacks on close or adjacent enemies and range attacks on adjacent or diagonal. No, okay. Um, when you enter here, you could, if you don't like what you have, maybe you could draw a new card and then you get to pick any one to discard if you can do adjacent attacking, but there's also adjacent problems here. Yeah, there's lots of issues. And we need to get there to help this guy. He's in trouble. Yeah, I could just move one with this. Draw one, and then we'll see what we got. Mm. Okay, so I did discard one. Uh, deal two damage to a close enemy and move them one. Maybe it's that one. Gain one defense oh, and you move, move one. Him. I think you can move this ally. Like you can move him any ally. I don't think it has to be in your space or anything. Gain two damage. Oh yeah, I don't think they do. That's cool. You can get bring that guy like back to us. Check it in a sec. Kind of save uh, him, but deal... he will take an attack though. Oh no, he doesn't. No, they don't. They, they don't, don't get hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In one defense and move one. This movement ignores engagement. Okay, I think I'm going to take... I'm going to discard this one. All right. Let's then... Choose two close or adjacent enemies and deal one damage to each of them and move them each one. So I do need to... I probably actually should have kept that one. Get rid of this one. Because I definitely think I want the move. One. 
one. Melee can't be used in this space. That's fine. Okay, choose two closer adjacent enemies. Deal one damage to each of them and move them each one. So, one. Can you do something, like, if they're there, maybe? Uh, I got melee attacks coming out the wazoo. I have range attacks, too, but... I don't know. I'll I don't, put them I, together. I, there's two. Like this guy's gonna go before that. We'll see what happens. So I don't. This I don't know. One, I'll do one damage to him, and then I'll move him in with my space. What did I do that with? Uh, this one. Choose two close or adjacent enemies. Deal one damage each of them and move them each one. Okay, that's done. Then I gain one defense and one move. This no. I didn't need this one. Let's just do it though. Let's do the magic. Two magic. So gain two defense mm -hmm. and move one, any ally one. Mm -hmm. Me, so we yep, can yep, protect yep. them. And I have some defense now and I'm done. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Jim, I don't know yet. When I do know, uh, I will schedule it and you will see it on the channel. So just check back or make sure your notifications are turned on so you get notified when we go live. And uh, you'll get the notification for the stream. Um, but still got to figure some things out what we're playing this week. We've got to look at our schedule. Yeah, what, when Kyle's available to join us for some three-player, that kind of stuff. And I'll work around that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. Probably by tomorrow I'll have it scheduled. Probably. But again, I'm relying on others and, and different games and things. So, um, yeah. No new information. Okay. So this guy's gonna move all knights clockwise and slow them. So we could just roll it. Uh, oh, okay. Right? Yeah, that's Easier. probably simpler. So one, two, three, four, five, six, three, and you roll it one more, and I'll do the same. Four. four. So that just means when you get slowed, you can only use the basic action on the card instead of choosing out of the three options. Oh, I bumped this. This is why I shouldn't roll dice. Uh, I think it was one, because I haven't done anything. Okay, um, move all elders counterclockwise. Oh, when I enter here, draw one, discard one. Oh, and when you enter here, I gain a defense. Uh, draw one. Oops. I don't know if I'm allowed to discard the slow card. I don't know. But let's pretend I'm not. Uh, uh, well, what else is doing? Deal two damage to a closer adjacent enemy. That would be you. And add an imp and heal yourself too. No, I think I want to stay offensive. Hmm, magic's good though. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you can toss this little card. I feel like you probably could, but there might be a rule for that. I just don't remember it. I don't remember, but... Oh, anyways. Uh, all right. Then deal two damage to a close or adjacent enemy. Me. And then add an imp and heal yourself too. But he doesn't need to heal because he's full health. Oops, sorry. Uh, add an imp like that, where he is, Oh, right? sorry, wrong. I'm sorry, wrong guy. All right, and then... Uh, when you move to a new tile, he didn't move. None of that happened. Did your guy heal at the end of his turn? Uh, he, I damaged him on my turn. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're going to. I'll do my magic ability, spending two magic. It says Furious Bolt, deal two damage to one adjacent enemy. Two damage, please. Uh, then deal one damage to one enemy adjacent to the first target. Nice. Actually, unless you want to, yeah. Knock let me just, one? yeah, yeah. Let me just knock another one, so that way they'll only heal up and then try to move, basically, unless they mess around with. They probably will, though. Um. Okay, so that's gone. And then. Yeah, so I'll just do it again with the other magic here. 
So two damage here. Yeah, and then I'll I'll deal one damage to this oh, guy. Oh, they're all sleeping. He only needs two to die now. So close. I can do a range attack with this basic. I mean, that puts him to one because he's going to heal one on his turn. Yeah. Let's, it's up to you. Let's do the... Oh, uh, no, no. I can discard both these for two magic. Oh, and do it again. So do my magic ability again. Deal two damage. See you, buddy. He's gone. And then I'll just take out one of these. Okay. Oops. Then this card injury. is discarded. Okay. And then this guy is back to you. That's good. Yeah, that's how we do. Oh. All right, so it's your turn. That's like that. Uh, imps. Sorry, imps oh, are going to go yeah. first. So these guys are going to... Oh, this guy will move in here. And hit attack you. Uh, this guy already up. This guy already up. For a, they have to heal. Then their movement um, doesn't really... I'm assuming they're going towards these guys. Let's just say they go here. Okay. My turn. Hmm. Well, I think we'll just do two damage and kill this guy. Nice. Let's do... Let's move. Uh, can I do ranged in there? That's fine. Move in here. Do that. Uh, deal two damage to a close enemy. So two damage to him. And one damage to a different close enemy. There's not anyone else. That's fine. And then I'll just do a melee basic with that one. Uh, that's me done. So, uh, this guy's gonna do all demons, heal two, and move counterclockwise twice, ignoring engagement. Okay, then deal two damage to a close or adjacent enemy. So it'll try to deal one damage to these guys, but I will just take the two damage. I have to protect them. And then, move one and use your magic ability. Oh yeah, we gotta remember, when it moves to a new tile, deal one damage to all enemies there, then lose one health. So I don't know. I think you still lose health when he moves. Oh, I think it's said. Sorry. Uh, oops, this one. He was... Deal one damage to all enemies and lose one health each time it moves to a new yeah, yeah. So it would have done it one here. Yeah. So that's like a balance to his nine health, I think. Yeah. And then he's going to move again. But I think he's moving into your Yes, space. he is. So he's move gonna one. Do, he's going to do it again. So he'll deal one damage to all enemies there. So one, two, three to protect them. Okay. Uh, or no, I'll let, I'll let them each take a damage, sorry. Okay. Yeah, because I, I see he's going to do some more. He's also going to lose one for moving on to the yep. next tile. Yeah, lose one. And then uh, his magic ability is deal two damage to a close enemy and move them one, then lose one health. So, I don't know, I'll have to take that one too. And then, but it's going after the elder, but then I'll take it. I, I don't know who gets moved. I would assume the one he's trying to damage. I'm just guarding them. So this one with the most damage. Move them one. So we can move them here. Or we can move them here. I would move them here. Farther away from these guys. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We just choose, I think, in that point. Because there's no like other things helping. Um. Okay. And then lose one health. Okay. Uh, Great. Imp. So just these guys are coming in and doing one damage each. Mm -hmm. To you. Oh, no. Knight's dead. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't think far enough ahead. Dang it. Help. Yeah. When you go too offensive. So I got the Guardian Knight, or the Guardian Knight now. Who has ball rush, gain one defense, move one, then deal one damage to a close enemy. Shield bash, deal one to the attacker when you defend a melee attack. Oh, I didn't drop Cool. Six health. Three. Yeah, I'm like totally worried about these elders, but it's I know, like, maybe I yeah. maybe we're playing too aggressive. Yeah, so, we are. We yeah, are. So, yeah, definitely. Okay. That's okay. Good to know. Okay, my turn. Well, I gotta move. 
I'm getting you. Oh yeah, starting space was this one. This one. Killing I don't really me. have much going on here. Uh, yeah, I don't really have much going on. Well, you could get down here pretty fast. You can just do like, you know, like one movement. Um, yeah, you do like I could just one get in movement, there one movement, defense. one movement, and then like, oh, you got two movement here, or you could turn that on to hit, or you could heal up. Like, Well, I'll just use this for two movement, I think, to go... One, gain a defense, and two. Yeah. And then, close enemies. I'll move for one. Uh, draw a card, then I have to discard one. Heal any ally one and move them, or heal an adjacent ally two. You may lose two health to repeat this effect. We'll discard that one. Wait. Okay. Uh, heal an adjacent ally two. Uh, you may lose two health. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to lose any health. Uh, deal one damage to all close enemies and slow them. So damage, damage, and then two damage to this one. Yep. But they're, they're, do they get slowed? No, they don't get slowed. Oh. That's fine. Hmm. And, yeah, I think I... You can't slow minions? No, I looked it up this morning. Hmm. I think it's in the defense. Like in the slow thing, there's there's like a little blurb about uh, co-op mode. I think. Cooperative mode. If a demon is slowed in cooperative mode, they instead take an extra damage. There's somewhere that, that it does say specific. I read it this morning. I just wish I remembered where. Oh, players cannot slow minions or elders. There you go. Oh, okay. There you go. Found it. Um, but that's fine. He, they still are. Yeah, yep. Down. They're still slowed. They're sleeping. No, okay. I'm done. Go ahead. Oh, uh, here you go. Uh, deal one damage to close enemies. Okay. Uh, Two, is it all? It just says close? <laughs> yeah. And the rule book is like, anytime it says all enemies, but this one just says close enemies, so it's, I'm assuming all enemies, it's okay. just not saying that. But... So I'll take the one for <laughs> the elder and then myself. Oh my God. Uh, um, I'll take the defense for myself too, just in case. So knight's not on a corner tile, move one counterclockwise. We're both or on both corner ones. tiles. Yeah. Add two imps. Ugh. Or if all imps are already in play, all imps take two actions. No, I can add two. Cool. Then this ability, charge, move one, and deal two damage to a close enemy. So it's obviously going here. You can take a damage from me as it leaves. Okay. Now, the order of things, this is again. So, when you move to a new tile, deal one damage to all enemies there, then lose one health. I'm assuming it can die by that? Yeah, because it doesn't say, like, to a minimum of one. Does it say, like, after... Deal one damage to all enemies and lose one health each time it moves to a new tile. Okay, die that way. I'm moving one, and then it says, end deal two damage to a close enemy. So I'm assuming I resolve the move. This says, when you move to a new tile, deal one damage to all enemies there, then lose one health. So I'm going to let this guy <laughs> take the damage, and I'm going to take a damage, and then he'll lose one health, and he's dead, and he's we win. Dead. All right. Discard oh. these. Those. Heal back to full. One defense. Okay. Uh... And then what else happens? I'm going to write down we had oh, write down the two fallen elders. Knight. Oh, yeah, the Fallen Knight. I'll do that. Not really enough room to write them all, but I'll stop writing Knight. And just, what is it? Three. Okay, we had two elders that we saved. Plus two. What number was this all happening at, if you can tell me on the map? Uh, 
21. 21. I took my bookmark out. Uh, 21. Uh, if victorious, turn 21.1. You wrote down the elders we saved, yeah? Yes, two. All right. The monster is defeated. You help the man up. His face is plastered with muck. The appearance matches, matching his stained blacksmith's apron and wool shirt. Behind the grime, you recognize Black Slith, Blacksmith Harkum. Yes. I was on my way home from the lake when I saw something in the forest. I should get home. Can't have Tula worried. Last time she hit me in the arm because I got home too late. <laughs> I, I had a bruise for a week. Mark Blacksmith Harkum under Rescued Villagers. Cross off 16 and 21 and return to the map. And then make sure you mark a time. 16 is already, and then I got to find him. I think I already marked a time. Sorry. Just do it whenever I say return to the map, mark the time. Okay. Just so we don't accidentally lose extra time or gain extra time. It's kind of important, right? Okay. Yeah, so that's why I was trying to tell you before was let's, let's do it like the exact same every time. Nice with full health, deal plus one melee damage per melee card. Okay. So if we have full health, we hit harder with melee cards. That's good. Just try to remember that. Okay, that's good. Okay. So the next next area that we're going is like up in here to the waterfall. Based on what the story told us. But we us. could stop here. There's eight. We could go up here. There's nine. Some fallen tree. There's a cave here with five. I bet there's a fight there's going on there. There's a fight in there for sure. There's a little path up here. Fourteen. Yeah, I want to get to the cave. We could go one, two, and we could stop at nine and then decide if we want to hook to five and then up. Yep. Or if okay. we want to go. Nine. Let's go to nine. Yep, yep, yep. A freshly fallen tree lies ahead. Did something block this path to set up an ambush? Option A. Leave the path and hide in the forest. Option B. Climb over the tree and continue. Mel's going to put that in the chat in a poll, and you guys can decide what we do there. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. I don't even know what I would choose. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's all good. We'll just see what happens. Maybe like some of these things we would get more information if we talk to more people in town and stuff. They would like warn us about some of these things, you know. Yeah. To help make you do better, to have better information on your decisions. Who knows? That's true. Maybe. All right. If you want to close the poll. Climb the tree and continue. Okay. All right. Uh, where the heck was I? What number are we at? Nine. Uh, nine. Uh, nine point two. You approach the tree, but something feels wrong, as each step takes you closer to something unpleasant. With a sudden shriek, a large, winged figure swoops down and grabs one of your knights, flying away to the northeast until it disappears over the treetops. Choose one of the active knights and place the card in the game box. Oh, no! No! <laughs> and it says, write the knight's name in the keyword section next to this keyword, snatched. You may not use this knight until they're rescued. Draw a new active knight, cross off nine, and return to the map. Okay, so let's do cross off nine. Let's do our time. Who are we going yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, that's a poll. That's a poll, if I ever heard one. So we're going to take both these knights, and you guys decide who we keep and who gets snatched. So here's the guardian knight, uh, who's all about defense, moving one, dealing damage to close enemies, has a shield bash. So if an attacker hits them with a melee attack, you, you smack them back. Then we have the Seer Knight who can gain defense and move any ally to kind of keep them safe. And the Gilded Spear, you can use a melee attacks on close or adjacent enemies and range attacks on adjacent or diagonal enemies. They're both cool. One's like got some cool offense going on. And this one's kind of got like the whole tanky thing going on. Um, but yeah, who's getting snatched? Is that what the question is? Or who we're saving? What did you put? Oh, I didn't even actually put a title. Sorry, that's my bad. This uh, is who would be snatched. Who would be snatched? Yeah, because this is what, that's what that's. Is that what I said? Yeah. Okay. 
Which which night are we picking to be snatched? Sorry, I I didn't even think. I just assumed because of the wording oh. of that. So that's my bad. Should have hidden. Yeah, I Mark. know, right? I know, well, I now know. we know. <laughs> Take note for next time. <laughs> so who will be snatched? Who will be snatched? Okay. Oh, my knight, the seer knight. Seer knight's getting snatched. Cowards live to fight another day. <laughs> okay, so this guy is going away. And then your next knight is the wind knight, who has biting gale. It deals two damage to one close or adjacent enemy and then move them one. And that is wind wall. Gain one defense at the start of your turn. You do not have to move to defend range attacks. And you can defend range attacks against any ally. So you can even block me. Like, Sweet. if I'm being attacked, then you can be just adjacent and go, yeah, I'll use some defense to help you. Boom. So you can just, like, basically you fly around. Okay. So fast, like the wind. We're going through a lot of these nights real fast. Yeah, yeah. I don't... How's our time looking? We're only, like, halfway. We're like halfway. We've lost, like, four nights. We suck. I know. We can revive one of them. Yeah, yeah. Before the battle. I know. If any one of those nights... I do like the one that, well, the Seer Knight, maybe he'll, we'll get him back if we can find him. He's snatched if we can figure out where they took him. Oh, we know where they took him. Somewhere up here, it said. They flew uh, northwest. Did they not say that? Something like that? Flying away northeast. Oh, northeast. Yeah, oh, it's like the final there. battle oh, kind of idea. Oh, no. Maybe we'll get him back then. It's or if you work against us. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, so we're at nine. Uh, we're going to the cave? We're going... Is that on the same tile? Yeah, it is. It's on the same one. Should we go in the cave? Is that a fight? Or north? North to 14? You... Yeah, maybe yeah, we'll let's put go both north. options. Put both options. 14 put a pull or 5? So 5 the cave, or go north to 14 along the path. Yeah, so you guys can decide. There's a poll in the chat. So five goes to this cave here on the left, on um, the same space we're on, so we won't move any. And remember, we could always like move to not explore and get a free extra move, like just to get further to get to something. So we could have like one, two, not explore, and then just go right here, and then we start our turn next time there. But that uses a time still. So. I know, I like to explore, though. I know, I, I know, I know. As I can. Yeah, of course. Who thinks five is a fight? I do. I don't know. We're going in a dark I just cave. want to get to this bandit thing over by the waterfall eventually. That's where we're going next, I think. Yeah. Okay. It? Yeah, it's just like a minute. It's, I think, more than enough. Five. So we're... Staying here, and we're going to five. If keyword Willow no. turned to 5.5, 5, we didn't find Willow, no. or we didn't watch the 1980s movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got a $5 tip. Jim, Jim thank, thank you for the you. tip. Recently found your channel and love what you do. Keep it up. Question mark, question mark. We plan to keep it up. Yes, we yeah, will. That was more maybe of a question. Yes. I think so. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you so thank much. you for the donation. I appreciate the support. Thank you. Thanks for allowing us to keep doing what we do. We appreciate it. All right. Pale moonlight touches the uncut forest grass and ghostly figures in a woodland clearing. Or sorry. Pale moonlight touches the uncut forest grass and ghostly flowers in a woodland clearing. You follow a path of stones to a thick wooden door cut into the hillside. As you try the handle, something stirs at the edge of the clearing, rustling ferns and kicking up dead leaves. Option A. Oh, oh, we don't have a key. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, you could open the hillside door if you had a key, which we don't, or investigate the noises. So we're going to investigate the noises. Okay. You gingerly part scruffy yellow bushes looking for the cause of the noises. With a shriek, a little girl tumbles out of the leaves landing on her back. Get back. This is my money. I didn't steal it, says the girl, her clothes and face dripping with mud. You shouldn't be out here. Demons roam the woods tonight, you say. I don't care about demons, you ugly. She spits running down the path toward the village. You find a small bag of coins in the dirt where she stumbled or where she tumbled. Option A. 
Oh no. Take the coins for yourself. <laughs> or option B, hold the coins for now so you return, can return them to the girl later. So take the coins or hold the coins. And you guys can vote. What would you choose? Take the coins from the little girl or hold them and give them back to her later. Oh see. no. See what type of people you are. I know what I would do. <laughs> I know. You would hold the, or take the coins. Give me that loot. Loot. I mean, technically, isn't both ways holding them if we never see her again? Like, if we offer to hold them, or if we hold them, and then we never run into her again to give them back. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, yes, loot goblins unite. Alrighty. Oh, we have some nice hold people. Hold for now. Hold Six, for now. Sixty-three percent say hold for now. Okay, that's what I probably would. Have All right. <laughs> Fine, I guess. You don't take coins from a child. You don't know that's what's going on. If it was on. an adult, I would take the coins. Okay, that girl will be so disappointed to lose these. You say, setting the coins aside for her. Gain the keyword urchin. Cross off five and return to the map. <laughs> Cross off five. And return to the map. And return to the map. Okay. What's so next? we're going one, two is nothing. One, two is nothing. I think both ways is nothing. So do we want to just do our three, one, two, and three? And that's our turn? Or we can go to 14. Oh, there's 14. Okay, yeah, let's go to 14. Sorry. Okay. I didn't even see that. The crack and snap of falling rocks echoes above. A large rock smashes the ground near your feet. You look up just in time to see a massive rock slide thundering down the mountain, threatening to bury you alive. Option A, run forward. Option B, run into the forest to the west. So we're on the path. A massive rock slide's coming down from the mountain. Uh, as you can see here, this mountain, it's coming down. We either boot it ahead or we dive into the forest to the west. What do you guys think? Hmm. No worries, Buell. Thank you for the good luck. Uh, thank you, good yeah. Good luck on your podcast. Okay. I wonder if this will literally put us on a different square. Okay, closing the pool. Run forward. Okay, 14.1. Uh, you dash ahead of the falling rocks, barely escaping a crushing death. Along the road, you find signs of a struggle. A torn pack, a dropped bottle of crimson liquid, drops of blood on the rocks, and half-eaten meat pie. You take the pie. Gain one elixir. Oh, okay. Oh, we keep forgetting elixirs to heal back up in battle. Oh, we do, and we have now six of them. Okay, let's not let any more knights die then, and uh, let's heal up in battle using elixirs first. Yeah, I definitely forgot that we could Yeah, do that. I just remember, as soon as I read elixir, I'm like, oh yeah, we forgot that's a thing. Yeah, I definitely forgot. Oops. Oh well. Okay, we, can, today, we can... We're definitely getting a point across of showing how the game works. Uh, this is my excuse I'm going to give you now um, for our horrible plays. Uh, but yeah, we're just showing the game off. Our first time, again, we're playing this blind, so we're obviously learning. But sure. again, it's, it's replayable. So you can play this campaign and go different ways and try different things and find different items and use different elixirs and try different knights and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'm totally okay if like we just have a whole bunch of knights die and don't get the best score. Technically... Because based on the story and the poking around, like I really want to play again to dig through some of that <laughs> stuff. Also, technically, there is a play of holding your elixirs to the final battle. Oh yeah, true. So, I mean, we're not but, playing but wrong. score-wise, I think keeping knights alive, all right? As, we can, yeah. So we on, can let me look at the points. one of them. Because the points will tell you like what you kind of want to be doing if you're going for a better score, right? Like, oh, yeah. But this is our first time. Like, I don't care how good our score is. Two per night alive. Okay. But so, six points if we, for every relic we own? Oh, yeah, we're not buying any relic. We don't have enough money. We only oh. have three. We should have looted the girl. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Idiots. I told you we should have robbed her. I'm just her. kidding. <laughs> 
oh, we get rescuing villagers is important mm -hmm. uh, because we get six points each. Rescuing an elder is three. That's pretty good. Yeah, we already have. And if we have any unspent five. scrolls or keys, do we have we scrolls? Do we keys. have any scrolls? Two. There's no. Yeah, we could buy a willow wand. Oh. Move all close enemies one. Yeah, look at oh, this. Oh, I didn't realize there was cheaper things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, we just keep forgetting to look at this side of the stupid paper. But um, so you may use once per battle on your turn. So that costs six. That's expensive. We only have three coins. So you could buy a summoning ring because we have a scroll and three money. Move any ally or enemy to your tile. So like once per battle, you can just do that. A willow wand once per battle. You could just move all close enemies one. So you just get them out of your space. Get away from me. That's, yeah. And then an oracle's diadem. Is that right? Uh, gain one extra power card and play it on your turn. Let's get mm -hmm. more stuff done. We can buy that right now. Like, why not? Let's do that one. Okay. And is it just one person does the relics, or is it the whole team like these uh, uh, these villagers? Let's see. Relics. Anytime outside of battle or reading from the storybook, you may pay scrolls and or coins to buy relics. Okay, so we're spending. So we have only... What? Hmm? Scrolls and or coins. Uh, scrolls and coins. And or? What's the or then? Oh, we only have to choose one? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. This rule book in this game is like a joke. Such a, it's like a sick joke, man. It's like they typed it out and just like printed well, it and didn't even, no one read it again. Like it's so dumb. Very oh, frustrating. Geez. But again, the game's so like light and cheap. It's like, okay, sure. But it's like, it's, it's kind of like unacceptable. I was always told Red Raven Games is like all quality, but this game like totally tarnishes that in my eyes. Uh, when you buy a relic, mark it on the sheet and retrieve the appropriate card from the deck. Relics can be used once per battle. So I think it's just like, I don't know. I don't know if like relics are just like one person. I think it, yeah, I think it would. Like you just have the relic maybe. Maybe just one person. I don't know. One extra power card and play it on your turn. Yeah, you have it. You have it. Okay. There you go. Thanks. But how are we paying for this? Is it? I mean, it doesn't make just sense. Just use that both. It, yeah, it doesn't make sense that you would only use one based on like the cost curve here. Yeah, because two coins is really cheap and if you can buy a scroll for five coins each yeah and like this costs six coins or two but then this one costs three i don't know like two coins. i think you have to pay for both see jen is saying you would think that right and or you can use one or the other or some of both okay but then look at the cost curve so, it doesn't so, make sense. so what are you paying for this then what do you pay for a firestorm amulet then janet <laughs> like you could pay one coin and do, 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 is that how would that mean is coin. that is that what you think no i don't know i don't think it makes sense either way you tell me how much does the blood amulet cost what can i pay how many coins how many scrolls how many of end or can i use like can i use one scroll and one coin like what doesn't make, doesn't it doesn't make sense, I, it doesn't make sense. I don't especially know. if you look at the very bottom one which isn't even as good but it costs two coins and or three scrolls. I think maybe it's saying the end or because scrolls are worth five coins each and you can purchase them anytime. So what I think it's saying is for this one, for example, if you just had seven coins, just pay seven coins and buy this or pay two coins and one scroll. Oh, I see. <laughs> I think we just say, yeah. You know what I mean? This is just like, again, it's. 2022, Modern Gaming's been bump, bumping for about 20 years at this point. This publisher's pumped out many, many games. Uh, and still we have this kind of stuff where like, it, it, just, it just screams of not play tested. Like a second set of eyes never looked over the game, even though it had two designers. I, I don't know. But yeah, I'm calling it out, man. Calling it out. I'm, I'm, I'm like a little tired of it. And maybe they thought, okay, we'll charge 40 bucks for the game or whatever. So let's only put like, $40 worth of effort into it, you know, kind of idea. But this happens in like $200 Kickstarter based games and stuff too. But it's just like, come on, man. It's like unacceptable. It's like just disrespectful to your audience. Like you're just trying to sell them trash. Like the game could be fun, but like 
you obviously didn't believe in it enough to put in the effort, right? Yeah. But anyways, we still do, having fun with the story, though, for sure. We do need this uh, Firestorm amulet that deals three damage anywhere. I mean, that's very good. Yeah. So that's what we're saving for. Okay. <laughs> if we can... Six coins or two scrolls or one coin and one scroll. Assume scrolls are five coins each. Maybe. Maybe. I, <laughs> We're not sure either. I know. <laughs> Again, I've linked the latest fixed updated rule book down below. If you want to look up answers or try to figure things out, we might have it wrong too. There might be the answers in there. But go read some of the posts on BGG even after the new rule book. Still lots of confusion. Um, so yeah, it's just like, yeah. Maybe they just had like a tight deadline and they were like, quick, add the story mode fast before it goes to print. Go, go, go. Maybe they didn't have playtesters outside of their company playtesting it. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's like the two guys working together and like had their mom test it who doesn't want to like call out the BS, you know? Because Junior can't do anything wrong. Or they have their kids try it who are afraid to tell Daddy like, I don't get it, Daddy. And like, Shut up. You just don't understand. I'll mm -hmm. tell you how it works. But it's like, no, no, type down. When someone asks you a question, they don't understand how it works. Tape it down and add it to the rule book. Because someone else might have that question too. But it's like, it just screams like a second set of eyes never looked it over. Like they didn't pay for playtesting or take the time to playtest. Or the same person just kept playtesting. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you don't see your mistakes, right? Right. Like when I read a rule book, I don't, I don't get it all right. I, I'll read it multiple times. There'll be certain things I just don't get right. Then I bring it on to stream or Mel reads the rule book and I play it with Mel. Mel's like, Rob, I think that actually works that way. And I'm like, oh, you read it like this. Mm -hmm. I read it like this. Okay, cool. Or I bring it on stream and people are like, oh no, Rob, they corrected that online. Or this is the way we read it and understood it. So it's like sometimes it just takes a second set of eyes or that second understanding or those experiences to like decipher a rule as intended, you know? Um, so it's like it happens. It's fine. Like it's not always on the rule book, but yeah, it's just weird. And yes, Daniel, that, that would be true. And that's mm -hmm. the way it should be. Yeah, no quality control. That's exactly what it screams. Um, Still playable now, though, with the new rule book. Like, we were able to play co-op, no problem. We figured it out. Just a few weird things come up. You just rule them. House rule them. Even looking at the clarifications on the co-op abilities and things and the AI. Yeah, it helps. Still, it helps, but it doesn't always, like, answer every kind of weird situation. Um, but, yeah. Just rule it and keep moving. Who cares? Yeah. It's that kind of, you got to take that kind of attitude to it. So we were on 14. I don't know if that finished. Um, the branch we were on. What was the last poll thing we did? Uh, we ran Run forward. forward. Uh, yeah, we gained one elixir, cross off 14, and return to the map. Okay. Cross off 14. This, did I gain an elixir? I think that's what you were writing the elixir. I did that, and then we realized we hadn't that's, bought... Yeah, that's when I started talking okay. about the knights dying and the score and stuff. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So from here, we're Rant going... over. All from right. here, we're going to 23, right? Where we think... Yes. The... 100%. I, I think it's where the bandit cave is. We're going there. I, I must know. I here, but... If keyword bandit... Yes. Turn to 23.1, which is right below it. Okay. Mm. Following the instructions on the note. Uh -oh. Yogi, thank you so much. Yogi gifted Yogi's a Yogi's credit card got unfrozen. Okay. Uh, thank you, Yogi, for gifting the membership. JB, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, make sure you welcome. Uh, thank you to Yogi. Yogi, thank you for the support. Thank you so much, Yogi. Welcome, JB. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to join our producer member Discord, just uh, remember to link in your Discord, link your YouTube account to your Discord, and you'll get pulled in our uh, member Discord. Thanks, Yogi. And now you can use the cool emojis, and your name will be highlighted and have a cool die beside it. And maybe other things coming in the future, like member-only streams, member-only posts, member-only polls, all those kind of things we do. All right. I know, it is cool when you look up and you see all the green yeah. and, green and the dye of lots, all different colors. Lots of royalty of different tiers in the, in the chat. I like Love it. it. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, following the instructions on the note, you duck behind a fallen oak and weave through hanging moss to find a door behind the roaring foam of the water. Claw marks rake across the rotting planks of the door, which hangs from the hinges like the last leaf of autumn. As you step forward, marking the muddy animal tracks on the passage, on the rough passage tiles, you hear a low moan. Your first instinct tells you to rush forward. Is that a moan from a mortally injured victim? But you hold back, approaching with caution. The passage widens to a large stone chamber. A trench of water runs through the center where you find the source of the moaning. A young man lies on the cobblestones, gripping a bleeding arm, his face in a sour wince. When he notices you, he attempts to rise to his feet. Watch out for the... Battle. 
a looming demon, Bloodshade. If playing hard, add one imp. To E, if victorious, turn to 23.2. So looming demon means there's going to be demons starting on the map from setup, and then we have a looming demon that will come in when the first demon's eliminated. And it looms. I don't know where it gets added when the looming happens, but I can check real quick here. This is our first time we've seen a looming demon happen. They appear... When an active is defeated, place the figure on the same tile. Oh, okay. So just like that a pure where the last one died. Okay, so here's the fight we're dealing with. D-F-E. You can actually put them like in the order on the table, like just set them up as you go. I know, but I got I don't know why you just stack them in another pile. Come on, man. Oh, I thought that was F, but that's not. Because it takes me longer than it, and no, I no, just no. try. The same way you pull them out of a stack and you just slap them down, just put them like I know, in but the order, like this. Because you only hold it up for so long, and I, I have know to... I'm not gonna right here. Look, I have I it up for you. I'm waiting for you to look but at I it. But I have to. Um... No, no. I'm gonna fight with you on this one. I have to do both things. I'm gonna fight with you. No, I'm e. fighting with you. Okay. That's I'm fine. not impressed. I'm gonna win. Don't worry. No, I'm not. Impressed. Uh, what is it? G B B. Okay, G C B. Got it. It's it's Ger. G and Sir C... and B. Oh, hold on. Ger Sir Bra. Hold on, I'm all on the wrong way. And. Okay, got it, got it, got you it. You got it? Got it. Are you sure? Got it. You can double check me if you like. I will now. But see, I can double check you quicker than going through a pile of tiles trying to read little letters on them. <laughs> Alright. Implored, we need. Implored, it's gonna go there. You can get the implored. Got him. And then the next one's Bone Crusher over here. I'll take the Bone, bone Crusher. crusher. Bone Crusher. And then what was the one hanging out? Bloodshade? Oh no, look at this one. Bloodshade. She wants to blood feast. She's a wing stalker. Okay, she's going to be hanging out, hiding over here, just waiting to come in. Be hanging out over here. Okay, these guys we don't need anymore. Oh, that spun around, sorry. Elder, we need another Elder. Boom. Let's start here. And then Bone Crusher. I like the way this mode, we're not yet had to play with like nine freaking elders on the board or whatever it is. The oh, eight, yeah, eight yeah. elders. We have to like, save them all. And... Yeah, like I like how it's just like little, little skirmishes. This is fun. And we have the when you enter, you heal one health here. We have the water tile that's divided into two. We gotta use movement to cross it. And that's it. A little bit outside, a little bit inside. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's get our cards. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. One, two, three. The Bone Crusher. Okay, the Bone Crusher. Let's look. No the imps. Not yet. Love it. So this guy is oh, because this guy look okay, at spawns crawlers. This guy's his own minions. We haven't seen yet. Lose one health to place, place two bone crawlers uh, on closer adjacent tiles. Each has one health and takes one action at the start of your turn. So instead of at the end of the round, these guys act when this guy activates. Okay. Yes, yeah. shatter when you die. So do your bone crawlers. When you or the bone crawler dies. Uh, each deals one damage to a close enemy, and this guy's eight health. Okay, I think that one is a straightforward. And then you have the Imp Lord. Yeah. The Imp Lord has create an Imp. Oh, here's where your Imps are coming from. Aww. We're gonna have more minions than ever before on this one. Sweet. Place an Imp on a close or adjacent tile, and then take one action with it. Shackled Souls. When attacked, you may trade places with an Imp, so the attack hits the Imp instead. At least this guy has low health. So if we can like kill him as quick as possible, we can prevent all the imps from coming. Maybe that's so, us, like arriving. This guy is implored. Always activate shackles, souls if able. TJ, thank you so much. TJ says, "Grats, congrats on reaching 16k subscribers." Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping us. Okay, so he's always going to use this ability if, if able to switch places with imps. Okay. Okay. Uh, he's first. These are your cards. Sweet. First one. Second. And don't forget, knights with full health deal plus one melee damage per melee card. Oh, yeah. And so I get it. You can even use the like the basic one. You'll get a basic, and you can still like do two melee hits with that even. Ooh, look at it. Uh, I get one extra card, so gain one extra power card and play it on your turn. Okay. So, first card. That This is for this guy. Uh, deal one damage to two different close or adjacent enemies. Uh, oh, you're right here too. Um, 
Well, it's obviously going to go after the unguarded elder. We know this first. Yeah, but I could go in there. Well, you can not even have to go in there. You can do it from adjacent. Remember, I know, but ability. I have melee, and I'm thinking. Okay, then yeah. Full, if I, uh, he's going to do how much though? Sorry, deal one yeah, damage. Yeah, double check to the other card. Different. Oh yeah. Does that might matter? You don't want to. But again, we have ability. elixirs. Remember, we have elixirs. Elixirs, elixirs. We got to use them when we when we are about to die and stuff. But only on yeah, your turn. Only on your turn, you can use elixirs. So you got to be smart. He's going to place imps, and they're going to activate, so... Uh, okay, I think I will... I'll just let her take, and then I'll go in on the next one. Deal one damage to up to two different close or adjacent enemies. So one damage here, and then either of us... Do you want to take that one, and then I'll... What am I taking? Two damage? One. One? Okay, done. Move the one with the lowest health to, the to your tile, and deal one more damage to them. Okay, so. Okay. Next. Okay, and then heal two, already full, and use your magic ability. Uh, place two imps on a closer adjacent tile and take one action with them. Okay, and then it'll obviously, uh, one action, they're both going to try to attack the elder, uh, and then I'll just lose two more. Okay, then I will move in here. Okay, let's do two attacks. Oh, I gain. How is that one worded? On each card, right? Knights with full health deal plus one melee damage per melee card. Okay, so then let's do this first one. We'll do three. Three damage plus one per melee card. Yeah, and I can do them however I want, but I want to do two damage to one of these and I'll do one damage to this guy. Can you do five damage in this turn and we can kill him so we don't have to get any more imps? Oh, I should have actually done two damage to him before I moved in. Because that would be range. So I did two damage before I moved in. Then I move in and I do that. And then deal two damage to one closer adjacent enemy and move them one. Yeah, I can. I can use my magic here uh, to deal two damage to this guy. He's dead. And move them one, but he's already dead. She's going to come out now. Might be bad, but we'll see. Yeah, but she doesn't do anything yet. She won't do anything until we get all the way back around and it's that demon's turn. And that is this girl. Okay, and then move directly to any other tile. No, I think I... I think I just actually use this to heal you, too. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. Uh, deal one damage to the attacker when you defend a melee attack. Was I getting slammed in there by him or by the imps? By... The first time was him. And then another and two the times was the imps. imps. So those imps each have one damage. Oh, so then... Okay. Yeah, yeah. My shield bash. Yeah, yeah. Deal one damage to the attacker when you defend a melee attack. A melee attack is just an attack that's close, dealing damage in your space. So okay. just FYI. That's fine. So I don't know if that changed, but you hitting the rat. If the rat hit me, then he would have been like one less health or something. So then I would just have been able to use that one damage to kill this guy. Sure. Okay, because I had that yep, melee. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, My I'm bad. done. Oh, that's I forgot fine. this guy's passive. One, two, three. This is used, so I'm just going to tilt it so I know. That's up. These are yours. Oops, I mixed them. All right. Oh, I'm so sorry. Gain a defense at the start of your turn, yeah. which I did not do. Okay. Um... Swap your current tile with an adjacent tile that has the most enemies, keeping all figures on the tile. So that's him here. Most enemies is right here. So oh, he's going to swap with this one. <laughs> like actually messes with the board. I think it would be ours. We're the most enemies. Uh, no. Did it not a, yeah, definitely oh, not sorry, adjacent. I thought just no, no, swap. no. Uh, so, anyways, enemies on both tiles take two damage. Pew, pew. Okay. Uh, allies on both tiles heal too, but that's just him, so no heals. Deal two damage to all close enemies. Well, you flipped it around, buddy. You didn't move. Done. Uh, and then when you die, close bone call. Okay, nothing there. All right, my turn. Um, hmm. She has so much health, but she's like one that, uh, she has six health. Oh, actually, sorry. Start. Sorry. Yeah, she does a whole, oh, we, did we not read this one? No. Uh, so Blood Feast. She will deal, with her magic ability, she'll deal one damage to Close Knight or Elder, then gain two health. This is the only way to raise your health above six. So she starts at six, which is highlighted in white, 
and she could do that ability to get up to nine. That's the only way she can heal at all there. Um, but she does heal on cards. But any of the car AI cards that say heal can't get her past six. After you play a card to move, you may increase this movement by one. So she just gets like extra movement. Or no, her AI thing is like at the end of her turn, she like moves or something. Uh, Bloodshade. Uh, if the cooperative mode card moves the Bloodshade, the Bloodshade takes one extra move action at the end of her turn. You should move based on target hi hierarchy and players choose if there's a tie. Yep. So only if she moves on her turn, she'll get an extra movement at the end of her turn. Okay. Okay. So back to my turn. Um, I mean, we probably should take her out, right? Then quickly before she... Yeah, I'm just thinking. I don't know if I can. Uh, let me just see what I got here. So this could do three melee. Oh, my magic ability is not really working for me right now. But I could just do extra melee by flipping these over, or this over, and this over. So I could do a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She's dead. You only need six. Right? Because these, if I use this, it's now a melee card, right? So mm -hmm. if I use it as a melee, I get an extra. As long as you're full, you have to heal first. Oh, I have to heal. That's right. I gotta be full health, which I can't get to. Hmm. You have, do you have two heal on the other one? Mm, yep. So I will heal one off my basic card. I guess I'll do three melee damage here. Oh, what did I do here? Oh, no, it's not three because I'm not healed. Sorry, I'll heal one off of a basic card. Okay. Uh, yeah, heal one off that, so I'm full. Then that melee attack would be next, doing three damage. And then I'll just do melee on this one, uh, to two? do two more. Alright, one away. That's gone. I need new cards, and then we'll do imp turn, but there are no imps. Nope. And then your bloodshade goes next. Alright. Move one, unless on a tile with an elder. She is. Okay, deal five damage to a close enemy. No, unless on a tie with Oh, another. I see, sorry, I see. Yeah, yep. And then deal five damage to a close enemy and slow them. I will, I'll take that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then slow will you roll one of your die there? Four. And then heal yourself equal to the excess damage. There was no excess damage. And then this one is upside down. Uh, heal yourself one and use your magic ability, which is deal one damage to a close knight or elder and then gain two health. Uh, I'll, I'll do it. I think it is you because you have the least the health least, when it's right? tied. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. And then gain two health. This is the only way you can raise your health above six. Dang it. Okay. Um, myself. One, two, three. Four. I can kill her. So let's do this is two. One, two. This does one. And I'll just flip this over to do a basic for one. And that'll kill her. Yeah. She's gone. Oh, sorry. I took these, but I shouldn't have. And then I'll just heal myself. Oh, at the start of my turn, I got a defense. And I'll heal myself for one. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, deal one damage to each close and adjacent elder. One damage here, but this one, um, I can move in and take it. Okay. Oh, I don't think I can because this is the way the space works. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that tile. I know, I, but I don't know for sure, but okay. Um, Slow, close, and adjacent knights. There are none. Heal yourself and all close and adjacent allies too. Nope. Move one. Unless on a tile with an elder, then deal three damage to a close enemy. And this elder is gone. I'm going to put it in the box so it's not part of our save ones at the end. Because I put them here to remember and then when I write it down, because 
Like when I clean up, I put all the saved ones here. So then when I get the paper, I well, can the write saved ones should be still on the board. Yeah, but I clean it all up before oh, we bring the thing back. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, done. So that deck needs to be shuffled and made new again. While you're doing that, I will. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm going to move with my basic card. And then I will just do two basic moves to get in here. Those are gone. And then I will attack with a melee card. Uh, and I get to hit for three. One, two, three, because of our blacksmith. And that's gone. My turn is done. I need three new cards, if you don't mind. And then it's your turn. Oh, there's no imps, no right? Imps. Yep, my turn. Ooh, now I got the damage. Okay, well. One, two. Use those feet. How many does he have? Uh, he's at health five right five. now. Let's deal... Got lucky. Didn't make any bone crushers yet. I know. We have been lucky. Deal three damage to an adjacent enemy. You may not take melee actions for the rest of the turn. One, two, three. He needs two more damage and we win this one. I can't do that. Uh, oh, it's starting my turn. I got defense. Are you at full health? No. No. Uh, I'll just do a ranged attack. One more. Down to one. And I will heal one. Sorry, that's all I got. One, two, three. And then I'll just shuffle. Uh, whoops. No, it's this one. Uh, all demons heal two and move counterclockwise. Deal two damage to a close or adjacent enemy. Oh, yeah, he left my space. He takes damage for that. Oh, and he left my space. Oh, he takes damage. damage for that. He's at one. Uh, then he'll deal two damage to a close or adjacent enemy. Oh, and I can't get in there. Okay. That's what happens when you leave the elders behind. I know, but I couldn't bring I'm just joking, him. I ran away too. <laughs> Move one and use your magic ability. Uh, moving one, magic ability is lose one health. Oh, but that would kill him. Oh, then he's done. Is that how that works though? Yeah, because uh, that's the bone crusher. Yeah. Activate shattered when killed. Oh, no. that's all it says. Yeah. Lose one health. Okay, I guess he's losing one health, but then when he dies, so do bone crawler. But I guess they but do damage. Have, yeah, but we don't have to kill them. The ones, all the yeah, the true. demons are gone. But would that still... Yeah, I guess he's dead right away. I, that's weird. I don't know. There's so many weird things in this game. But I guess we'll just do it as it says. All right. Okay. We win. We save two elders. Where did I put that deck? Oh, right there. Oh, it's in my hand. Sorry, because I need to shuffle the cards in. Okay. What do you need for all those? Yeah. Because we're going to wait till your turn was done and take your discard and shuffle it. So two elders saved... Two elders save, nice. Might as well spend this. Oh no, wait, this is villager. Oh, we just get to do that ability just because of villager, right? Yeah. So just revive one of those knights so we don't forget. It's like two points. I know. It's once per game, so I didn't know if there was a better one that you would want. I don't know them that well, so. Okay. Well, one of those two that you like, just bring it back. Okay, I'll just take, I'll I just just take the forget. holy one, the healer, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. So grab it. Okay. So I can put it back in the deck. That's all I'm asking. Just give it to me. There we go. Okay, I just don't want to forget. Um, okay, uh, then what's next? Let's go. What's next? Uh, so did it tell us? We didn't oh cross yeah, off 23. 23. 23 is where we were. Uh, if victorious, turn to 23.2. Poor Thakram. The demons got him before I could do anything, says the man. You help him bandage his wounded arm. I thought this place would be the safest around here, hidden down here behind the waterfall. Nothing safe tonight. Cross off 23. 
Mark Prillian under Rescued Villagers, gain one coin, and return to the map. Okay. Three. Return to the map. So go find Prelian, the villager. So we got another villager rescued. Yay. This villager. Start each battle with three defense yes. instead of one. That's the one I wanted. Spicy. That's the one I wanted. That would have been nice earlier. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six more. So okay. we're at 23. Yeah. We can't cross the water here, so we have to, like, maybe come down to 26. Any recommendations? Anyone? Anyone have any two cents on our little adventure here? Uh, we're at this waterfall. Oh, we could go up to the bridge. Yeah, we or can only cross the water at the bridges. Uh, over here to the right is 28, the final battle, so I don't think we want to go there yet. Not but yet. Look, but look at this. Remember, he got snatched and took northeast. There's a little 22 oh, here. No, he's in this. I kind of think we should just go there to try to snatch our other knight back because uh, he's worth can, like two points. We can try. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's try I think. that. That's fun. I didn't even notice that. Uh, uh, Brett, there's an emoji for that. <laughs> uh, if you can just use the emoji, please, Brett. Uh, I, I, you don't need to type that every time because you, you're going to say that a lot. So just make sure you use the emoji. It'll save you from typing it. Your keyboard will last longer. Uh, yeah, just, just some pro tip for you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then after that, we can go across the bridge, maybe hit up 24 or 3 here. Yeah, that's a good call. Oh, 20. what's this little toll, little toll, little, 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 little gnome's home there or something? Yeah, let's go to 22. Two. Uh, where were we? Right here. Uh, Thornmar Abbey looms above the mountain path, a hulking gargoyle that now holds horrors within its cursed halls. Turning when you hear a low whistle, you see a hunched traveler coming your way. As he grows closer, he displays a toothy grin. Dark creatures roam these hills, he says, almost with glee. Let's turn back to the village before you lose your chance. You're in danger here, old man, you say. The darkness knows its own kind, says the man with a wink. I fear not for myself. The man produces a small chest from his satchel. But perhaps we could help each other, eh? Oh, he's Canadian. <laughs> uh, the light serves the darkness. Would that suit you? Man, where are these keys? I don't know. Because if we had a key, we could open the chest, which is option A, oh. or bid the man farewell. Oh. Like, we didn't find Doesn't keys. Doesn't he have a key to his own chest? No. So bid the man farewell, because we can't seem to find a key anywhere. Yeah, where are so the keys? I, I, I don't know. Uh, but 22.2 .2 says, not so fast, says the hunchback, his face turning uh, dour. If the light cannot shine upon the darkness today, then the darkness will bite back. The hunchback suddenly roars and long claws grow from its tips of his fingers. He slashes at you before bouncing back down the mountain path, howling like a demon. Cross off 22. One, might, one knight must start the next battle with two fewer health. Return to the map. Return okay. to the map. I'll return to the map. Yeah. I'll do it because I can get, I'm sure. doing it now so that we remember, because I can get defense. Uh, Pajakas 12. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you. With Thank the, you. With the, like the flying like Superman emoji. Also, there was, it made a comment just a few seconds ago too that says, hey, uh, love your gameplays. For me, oh. every girl I meet uh, thinks games are stupid. And that's unfortunate. <laughs> and, but it is. Couples who play together yeah, stay together, that's man. That's unfortunate. There, there is gamers out there. You just got to find them. Yeah. that They're right for you for sure. I didn't meet Mel through gaming. We met before that, but then she just kind of fell in love with the hobby as we both experienced it together. Yeah. So it was something we found together and kind of like explored together and yeah. learned together and just grew into it. But yeah. uh, there are, if I've been to conventions, been to local game stores. Uh, there is girls working at them, hanging out at them, playing games, running games, teaching games at the conventions. Yeah, there's a lot of females in the hobby. But it is unfortunate that yeah. some do think it's silly, and hopefully things will change. Yeah. I think as the hobby keeps growing, get more popular too, like yeah. uh, instead of children being raised on crappy board games like Monopoly and stuff, those mass market garbage games that are like 100 years old by now, um, not the newer, evolved, learned, you know, designs that we have now. Um, but if, if some of these people who've been getting in the modern board game hobby for like the last 20 years and finding these good games, um, start playing with those with their children. We'll have this generation of parents growing up and teaching their kids, and hopefully, like the word keeps getting out, it keeps growing. Um, we see tons of families at the conventions 
Um, so yeah, lots of lots of kids getting to play the good games now and stuff. Mm -hmm. Lots of designers making great games for kids. Um, but hopefully that'll cause them to grow up, and you know we'll have lots more people. And then even yeah. even shows and things like that, like Stranger Things having D and D in it, and like making it more of a mainstream thing in all of culture. Yeah, yeah, right? true. Can change, yep. Hopefully, we'll change that. Yep, yep. Yeah, video gaming was like that a little bit at the beginning too, but now it's like video gaming is like fifty percent, you know, male and female kind of thing. So. Um, yeah, it, it, it'll get there. It's just the words got to get out and, uh, some of the dudes in our hobby not need to stop being dicks and gatekeeping yes. and treating it like a boys club and, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, especially the ones that have like never, you have no confidence, don't know how to talk to a woman. Um, you know, just be nice and be kind and, and, and maybe you'll get to learn how to, how to interact with the opposite sex by playing games with them mm -hmm. instead of just like avoiding them, you know, it's yeah, because, a little weird, but yeah. Yeah, yeah see we, that have, we have ideas and decisions too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> okay. Keep growing the hobby. Yeah. Stop, stop trying to You'll keep people. You'll find someone. Out. Yep, yep. That loves video or video games, board games. Uh, okay, so we did not find our knight. Okay, so our, I think we're just going across to yep. this one. Uh, let's go to three. Let's see what's in this. Or little... let's do a poll. Let's do a poll. We're going sure. this way because it's like kind of the only thing we 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 can go. So we're gonna go across this bridge because you can only cross the water at the different bridges. Um, and we're going to land in this tile. Should we check out whatever 24 is up here in this grass? Or should we check out whatever 3 is right here? Which may or may not be this little house. Maybe that's where the key is. <laughs> I would assume there's more there's, keys there's, in the game. There's got to be more keys. Because there's crazy. a box for tracking them. Yeah. It's crazy that we have not found any. There's probably like one of the houses in town that has like 16 keys in it. We just didn't go in that house. Yeah, whatever that one was. Go to the show the bottom again where we started. It's in 20 or 19. Oh, tw <laughs> 20 is the house of keys. Yeah, or 19. It, it's the key maker who it, makes all the it keys. It would have been funny, right? The one that we started right on originally. There's a pile of keys in this backyard right here. <laughs> it's like, oh, had you explored your starting tile, you yeah. would have had one key. Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> we teach you how not to play the game here. <laughs> okay, so the poll in chat for location 3 or 24. It's a very tight race, so get your it, vote in quick. Okay. I know, that's it. Uh, Brett, I know. I know. I play games with them all. I know. I've seen the type. Yeah. Uh, it's a 50 50. So we're rolling a die, I guess. Okay. Uh, odds is three. three and evens even is 24. 24. That makes sense. It's even. So we're going to 24. <laughs> Yogi's like, hang on. I didn't vote. <laughs> Too late. 24. We're going to 24. <laughs> we could go to three for Yogi. Yogi just because he he thinks he's like royalty here on the channel, he can just I mean he can he can, thinks we can leave the polls open longer and he can pull up and vote whenever he wants. That's I'm, not how it works. I'm down to go to three right. for Yogi though. It's up to you. You make the final call. No, it's too late. Twenty four. Okay, you didn't get it in time. Sorry, yep, Yogi. Sorry. I tried. <laughs> Your bribes won't get you a vote around here. <laughs> not with him, anyway. <laughs> Uh, okay, 24. We're amid the rolling mist, you find a rusting cage. Within the cage sits a woman holding a loaded crossbow, her cat eyes watching you warily. Welcome, demons. Come to catch another bolt in the throat? Her voice is steady, but there's panic behind it. We're not demons, you say, removing your helmet. The woman lets out a long breath, setting down her weapon. I lock myself in here when the demons surrounded me to protect myself. I had nowhere else to go, but now I'm trapped. Uh-oh. Is it if we have a key? Option A, open the cage, you have to lose a key, but we can't choose it if we have no key to spend. Option B, tell her you'll return later. Yeah, we'll get you later <laughs> when we find a key, don't worry. If you think I'm a demon in disguise, you might just be letting an innocent woman starve to death in here, she calls after you. Return to the map. I feel like maybe going this direction, maybe there's like keys all up in here. And they... <laughs> it's so funny because I was like, oh, I don't care about this side. Let's no, stay on this side. No, but maybe not. I don't know. This is silly. Okay, so we were at 24. We could go... Three. It just makes me want to play this again and go like all different directions or different orders and like some of the things we got locked out of right away. Like, like how do we get there? Okay, would you want to check this little hut on the same tile we're on? Or we can go down to 27 or 10. That sounds like a poll to me. Okay, 3, 27 or 10. Mel is asking, do you guys want to go uh, stay here, check 3, go over whatever this is for 10. Or down here by the water and by the waterfall base and check 27. Yogi, there's a poll in the chat. Yogi, we'll keep it open <laughs> a little extra for you this time. 
because you don't seem tell to tell me when you voted. You don't seem to respect the scheduled polling hours. <laughs> <laughs> just joking just joking you're fine oh you're making coffee sorry oh sorry. okay that's you didn't a, tell okay. us sorry you didn't tell us to put a hold on all holes and questions <laughs> listen just because it's like 3 30 in the morning for you doesn't doesn't mean you should be drinking coffee to stay up for the stream yogi says i could hear the pole <laughs> like running like no <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Everyone voted. <laughs> it takes a minute to get through the ballroom. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> oh my God. Is the escalator in your house moving slow today? <laughs> okay. 53% said 27. <laughs> uh, uh, can you pass that again? 27? Sorry. Oh, Janet missed a few. Uh, no, the map. Oh, the map yeah. Off. Janet is a few while sleeving. I'm sorry, Janet. We're not keeping them open long enough. Okay, we're going to 27. Uh, no, Daniel, I didn't get it. Uh, basically, games told me they were going to send me a copy at Gen Con, but it never showed up. They never, I don't think they sent it, so I, ju I just ordered it um, <laughs> on an order with some other pre-order stuff. So hopefully I'll get it like this week or next week, I hope. Uh, my local, very local game stores that I would have just drove over to pick it up uh somebody beat me to the copies that came that day so they like sold out the same day so i was streaming so i missed it um but, but yeah we can't play it like right this minute anyways yeah i know so. I, I was debating playing some solo this coming week on one of the days but I, I could just do that the following week probably so um again in canada i don't know if this happened everywhere else but in canada there was one of the heroes uh phoenix got i think delayed i think she was supposed to come out the same day as mutant genesis um, but she's now coming out at the end of October, like October 28th or something in Canada. So only thing that released here in Canada on Friday, I think, was uh, Mutant Genesis and Cyclops. Which is weird. And then I check with the distributor and it just says the same thing. It's, uh, I thought, but I thought, I swear Phoenix was scheduled originally to come out the same day as Cyclops and the, uh, and the campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Mark says, I missed the poll, I was peeing. No excuse, Mark. You know you can bring a phone in there, right? And like, uh, you know, you can vote while you do that, right? <laughs> you know, come on. Get, get your, your priorities straight. Uh, 27. 27? Yeah. No, like, I don't know what I'm looking for. <laughs> I could tell. A hunched figure dressed in tattered blackness waits before the roaring waters. Her back turned. As you step over the yellow grass, your foot crunches a dead sparrow. The figure's head twitches as she turns to face you. Her youthful face, tough edged with mud, Greets you with a knowing grin. Catching demons, are we? Had any luck so far? Who are you, you ask? Sephra. Witch of the swamps. Most call me. Not usually welcome at the village. Not since I turned one of the pigs into a warty toad. Burn the witch. Uh, but I'm willing to help you if you can pay. Pay the witch with treasure. Lose one scroll and two coins to turn to page 27.1 or whatever. I just want to look and see what we have. Pay yeah. the witch with keys, lose two keys, or tell the witch you'll return. Uh, we do have three coins and one scroll. So we could pay. One scroll and two coins. One scroll and two coins. Would... Or leave. Ah. I'm okay to pay. You want to do that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So we're, Instead yeah. of buying relics later, are you sure? Yeah. All right. We have zero. Pay the witch. And one. 27.1 says, a meager treasure, says the witch. But it will have to do. Cross off 27. Mark Safra the Swamp Witch under Rescued Villagers. Oops. Uh, Safra, Safra the, Swamp the Swamp Witch. Okay, I'll find her. Safra the Swamp Witch. Sounds good. Yeah, at least she gave you a clear price. Daniel, I, yeah, was, exactly. thinking, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> I was like, man, at least this is straightforward. Uh, at the start of each battle, you may move one enemy to any tile. Yes. Safra for the win. <laughs> Keep the witch. Okay, we're doing well. We don't have keys at all, but we have saved a lot of villagers. Oh, yeah, I'm starting at three defenses for about oh, yeah. I remember that. One, two, three. I'm starting full defense. Okay, return to the map. Uh, did you do that and cross off a of time? Uh, I did not yet. Return to the map. Oh, we don't have much One, time two, left. One, two, three. We can do three more things. 
Okay, what? At this point, we don't need to find a key. We need a... Hmm. Well, we crossed her off, so we can't go visit her again anyway. Right. I think we've crossed everything except for the, the lady locked in the thing for sure we need a key for. Maybe we can find a key. I don't know. I don't know where at this point. We only have so many spots yeah, left. You so pick. I'm thinking I'm of going to... Let's go... 10. 10? All right. I'm down. We're going into this little building here. The ancient tower of Cam Treden molders in the mist like a stone tree stump. Only the base of the tower remains. Piles of cut stone lie in every direction. The remnant of what once once stood high above the hills to watch for approaching undead armies. Inside, leaves cover an ancient chest, locked tight with a massive iron bolt. Option A, open the chest, lose a key. B, leave, return to the map. Oh, so that's took a time and everything. Yep. For me now. Yep. Okay. Okay, we have two more. I'm thinking about doing these two. Can we reach one in one turn and reach the other in another turn? Because yeah. we only have two time left. Yeah. Okay, so... Okay, so let's go to 13 first. We'll go down to 13. 13. Where we're going to find our key. Dark waters gurgle over shiny river stones, slowly siphoning sand from the bed of the cave in the bank. A massive toad lounges in the sand, its boil-covered skin verdant with fungus. A croak escapes the toad's pale lips as it regards you with an expression usually reserved for annoying younger siblings. Take me to the wooden bridge to visit my grandchildren, it says in a voice like tuba. I'm too old to hop there myself, like a tuba. I'm too old to hop there myself. Option A, carry the toad. Option B, decline. Where is the wooden bridge and can we even get there? The wooden bridge is here. We can get there. Is there a number there? 20. Okay. Or 29. I'm so not option sure. A, carry the toad. Option B, decline. Okay. I don't know what number. Is that a 20 or a 29? I can't even tell. 29. 29. I think we saw 20 already. Oh, we might have. I just I think it was like near the beginning. Yeah, it was one of these ones we were voting oh, on. Oh, 20. Okay. So we can get to the wooden bridge. Yeah. So we're right here. We found the toad? Yep. And you were thinking going in here? Well, I was just, but we could, I'm like, what are we going to find in the... So basically that's your option is like, if we don't deliver the toad here, we're going to decline and go here. Yeah. But I think... But we only have one thing left. We only have one thing after this. So... Yep. Okay. It is pretty, um, All right. yeah, it's pretty obvious where we're going here. Okay. We're going to carry the toad. 90%. 90%. Okay. Uh, it says the heavy toad croaks awkwardly when you lift it and place it in your travel bag. Don't belong now, it says. You find an old coin in the dirt where the toad had been sitting. Gain one coin. Oh, nice. Gain keyword toad. Okay. Two coins. Okay. So Cross off 13 and return to the map. Okay, so our last place we're going to is 29. I like how there's still so many spots on there, so if anyone wants to play the game after watching this, like, go nuts. Discover it all. Go in the better order. Do things way better than we did. Brett also says, Rob, kiss it. It might turn into a key. <laughs> a handsome key. 29. If keyword toad... Turn to 29.2. The fat toad in your arms croaks. This is it, my grandchildren. You set the toad on a rickety planks and he hops to the water's edge. Moments later, a swarm of little toads emerge from the dark river, filling the night air with a cacophonous croaking symphony. Many thanks, night creatures, says the toad. He coughs up a few slimy coins from the depths of his gut. Gain seven coins and one key. <laughs> 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 this is the way to go. Cross <laughs> off 29, return to the map. Oh my god. We found the key. <laughs> we found the key and the game ends. <laughs> <laughs> However, though, if we had gone that way... Dun, dun, dun. What's going on here? That but... is so funny. If we had gone that way first, so we wouldn't have found <laughs> the key because we would have had to get the toad to get the key. All right. So that is too so funny. So again, 
When you run out of time, it says right there at the bottom of the time track, we have to go to 28. Sorry, before we do that, I think we have uh, enough. We have nine. Oh, we yeah, have we no can scrolls. Buy. We can buy a zombified head to destroy one minion for seven. If you want. We have no scrolls, right? But we you can no buy scrolls. scrolls at any time with money. So if, if somehow you need to... Uh... I don't think we can buy anything. How much do we have? Uh, nine. Yeah, we could. So we could buy a scroll for five, which gives you one, and we'd have four left over. So we could buy this, we could buy this, we could buy this. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. you get it? So, yeah. We could buy not this. Yeah, three options right here. Blood amulet, summoning ring, or willow wand, or you're saying spend all the gold on a zombis, zombified head. No, not now. Do I you think... want to put that in a poll, or do you just see something that you really well, want? Well, I would think I, I think the blood amulet would be the best to heal any knight or an elder. Three to a, any knight or elder. Three, yeah. Three, and it's three. one time in the whole one combat. One time. We have one combat left. I'm assuming the finale is one big fight, I would assume. I just like that. Like, moving is, yeah, it's good. But the heal, like we want to win, and we want to save all the rest of the elders, so that's what's kind of... So if you just think there's no choice, yeah. just get get one, go. Yeah. Blood amulet, let's just take okay. the blood so amulet. So I'm going to give you this, and you mark it off. Yeah, I will. And find our amulet. We only got two amulets. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, blood amulet. Uh, is this one. Yeah, and I'll take it so that on my turn I can do it. So we um, spent all of our money to do that. We have no, no coins Wasn't only... It was... Five to buy the scroll and then four. We had nine. Okay, yeah. So we have nothing left in case. I think that matters. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. We have six elixirs. Let's remember those <laughs> during this battle. Okay. All right, so I'm going to 28. Oh, I'd maybe need this. I don't know. You hurry up the slopes toward the Abbey of Thorns, knowing, this knowing time is short before you can defeat the demons and close the portal forever. You enter ravaged oak doors, the broken remnants of a struggle littered across flagstones. Books lie in tatters, pottery shards stretch to the very edge of the entry hall, and ancient relics are scattered like children's toys. Someone shuffles towards you from the shadows, and you raise your sword, but lower it when you recognize the red robes of an abbey elder. The demons roam the halls, and we have barely enough strength to keep them at bay and close the portal, whispers the elder, his eyes glinting beneath the shadow of his blood. Ahead, in the next room. You sight something in the darkness with claws and teeth and glowing eyes. Battle. Important. See next page for special battle rules. So here's the battle. And it's the full... This is going to be like the normal co-op oh, yeah. mode, right? Like all nine tiles? Yeah. Except for they're, they're not randomized, so we know. Okay, let me... So move I'm going to leave that up, and you can just start placing them down in order. E. Oh, Pajakas, uh, uh, we're not done the stream. We're now doing the final battle and, and seeing what happens here. And then we'll, I guess, read the end and then tally up a score or something. So uh, there's still lots of time left. Don't worry. It's not over yet. I just meant it's the end of like our adventuring part uh, where we get to explore and discover the story and stuff. I, A, and then E. G. Okay, just have to make it neat, but yes, got them all. Okay. And then I did, um, I did put a key, did I not? Yeah, I put one key. Wasn't sure. We need that key, right? Now, that's yeah. over. Oops. Can we throw a key at the demon or make him choke on it or something? I can't believe we found it on the very, very last one. That's hilarious. Okay, so if we, we can start placing it, we do need all the elders around the whole map in each tile, just like when we play the co-op mode. Okay. All with six health. Oops. Knock them over. We do need a, a a golem, and we need three imps. Okay. Oh, um, I don't know which one we want to put it on. We can choose. Uh, that one's fine. That sure. one's fine. Okay, three imps. Imp. Golem. Imp. Imp. Golem. Uh, golem is in the top right. With him. You choose. Yep. Sure. Or, yeah. yeah okay. See. okay. See the next page for special battle rules. Shuffle all demon character cards and draw seven. Make a new deck and place them face down. Draw the first two. These are your starting demons. Place your standees in the center. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those okay. are our demons. The first two. First one is this molten guy. We've seen him before. 
Okay. He's here. Okay. And the next one. Horned Demoness. Hellfire. We've seen her already, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, what have I done? And then those are the ones we still have to fight. Okay. So we have to get through this deck, probably, I would assume, or at least most of it. Uh, these are your two starting demons. Place your standees on the center. To win, you must defeat... Oh, you must defeat six of the seven demons, but not their minions. If a certain number of elders die, based on your difficulty, you lose the campaign. For easy, if six die, you lose. For normal, five. For hard, four. So five. if five of these seven elders, right? Uh -huh. Six, eight, eight elders? Eight elders? If five of the eight elders die, we lose, guys. So when we get down to that, like, fourth elder left, we, like, uh-oh, panic time. Um... Whenever a demon dies, immediately draw a new one from the deck and place it in the center tile. If you win, turn to 28.1. I almost want to put a poll in the chat. Will we win this? <laughs> I know I, I, have, I have control now. <laughs> I put you in charge of polls today. Why would you even say that kind of stuff? Just do it. Do it. Uh, Pajaka says, you play so many games, and yet you barely get confused with them. Uh, <laughs> uh, I disagree. We do a good job then, pretending. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you've, been, doing. you've been fooled, my friend. This game confused the hell out of me, but uh, and we're probably doing some things wrong. Yeah, we may have missed a few triggers here and there, yeah, but yeah. that's not really the point. Like, you get the idea of how to play the game. But the secret is... Usually we play the games before we stream them and very, very recent to when we stream them sometimes when we can. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if I'm playing solo, obviously I, I try to do that myself. Uh, when I do like in the daytime and stuff, I'm usually playing games, reading rules, watching uh, how to play videos, you know, reading online in the BGG forums, trying to find answers and stuff. But it's like impossible to be like 100% perfect with every game you can't. And, and it, like even any game really, it's hard. Unless it's like the only game you play, but even when even I only then. even yeah even when I only played like one game, like Game of Thrones, a card game I played that was like my only game pretty much I was playing for months, maybe a board game once every like three months or every six months I'd play, but uh, yeah when it was just one game even that game because it constantly expanding adding new keywords new cards new erratas new restricted lists new metas you know all that kind of stuff constantly changing constantly stuff to understand and remember and and combinations and in card games especially they have like a thousand cards all those cards can interact in so many different ways that there's like no way to like know all the rulings and everything uh, but yeah so i definitely get confused all the time even some of these games we start right from the start of the beginning we're like how many cards we draw for this game again oh yeah that's my biggest because every game has different starting rules setup rules mulligan rules like it's just funny and then different word different poison. rules yeah i was gonna say poison. different world rules for the same word yep. Poison. How does poison work in this game? Oh, completely different than this game. How's yeah. poison work in this game? Different than all the games. How's poison work in this game? Every game wants to treat poison, bleed, uh, all different. Yeah. It's funny. All different And things. how many cards you start with in your hand and all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, close it up. Close it up. Oh, 68% said yes, we will. We will, 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 will win. And 31% say no. We so, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. What, are you, what would you have voted in there? I, I don't know. I saw early our knights just getting destroyed, but we weren't using elixirs. Right. But this one I'm not so worried about us having enough knights. I think we're good. I think we're good. I'm just worried about the elders getting toasted because there's only two of us. I didn't know us. that was a thing. Yeah, because of only two of us running around the board, there's no way we can protect them all. Not unless we can move them. We can uh, kind of like group so them together. Remember, we if we have full health, we deal one damage per melee card. So let's recap what we have here. We have the blacksmith. We rescued him. So uh, if we have full health, we get one, plus one melee damage per card that we do melee with. Start each battle with three defense instead of one. Okay. Just nice. At the start of each battle, you may move one enemy to any tile. So we could do that right now. I have the blood amulet, so once per battle on my turn, I can heal three to any knight or elder. So please don't let me forget that. But okay. it can only happen on my turn. And I have uh, once per uh, per game, I guess. Or, yep, yep, uh, once per combat. 
gain one extra power card or battle. and play it on a turn. Yep. So I'm just going to do that from the beginning. So one, two. Are you sure you don't want to save it for when you're like on your turn? You're like, oh no, I really need to be able to move right now or do that one last hit or heal up or be able to get that defense to protect whatever. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll save it. I'll save it. I'll but again, tilt you might not draw what you I... mean. But remember, you can always flip it over. Like you could just draw if you need like one point of movement and just That's like true. grab. Yeah. That's true. Okay, and from something that happened in the story, I am starting with two less health. Oh, yeah. So, that's awesome. So, you need to get you to full, so your melees are better. <laughs> um, Where do we start? Uh, Oh, yeah. Hold on. Uh, Bottom middle. Bottom middle. Okay. So, you have to defeat, defeat six demons out of seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well... This guy's going first. Let's see what he's gonna do. He is going to heal two, he cannot, and then he's gonna move one. So he would like to target an unguarded you on here, unguarded elder. So at that point it is this one, this one, or this one. I feel like it's Either this one or this one because Gollum, undefended elder. Sorry, who, do we want to move an enemy at the start of battle? Oh yeah, sorry. Or you do any cards? Maybe shuffle those up and pick a new one yeah, or something. Yeah, I can do that. Sorry, sorry. Like, oh, what, or, yeah. or whatever, well, whatever, whatever you want to do. I don't care. Yeah, because I just I only looked at one. Uh, because we this is our only chance to ever use this, so we don't have to. No, but we can move one enemy to any tile. So we could take an enemy, like, what does this one do? At the end of your turn, she deals one damage to all close enemies and heals herself one. What's this guy do? He moves when around. When you do a new tile, add one damage to all enemies there and lose one health. So, like, is there an enemy we want to bring close to us to maybe hopefully hurt, or we can protect the elders in our space if they hurt close people? Uh, maybe this one, because we can kill it faster, maybe, yeah, but that one hurts himself and runs around really punishing everyone on the board, so that could get really crazy. I, I don't know. Yeah, let's bring her to okay. us. Okay, boom, done. Okay. okay. Now, first card, top, and then... Yeah, sorry. Okay, so it is different. Uh, move one, unless on a tile with an elder. So it's not on a tile with an elder. So he would go here, here, or here. This one's guarded. Um, but this one's closer. There's a little ally up here for us, so it, it won't go here. One. Or it won't go there. I think it's this one. Uh, why not here? Because it's a, oh, the guy's on the other side I of the know. water. So it's here. Or here we just choose. Uh, I will say. Uh, let's do here. Okay, so it's here. Okay, and then when it moves to a new tile, uh, deal one damage to all enemies there and lose one health. Okay. Okay, and then it wants to deal five damage to a close enemy and slow them. Holy! So we can't slow elders, but that means this one's dead. On. Okay, that's done. One then, elder down. Did it? It was full dead, right? There was no excess damage because he's gonna heal. Correct. Okay, he's gonna like heal equal. excess damage. Yep. Okay, and then heal two. Dang, and use your magic ability, which is deal two damage to a close enemy and move one. Move them one. Nope, there is no close enemies. And lose health. Okay. Okay, so, so those are discarded. They're done. Me. Her. I'm not full health. Can I get to full health if I use this? Need two to heal. And one. Yeah, I could use this and then this. Uh, now I'm like, should I just do that? You can. Yeah, it, I'm just gonna just, do it. Let me get to heal. Gone. Done. I'll just put it up here so we can count it for end game scoring. Okay, so I'm gonna heal one. Heal with a basic for one, going to full. I will deal three damage to her in our space. Okay. She's. Uh, uh, choose a closer adjacent enemy, deal one damage to each of them, and then move them each one. No, that's not good. Deal two damage. Okay, let's do magic ability. Deal two damage to a closer adjacent enemy and move them one. Um, does she have anything bad when she moves? Uh, at the end of your turn, deal one damage to all close enemies and heal yourself one, and all close allies one. No, that's fine. Let's go here, and then I'll just... Choose two closer adjacent enemies and deal one to each of them. Doesn't matter. Okay, I'll just kill her range for two. 
Okay, one down. Okay, one elder down, one demon down. Okay. Eye for an eye. Okay, that. Okay, the next demon is a dirty storm fiend. Lightning blast. Deal one damage to all close enemies and all enemies on an adjacent tile, and it has vortex. You may use move actions to move close or adjacent allies or enemies instead of yourself. There's probably some rules to that for when it's uh, not controlled by a player. Who is he, sorry? Storm, Storm Fiend. Fiend. He is... Uh, his passive ability does not function in cooperative mode. Yes! Okay. Take that, Storm Fiend. One, two, three. I don't know if that was bad. Should I have pushed her there, or is there somewhere no else idea. you wanted Too her? Too late now. Let's just go. Okay. Let's move forward with our decisions and see what happens. Okay, Warp Rift. Swap your current tile, so that's... This guy who just came in, mm -hmm. swap your current tile with an adjacent tile that has the most enemies. Oh, man. Right? Yep. So this tile swaps with that tile. Keep all figures on the tiles. Enemies on both take two damage. Sorry, at the start of my turn, I should go to defense. Okay. Enemies on both take two damage. So it would yeah. be this, uh, it would be all of us, but one of us can like, Wow. I'll protect the elder because I have four defense. I can just take okay. one, two, yep. three, four. I'll just take all of it. Okay, I'll just for me and uh, block two for me. Allies on both heal two, but this guy's full. That's it. That's it. Okay, move one and deal two damage to a close enemy. So he's here. He'll go for one of these unguarded. Um, they're both the same, so we just choose. Doesn't matter to me. It's just uh, let's go here. Yeah. And then two damage? Yeah. Okay. Okay, those are done. All right. Hmm. 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 I will move one with my basic. Uh, yeah, let's move one with my basic. I'll do a range attack for two damage on this vortex guy. I will take two defense with this one. Then I will, uh, do I do that? Or heal an adjacent. Yeah, I'll heal, I'll do healing chain. Heal an adjacent ally for two. Back up to full health for that guy. You may lose two health to repeat this effect on a different ally adjacent to the first. Nope, that's good. And I'm done. Uh, imps. Mm -hmm. So this one's just going to attack this guy twice. Yeah, I don't boom, have boom, defense. done. Uh, this one, going to do the same thing, but you could get involved. I don't involved. have any defense. I probably should have kept. Okay, bang, bang, done. And then this one is going to go for undefended elder or undefended elder, but I'm adjacent to this guy, so it's this one. one. Yep. And then does one. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, okay, done. Now it's this guy. I think this golem will get to... Oh, yeah, golems so go first, actually. Oh, so he would have just done... He would have moved oh, here, and then damaged that guy. Then he this guy would have healed up and only hit this guy for one. Sorry, I thought it was imps first, but you're right. No, it is Sorry. golems first. Golems first. Golems, yeah, we actually have a golem. Normally when you play the co-op mode or the skirmish mode, there's golems on the board, like right from the beginning, helping the knights. Um, and they get to go before golem or before imps. So sometimes you can have the golems like take out the imps before they get to go and stuff. Okay. Okay, back to him. Yep. Okay, so that's this guy. He is going to move three clockwise, ignoring engagement. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, then deal five damage to a close enemy or heal to full if no enemies are close. Okay, so I'm going to move in there. One de defense. I'm going to spend one, two more, and then one, two, three to block it all. Okay. Heal two. He's already full. And use your magic ability. Dang it. What's my magic? His magic ability is deal two damage to a close enemy and move them one, then lose one health. So he's going to try to damage this one for two. I will let it. Oh, no, I have oh, to take it. To. 
So I'm down to one. Oh yeah. Uh, and then I move. It moves me, or no, it, it hits him, but I guard him, right? Yep. So what is it moving him? One. One. I guess towards the yeah, other so elder. Yeah. You can try to yep. clump them together a bit, and then he lost one. Okay, he's done. Me. What am I doing? Where am I? I'm here. Okay, we're gonna get. Did you just enter there? Did you heal? When you enter, how'd you enter? Were you already there? I was already there. That okay. was the starting one. In all right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We need to remember all these little abilities on tiles so we get an advantage out of them. All right. We're going to do two damage. Uh, oh, it's melee. It's melee. It's melee. So then. Oh, I just did defend a melee attack, right? Was that melee attacking that happened? Um, like close, yeah, close, close, deal, uh, close damage, enemy close. Ma magic ability was deal damage to a close. Yep. And then so the other one. that would actually, um, when I defend both the melee attack, did I defend both melee attacks? Yeah? Yes, yes. So deal one damage each time. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Okay, at the start of my turn, I get a defense. Uh, okay, let's move for one. There's no bonus on that tile. Okay, then Can let's... Heal somebody or something. I'm like kind of hurting. Where are you? You're in here, okay? Yeah, I'm adjacent. Uh, Jason, can I heal adjacent? I can heal close. I could. Uh, okay, let's rewind, 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 rewind. Let's move to. You don't have to. Like we have many more knights, but no, we don't want to let them fall. Uh, one, two. You don't need to do the magic ability on that one. Uh, let's do this first while I'm full. We'll deal three to here. Uh, one, two, three. Let's lose one health to heal two to all close allies. Woo. And then do you want one more? Uh, sure. Okay, I'll give you one more. Yeah, yeah, because I have no armor right now. And... and I have one armor that I can jump in there. Okay, done. All right. One, two, three. All demons place an imp on their tile and lose one health if they were able to do so. I think there's one, one here. Left. One, yep. two, three. Yep, the rest so the that guy loses one health to do that. All newly placed imps take two actions. So this guy will just attack twice. We choose one of us to take uh, the hits. I'll take it. So one and one. Okay. Then deal two damage to all close enemies. So we each take two damage. One, two. Well, luckily I healed you. Yes. Wow. All right. There you go. Are elders allies? Yes. Yes, they are. They are. But it was close only. So I couldn't. It didn't say adjacent, did it? Uh, lose one health, heal two to all. Close, yeah. They had to be in the same space. We do have, though, we have to remember, we do have something that can let us heal an elder or a knight for uh, three. Why does he keep looking? This guy just attacked me, right? Okay. I gotta remember my shield bash. So this guy took one damage. This guy? No, I don't, did he attack me? No, it was him. It was oh. Imp, right? They place Imp. Oh, it was the Imp that attacked you. Imps attacked you. me. Yeah. So this guy takes one here. Yes, Daniel. Close the same tile. And uh, let's show you that. Close is your tile, and then Jason are um, the tiles connecting, not diagonal. Okay. This guy's almost dead if you can hit for okay, two. Okay, I'm going to heal for two. I'll heal for one here. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to... I'll just finish him with this one, sure. Okay. He's dead. And then this says, I could take two actions with a close or adjacent golem. There's none. Or destroy a close or adjacent enemy minion. And I'll destroy this minion. Okay, and then will you grab me the next? Uh, guy? yep. He died. Next, the next demon we get is the Implored, who likes to create imps. When attacked, you may trade places with any imp. So the attack hits the imp instead. I figure out how that works. It says he always takes it. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Implored always activates shackled souls if able. 
He's only five health, so he's easier to kill. Uh, on my turn, do I want to heal three damage? Heal three to any knight or elder? Uh, is there elders in trouble? Should I do? No. Would this be helpful to do like a little lineup so that you can see how many we've killed? Yeah, sure. Or something I know. Probably even like lay them down. And, okay, yeah. I don't know. Just so you can see our how that's our, our pile of death. <laughs> Dead demons. <laughs> we need to beat six demons out of the seven that are in the deck before they kill. What was it? Five of the elders. Five elders. And we have one dead elder. I'll just lie, lie him here. See you later, Roger. Thank you so much. See you, Roger. Don't forget elixirs, yes. Yes, we do have elixirs. We do get, oh. poly, we do get points for unspent elixirs. This all happened not on my turn. So. Yeah, you, on your turn, you can only spend elixirs. Turn. But yeah, if you want to do it, go nuts. Because then you could get extra melee damage. I need cards, and then it's that implored ghost. Okay, this guy's going to go. That's these ones. Okay, so he's first going to move one and deal three damage to a close enemy. Yeah, we so... could move this down, actually. There we go. We could, and I'll just do on the other side our dead elders. Oh, no. Um, move one. So he is going to move. He's going to take two damage when he leaves our space. Yeah, as he disengaged two one, enemies. Two, yep. And deal three damage to a close enemy. I don't have any... Um, I don't either. I don't have anything to move in here, so... So the one with the least health. One, uh -oh. two, three. He's at one. We do have a thing to heal a... Only on my turn, though. Oh. That's why I asked. Okay, move one. Uh, and deal two damage to a close enemy. I think, yep. Yeah. Deal two damage there. And then move one and deal one damage to a close enemy. I, I don't think they move back where they came no, from if they can avoid it, so I'm pretty sure it's going here. And then one damage again. Uh, one damage. Holy. And then this one is this one. Move two and use your magic ability. Uh, Moving two. So each movement you kind of evaluate, so there's an unguarded minion here, or an unguarded elder, unguarded elder, unguarded elder. Lowest health is here. And what is it? Sorry, it's move two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Then... And use your magic ability. So it goes here, and then okay. what's his magic ability? Uh, place an imp uh, on a closer adjacent tile, then take one action with it. Oh, so it will just finish it. off this elder. Oh. Okay. Your turn. That's, that's it. Me. Where am I? I'm here. I need to heal up a little bit. He only needs three. Can I do this? One, one two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. So let's. You can use an elixir if you need. Start of my turn. Oh. I don't remember what the points are, or, or elixirs are worth, but... Start my turn again, defense. Um, I think it was just... It doesn't say it on here. We have six of them. I don't know if that... Uh, only one point per unused elixir. Just, like, use an elixir. So right. use an elixir. we're gonna Who use cares? an elixir. We're going to five elixirs. We forgot to use them at the beginning of the campaign when we should have, but... Then I don't need to use my cards to, to heal, so I'm going to full. Then I will... Uh, I gotta move in. Move directly to any tile. No, I you need could, to save that. This guy's sitting here. You could kill him before you leave if you are looking for things just to do. I'm going to... Oh, but you could also I, heal I can, too, yeah. Okay, I'm going to move in for one. I think we'll do like I that. I think you have to take a damage because of this guy. Oh. That's why I'm asking. If you want to use just a basic sword swipe, you could kill this guy before doing that. But I don't know what, how what your health was before you used elixir, but you could have like moved first, took a damage, and used elixir. Yeah, because I was on like zero. I was on two, so I okay, can sure. do that. Just so say you move did that. first, then use the oh, that's you. Sorry, sorry. Then use the elixir. So that's like that. Then let's do. I'm full health, so this will deal three damage to this implored in our space, and he's dead. Bah, get out of here, implored. Okay. Back in the lead. We're in the lead again. Dread mistress. Deals two damage to an adjacent enemy that moved to your tile. She's petrified in gaze. When you move to a new tile, you may slow a close knight or deal one damage to a golem. And that's our choice. Then let's do uh, deal three damage to a oh yeah deal three damage to a close enemy. One two three. You may not heal yourself or allies for the rest of the turn. No problem. And then this one. I will choose a melee and do two damage. So she's one away. Because I'm full health. Okay. And then three. One, two, three. 
Uh, so Storm Fiend, where is this guy over here? Uh, he will deal one damage to all close and adjacent enemies. Close and adjacent enemies, okay. Heal yourself and cl all close and adjacent allies for one. Okay. Then deal two damage to an adjacent enemy. None. And there are none. And heal yourself for one. He's back to full. Okay. Wasn't too crazy. Uh... He only needs one to take her out too, if that matters. I don't even know where I am, where oh, yeah. she is, and all this, right. and what I have available. Uh... You're going to play the seal that says you ignore engagement when you move. Hmm. Or not. I'm actually going to just do a melee with it to kill this one. Okay. I'm going to then do a ranged two damage to kill this minion. Whatever that goes. Okay. And then I guess I will move one. And then I will just use this for a basic melee attack and kill this one. Sweet, she's dead. The next demon is the frozen lurker. Wait a second. He's got his own ice. I've not seen this guy yet. Yeah, he has a little token uh, somewhere. This one. A little ice token. Frozen marker. I'm sure he's got some. So, Shard Storm. Spend two ice to deal two damage to all enemies on an adjacent tile as well as slow them. So he looks like he starts with two ice. Abyssal Hoarfrost. Gain two ice at the start of your turn. Block one damage dealt to you per ice you spend. You may discard a card to gain two more ice. Yeah, and his ability here says, where did I just see it? Sorry, uh, frozen. Always blocks with ice if able. Always blocks with ice if able. Yeah, so he's always going to block all incoming with ice first and then into hit. Okay. Starts with two. There you go. And uh, I... Could heal three to an elder right now. I th Just this one yeah, could use three. I well, two, but oh. I'll do it. I'll do it instead of waiting because last time I waited and that was bad. Okay, I've done the elixir. All right, three new cards. Okay, golems. This golem will just do two attacks on this guy and yeah, kill that one. Yeah, get him. And then this one will just hit for two on this guy. One, two. Okay. And okay. Frozen Lurker, uh, Lurker. gain two, two ice at the start of your turn. Oh, gosh. Okay, move all knights clockwise and slow them. So we both take damage from disengaging and hitting. No, not when you're moved oh, by the Oh, not when you're moved by them, yeah, sorry, and slowed. Uh, so this card is slowed for me, and your Three. middle card is slowed for you. Okay. Uh... Move all elders counterclockwise. I'll start here. One, two. This one has to move out. I don't know how that would work. Because it's I like... I think we they, choose the elders. Uh, yeah, who cares? We'll just say it moved there and then went like this or something. Yeah. Deal two damage to a close or adjacent enemy. Two damage to a close or adjacent enemy. I think it has to go here. That one. Use your magic ability, which is spend two ice to deal two damage to all enemies on an adjacent tile as well as slow them. You spend the ice? Yeah. Spend two ice. Down to two damage. health on this one. On an adjacent tile. Okay. My turn. Sorry, what about the adjacent tile you just rumbled out there? Spend two ice to deal two damage to all enemies on an adjacent tile as well as slow them. Okay, perfect. Can't slow those guys, so. Okay. Hey, your turn. My turn. Gain a defense at the start of my turn. I am here. This guy has two defense already. 
Frozen Lurker, says Matthew. Is that the Peeping Tom I've been worried about? Okay, let's Boom. do... <laughs> let's do two range on the Frozen Lurker. That will just use his ice. Mm -hmm. Let's do magic attack. Or magic. Deal two damage to a close or adjacent enemy and move them one. One, two, and move them one. Is there somewhere you want them to be for your hit? I, I, don't, I have no idea. Actually, move them into our space. Yeah, sure. Then I'm full health, so this will deal two damage. Just do a basic one, two. So he's one away, and he's not going to gain ice until his turn, so if you want to kill him. One, two, three. All right. You add, or sorry, you end another demon with the most health, each deal two damage to a close enemy, or add, a no, add an imp if no enemy is close. So deal two damage in here. I'll take somebody. it. Okay. Because I still will be full. Uh, or I could hit him back for one if he attacks me. But oh, whoever's least health it actually attacks, right? Oh, then it's you. Sorry. Yeah. Because I was full. What's you? So deal one damage to attacker when you defend a melee attack. Oh, but I'm not defending it. I would just take it. One, two. Yeah. Okay. And then the, this uh, guy yeah. here. It deals two damage to a close. If no enemy is close, it makes an imp. Okay, this one is deal one damage to all close and adjacent enemies. This damage cannot be defended. Oh, man. But one here. One here. And one here. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, us being like together is kind of like... I know, but we're almost... He's one away, and then we're only going to get one more. And then it's just whatever yeah. comes in in this guy. Mm. He only has one hit. He has no ice. No ice. One hit. Yeah. Well, I got slowed. So this card can only be used for one thing. So let's just melee him. Okay. Frozen lurker down. The blood shade. Oh, I don't like this one. Okay. Okay, last two demons. We each need to kill these last two demons. Hmm. Yep. I'm going to gain... A defense. But this one. Uh, I'll heal with my main cart and I'll just do. Um, I'll just do two damage to her. Three new cards if you could. And then Golem moves in one in here, hits this guy. This guy heals up and attacks him. Okay, for one. Alrighty. Blood shade. She doesn't do anything after you move. Okay, so let's see. Uh, deal three damage to a diagonal enemy. There's no one. And then deal two damage to an adjacent enemy. It has to be this one. I will go in. You don't need to. Is it, or is this oh. a different guy? What's this one say? You get to do it like without even moving. If you want to move, oh. go ahead. You probably do, but. Gain one defense at the start of your turn. You do not have to move to defend range attacks, and you can defend range attacks against uh, any ally. Okay, so I'll just yeah. spend. So the it's two. a range attack because she's attacking yeah. in the adjacent space. So I'll just spend two, and I don't need to move. Yeah, unless you want to. No, because I I want to do the melee bigger hits, and then this one's upside down. Heal one, and use your magic ability. Oh, which, which is the one that lets her heal more. Heal one damage to a close knight or elder, and then gain two health. So I could block it. And then that hits her back for one. Okay. Because I'm the lower health, she's hitting me. Okay, and then, and then she's going to gain two. And that's the only way she can go above six, but she's at six. Okay. Okay, me. Mm -hmm. I'm full health. Oh, I start, I get a defense. I will deal three damage to her. One, two, three. Mm. Deal two damage. Then I'll deal 
Um, yeah. Deal two damage to a close enemy and move them one. Oh, one, two. I see what's happening. And then here. And then let's just... Hold on. Deal damage. Archery. Yeah, then let's just do a melee, or I mean a ranged, and kill her. Here to the pile. And then I in? think... Yeah, but oh, dead. We, we gotta want? kill one more, no? Oh, we only need to kill six out of the seven. Six out of seven, done. I thought we'd kill them all. So I was like, yeah, we're just done. Just shoot her and we're, we're done. Boom. Yes. Only two How elders many, died. 31% of you that didn't think we could do that? Yeah, we crushed it. <laughs> that was only on medium difficulty, though. Yeah. You can play on the hard mode. I probably shouldn't have used that elixir, but that's okay. As morning light pours through the broken windows, you feel a sunrise within yourself. The demons have been defeated. Turn to finale. What does that mean? Oh, the finale. When you return to the village, the sun is already high in the sky, warming the autumn air. Villagers gather to hear your tale by the well, smiling despite their tired eyes from a sleepless, horrifying night. Note, check each keyword and read the section if you have it. Then proceed to score. If keyword intrude. No. no. If keyword shrivel. No. If keyword gatehouse. No. If keyword urchin. Yes. A little girl with a dirty face approaches. You have my money, she snaps, pointing an accusing finger. Where's my money? Why, yes, here it is, you say. The girl snatches up the money, leaping with joy. Yes, I can now buy a new pet chicken. She skips away through the, towns, uh, through the townsfolk, tossing the bag of coins and catching it. Okay. You talk too much. I want more chicken. All right, final score. Okay, sorry. So uh, I'm just going to add one, two, three, four, five, six elders we saved here. All right, you're ready. And I just am going to erase the Holy Knight off of our fi um, Fallen because we saved it with our card. Yeah. So we only had one dead knight, defeated knight. Okay. So two points per knight still alive. I don't know if you want to open a little calculator yeah, here or there and we can do it quick with this. I don't want to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven knights still alive. So that's 14. Okay. Relics, we own two. So that is. 12 points. Okay. I know, I know. Okay. Uh, and then six points per rescued villager. So 24 more points. Okay. Three points per rescued elder. Elder. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have 13. And how much was it? 13 times three. So 39 more points. Okay. You have a number pet right here. I There's pluses it. and I know it's fine. Yeah, but you're gonna actually click things. I'm fine. Uh, all right. One point for unused, uh, unspent scroll or key. One key, so plus one. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> one point per unused elixir. Uh, five. Ten points of playing normal mode. Ten, yes. We aren't playing hard mode, so you get 20 points for that. And minus 25 if you failed the campaign. Our final score is 105. Okay, guys. That's awesome. Is that awesome? We scored 105. No, it's probably not. If you're playing this in the future and you found this video and you made it to the end, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, if you skip to the end, you're a pro. And feel free to drop in the comments below what your score was. Yes, please. And then the second time you played it, how your score was even better. And the next time you played it, I'm curious. What are scores like? I have no idea. But here's the thing. Were you using the scoring in the back of the campaign book? You know, where you lose 25 points for failing? Or were you using the scoring that's in the campaign rules where you, like, lose 30 points for failing? Oh, Again, is everything else the same? I don't know. But just stating my case, this oh. rule book is a rushed, Oops. unfinished, full of bugs, piece of crap. I don't even know if they fix it in the new printing. But just to show you, there's like everywhere mistakes and it's just not a polished experience. But there you go. So our final score was final 105. Score. Final thoughts? It's a cute little campaign for a single sitting. I only wanted this game for the campaign mode. But you had to learn the skirmish mode, at least the rules. You had to learn the co-op rules. We played the co-op mode a few times. I said at the beginning of the stream, I wasn't really interested in it. It wasn't gripping me. It was just quick, simple. There was a lot of missing rules for the co-op mode in the base printing. They fixed some of that in the rule book. 
still was frustrating. Way too many questions coming up in a game that should take like 30 to 60 minutes. Uh, just a quick little basic puzzly skirmish game. Uh, the AI, the AI brings so many questions. The clarifications don't cover everything in the book, even in the new rule book. Um, the game looks great. Of course it does. Came from Red Raven Games. The gameplay is fine. It's a cute little game. If you look at the cost of the game, 30 to 40 bucks, I can totally forgive a lot of the stuff. But it totally smells like a game that came from Kickstarter. And I can see why it failed on Kickstarter. Nobody wanted it. Unless it had minis there and then it changed the standees. I don't know. But this game did not do well enough on Kickstarter. It funded, but then obviously didn't fund enough that they wanted to... But it doesn't make sense then why still make the game? Why not just let it fund and take that money and still deliver the game? And, but I guess then it would have cost them too much to like ship and print just a small print run. But if they were going to print a whole retail run anyway... Why not just add the Kickstarters onto that print of retail run? So there's some stinky, fishy things going on here with this game. Um, but it's still not a bad little package for what it costs. I haven't played the skirmish mode, so maybe if you're looking for a way to play 1v1, 2v2, 2v1, 3v3, whatever, it might be a fun little skirmish mode, but I can't comment on that. The co-op mode, again, it's just running with an AI deck, but lots of questions, seems tacked on, seems like an afterthought was definitely not play tested and thought through. The rule book, definitely rushed, not proofread, not play tested, just printed, get it in the box, get it out the door, let's go. The campaign mode seems fun, it's cute, it has a little value to it. I wouldn't say, like I could definitely could see playing through it at least twice. And I probably would say you'd have to play at least the co-op mode once to get a full understanding before you dive into the campaign. So for, let's say that's two campaign playthroughs, or two co-op playthroughs, one hour, one hour, okay, not to mention learning it, uh, spending about an hour reading BGG posts, trying to figure out the rules, so if you consider that value with the game or not, that's your choice, um, then the campaign mode, which just took us, like, three and a half, four-ish hours, but adding stream time, voting, and all that stuff, mm -hmm. so let's say it's, it says it's three to four hours, so let's say we took three hours, so that's five hours of gameplay for thirty to forty dollars US. So like fifty to sixty-five Canadian. I don't know the math on that for a dollar per person per hour. Again, that's the the problem is it's a gray area because if you buy this and you're playing three v three skirmishes every weekend with it, if you care that much, then it's got way more value. If you're playing co-op or solo with it a few times, add that in there. But I don't know how many times you can play the campaign before you kind of see everything unless you're racing against a high score. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for like a huge story rich campaign game or a very deep tactical strategic uh, skirmish game or an entertaining worth your time co-op game, I'm not sure it hits on any of those. And this goes, I see this all the time. I, I might start regurgitating this because I'm starting to see it more often. But a red flag is when a game on Kickstarter or a game on, in retail, what doesn't even matter, a board game. Tries to tell you it can do 76 player counts, can play co-op, competitive, campaign, can play in the bathtub, can play in the wind, like all this crazy stuff has all these modes. More and more, that means it's a, uh, you know, a jack of all trades, a master and not even close of a master in any of them. But it's a cute little campaign. Maybe you play a skirmish a couple times, at least me. I'm just not interested in playing the skirmish. The co-op mode was a snooze fest, frustrating waste of my time. So much that I canceled my stream and didn't want to play it. And then the co-op mode with the campaign tacked on top is what I was excited for. And it, it lived up to expectations. But again, I would only play this co-op mode two to three times, maybe probably I could see. So that's like nine-ish hours, let's say, of time. For 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Have two people involved? That's pretty good, That's I think. Would I rather be playing something like Sleeping Gods and spending my hours on that instead, exploring that story and venturing around in that game? Uh, a thousand percent every single time. 100 out of 100 times, I would play mostly any other campaign or story game over this. Um, but it's cute for what it does. It's got cool art. I like the theme of it. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't, didn't feel finished from the rulebook. Again, the villagers with no art on the card seems like a, you know, 
just trying to rush it out, be cheap, cut some costs. Um, but again, it's 30 to 40 bucks. So like I'm maybe being a little too harsh on it. Um, but those, that's just me being open and honest. And again, full disclosure, the company sent me this game. But this, is, this is what I see. And again, I haven't played anything from Red Raven other than Sleeping Gods. But I'm always told those near and fars and above and belows are all great. And I don't know, they're usually pretty quality. And we had people here earlier saying they, were, they bought this just based on it being a Red Raven's game game. Well, that kind of sucks. I have a favorite publishers too, but every publisher makes junk. And uh, this is not completely junk, but there's some junky aspects of this. Uh, I expected better. And uh, yeah, don't blindly buy things from publishers. Stop doing that. Don't do that ever, ever. You're just, you're just enticing them to just rush out junk. Um, and don't do that. Please don't do that. It reward their good games or great games. Spread the words, buy them, give them as gifts, you know, support them, all that stuff. But like, just don't buy everything a publisher makes. There is not a single publisher I know that I would buy everything they make. Never, never, ever. Even if they're going out of business, I I'm sorry, but like, you know, do good work, make great things, good things will happen. There's no excuse just to make a piece of junk to keep your business going or something like that. So that's just where I'm at with it. Anyways, that's a side rant, maybe not related to the game, but just so you understand where I'm coming from. Mel, let them let them have it, Mel. Give them your side of it. And again, if you've played this game and you're watching this in the future, or you've played it and you're watching now, give us your two cents. Let me know. Tell me I'm wrong because it will help other people if they're deciding on this game. Read the comments down below if you're looking for other opinions. Opinions are like a-holes. Everyone has one. Doesn't mean you know they're always right. You just think yours doesn't smell, all that kind of stuff. Um, but they all stink, kind of thing. Whatever that quote is, I love that quote. Um, this is just my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. Uh, you know, so this is where I'm coming from, and that's me. But go ahead, guys. Okay. I agree with you on a lot of things. It's sad because looking at this from above, this seems like it would be a fun game, something that I would really love. I love that on the tiles they have things when you go into them. I love the whole saving the elders, and I love that. Um, the story was also really good, I thought. And I liked this whole... Like, you know, going through and trying to figure out where you want to go. I, I really liked this part of the game. But like you said, it does kind of slog down in the combat. Maybe we need to play it on a harder difficulty. I don't know, but the combat's so easy. Yeah, we did lose a few nights and whatever, but it doesn't really matter, right? Um, but there could have been a good game here, I think. But like you said, maybe it was rushed. It, the rule book was a lot to... There was a lot left to be desired there. There's a lot of questions. Rob had questions. I had different questions. We had some of the same questions. We're trying to play through. We're looking things up on BGG. And somebody buying a game for $30 or $40 shouldn't have to do that because they, they may not even know to do that. And like you, I think you said, and I don't know if you said it on stream or just to me, but like not everybody is familiar with BGG just in general, right? Mm -hmm. And it, we want board games to be accessible to people we want people to be able to just open up a game grab a rule book and start playing with their friends and family without having to dive deep into this rabbit hole of bgg as we would call it so it's sad because looking from above this would have been could have been an interesting game i do agree with you with the art i didn't know that until today and i was kind of shocked by that mm -hmm. Um, well, we never played this mode. Yes, I, I, hadn't I was just I hadn't setting up for this. Yeah, huh. I was setting up for the stream, and I was like, "Wait, what are these cards? These aren't elders." Yeah, I'm like, "Wait, these are elders. They just have the name on them. Weird." Yeah. So, I don't know. It's not. Do you want to play it again? No, that's kind of how I was trying to word it. Like, it's not a game that I honestly. Can... Do you want to play this again? Do you want to play this tomorrow? Would you rather play some other any any freaking other game we have upstairs waiting to be played, or an older game to be played? We don't, we, don't, we don't give them point scores, really. We no, never do that kind of stuff no, here. No, no. I, I don't now, care to do that, but... Part of me is intrigued in playing the campaign one more time and kind of like going... Because we kind of stayed a lot on this side, right? And we kind of went up and then yeah. back around. I would, sorry, I would kind of be interested in going the other way and seeing... But it's like there's so many other games out there that I'm more inclined to play first. I don't know that I would pull this out again. Cool. A couple follow-ups on what you just said. Uh... The whole BGG thing, uh, companies relying on BGG to just kind of like dump a game out and then they'll deal with it later by yeah. posting PDFs that are updated and calling them living rule books and FAQs and rules forums answering questions and printing a rata packs and upgrade packs later. Uh, 
video game industry does it. They release games now in basically unfinished states and drop day one patches and DLC. They use the internet to kind of fix things. I think board gaming needs to stop doing that. They think it's acceptable and they just trying to like, you know, video games do it so we can too. Um, and I know there's like project deadlines and they got to kind of just, you know, like I see in the chat, you know, if the game isn't perfect, get it as close as you can, you know, before, no. No, I'm a heavy believer of delay the freaking game. Mm -hmm. Put in the proper work, don't release it until it's ready. Do something else instead then. And if the game's not perfect, it, you're just going to make a bad game or an unfinished game. It'll just get forgotten and go by the wayside and be garbage and be in the landfill. It, it's pointless. Um, make great games. Don't waste your time on mediocre games then, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Um, also, uh, the rule book part is you're talking about that stuff. So here's another little funny thing. Cooperate, cooperative mode, okay, literally has two pages dedicated to cooperative mode rules, cooperative mode clarifications. But not all the co-op rules are in the cooperative mode. In between all the standard mode reading, so if you put this game down for a week, you want to go back to it, and you just want to refresh yourself on the co-op rules, you have to go through the whole rule book and find these random little spots. Oh, here's one. Uh, oh, there's one. Cooperative mode, do this where it doesn't retell you that later in the cooperative mode rules. Uh, so throughout these 30 pages of rules, you have to find these secret little uh, hidden gems for how co-op works. And one huge rule that you could definitely mess up the balance of the game. Um, there's that whole uh, when AI enemies leave your space for engagement. Oh, it is that one. Yeah. Uh, enemy engagement does apply to demons when they move because they're instructed to by a cooperative card. Oh, right here's another one. Cooperative mode. If a demon is slowed in cooperative mode, instead they take one extra damage. Doesn't say that anywhere in the cooperative rules page. At least not that I know of. Maybe it does in the new version, but I don't think so. I think I even looked for that. And they've, they've added more to this in the new rule book. But again, it's just hidden in the rules forums on BGG. Maybe it's on their website too. I don't know. But either way, uh, kind of crap. I do agree with you in the sense that if a company says, you know, we're delaying the game, we're working on we're putting some more playtesting, we're re rejigging the rule book, you know, or we had playtesters come back with a few questions and we just want to rejig some things before we put it out. I think more people would be receptive to that than... Do, no? no? Uh, yeah. I know people are still going to be mad, but, right? Because uh, everybody know, wants their you thing You know what now, happened but... with this game, though. They were trying to get copies at Gen Con, trying to get this as a Gen Con release. I see, that's not worth it. And they it. rushed it. Yeah. And the funny part is it never even made it there in time. But they were rushing it to get it out by Gen Con. They had to cut the deadline to get it to print before that to get it shipped. So they literally last minute were like, we should do another pass on the rule book. Maybe we should play test it one more time with a, you know, a new player or new players that never played it. Let them go through and see if they can find anything wrong when they're trying to play the game or learn the game. Mm -hmm. but they're like, we don't have time for that. We have to get copies at Gen Con to sell them. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. And it's like, OK, cool. You want to do that. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to point that out, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it. If I try your game and I find it's like that, it's you're getting called out. And I hope everyone calls that kind of stuff out because it's unacceptable. Also, with the blind buying from companies, uh, I saw the comment in there about Chip Theory Games or Mind Clash makes it. Mike says, uh, I'm buying it. This is what it is. Here's the thing with that even. If you have a publisher that makes certain games you love or you do love every single game they make, but sometimes even with a publisher, like say, let's say Chip Theory Games, right? Let's say they make Too Many Bones, you love that. They make Cloud Spire, you love that. Let's say they make Burn Slug, you don't really love that. But you still bought it anyway, just because it's them. Now they're going to spend more time making more Burn Cycle stuff that you're maybe not as interested in because you bought that copy, you know what I mean? Or if you didn't like Trip Lock that much and you thought it was like, okay. But because all those people blind backing those small games that no one really likes that they do because they're really good at the big, awesome games, let's just say, I'm just an example, this may not be truthful, I'm just giving a random example. The fact that you vote with your wallet and buy those things, that means now they're going to spend more time of their development effort, play testing, marketing, and all that, focused on making those other little games because you blindly bought them, thinking people want them, instead of working on the real games that you really love. So when you're blindly supporting a company in everything they do, they think they do nothing wrong, and they're not spending their time and effort on the right thing. So stop it. Stop it. Please. Thank you. And that life goes for any industry, right? That's any industry. Well, life in general, yeah. Yeah. But this like loyalty to car brands and clothing, all this, all these companies, they do stupid stuff. They do they make bad things. 
If you just keep blindly supporting everything they do, it's like, geez, they're going to keep making crappy things and they'll just get worse. They'll never get better. So support good work and, you know, and, and you'll get better results. Like, it, ugh. Do you see, though, Jeez. Anyways, even for this game, that a little <laughs> bit more work and love, this could have been a very good game? Not a very, like, not like an amazing game, but like no, a but decent game, it, right? Yeah, it could, like, have been, could have been done better. Yeah. Could have been done better. But again, this I like have, some of the things in this game. But here's the thing. They could have had crazy ideas planned. They could have had tons of crazy stuff. I didn't see the Kickstarter stretch goals. I didn't know what they had planned behind the scenes. But maybe there's a version of this game that maybe is in a slightly bigger box, has more campaign stories to it, has better rules, maybe better play testing, has more options for demons and knights and... You know, maybe some extra modes and rules and all. I don't, who knows, right? That because it just barely funded and then got canceled, they scrapped all the cool stuff. Which makes sense because one of the things I would have loved to have seen, which maybe would have made more the, tiles. Yes, would maybe would have made the uh, co op better is more tiles because all you do is you randomize these tiles. And you never but it's play. The same every and time. you never play on this side. Right. You only use these tiles in the campaign. So literally every time you play, you're just playing these same nine tiles just shuffled in a different yeah, order. Yeah, which do doesn't really yeah. do anything for Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I would love to see more. But again, Maybe that's one of the things that had to get compressed down. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah, they had to cut the scope down, you know, when they were like, all right, we, we're sitting on all this art and this game design and this play testing and, and these assets. Do we just go to print with what we have and make it kind of like at least you can say it's a game? Yeah. You know, it can have the taglines on the back of the box, the player count, the modes, and, and the designer's names, and the, and the publisher's name, and people will just buy it anyway? Yeah, sure, let's just, we already spent that much money on it, we spent the time making all the art. Yeah, let's just make the game and send it out there, right? So, I just don't want to see stuff like this happen in the industry, so I'm, I'm like glad that, I mean, I would love to play this and been like, yeah, this is like, better than I thought it was. It's fine, it's mm -hmm. fine. It's fine. It's fine. I didn't expect it to blow my mind, but I did want to see it. But yeah, there's just glaring things about it. And then when I looked into it and found out it was a like, you know, a funded, a fake funding goal canceled Kickstarter. It was like, oh, I see what's going on here. I so, did yeah. enjoy the campaign better than the co-op. Yeah, co definitely. Also. I did like that. The definitely. choices within the story and all yeah. that was fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know. Beating a dead horse, <laughs> I think. But uh, yeah. But yeah, there it is. You've seen it. You got our thoughts on it. You saw how it plays. Again, not every game is for everyone. Maybe this could be the perfect game for you. Uh, so look into it more. Check it out. Rules. The latest rule books linked down below. Hopefully that was a good enough look at the campaign mode. You get an idea how the game works. Also, we played the co-op kind of battling stuff. This final fight was exact kind of layout pretty much as the co-op mode with the same AI deck of cards. Except so, you don't have the seven demons. Uh, you just have like one each. So that's why we're talking about how simple it is. Yeah. Yeah, true, true, true. You kill two demons, you're done. Yeah, so John, uh, you have to consider when I talk about like time investment, money investment, but also there's like the brain power, right? So like, yeah, sometimes it's like a game doesn't like, you know, you could have been playing something that was if you're, but sometimes I'm not feeling like something brain burning and crunchy and, and puzzly and interesting, right? Yep. Sometimes I just feel like a lighter thing. Same with the video games, right? Sometimes I just like to mindlessly play certain games, only take a short amount of time. Sometimes I like to spend my time progressing through stories and campaigns in video games. Same thing. So... Just because it is not as crazy and complex and crunchy as some of the other games we play, doesn't mean it's not worth your time. And especially games I play with family members and 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 my my kid and my nephews and my niece and stuff. Like you can use different games for different situations. So the value thing I'm talking about too is like the amount of money you spend on it, where I could be spending an evening doing something else. Uh, you know, and you gotta think of your entertainment dollar. Uh, versus your time spent and how much money is put into that because it's like end your time on it is a cost I agree But it's like yeah, you shouldn't be playing games that like feel like they're a cost to your time If that makes sense like if you feel like oh, I'm I don't want to spend the time on this because it's like I need to worry about how long a game takes It's like then you shouldn't touch that game because then it's like you should just do something where you forget about how much time is being spent like when we were playing yesterday and then <laughs> we were sense. like, we know. played for five hours and we were like, wow, that went yeah. by like fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't even realize it was five hours. Uh, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat here. Uh, Mike says, I agree with that 100%, Rob. Complete tested game should be absolutely be the very beginning of acceptable. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, 
So Jock's asking, does it say who did the rule book for this? Was it the main designer or Ryan or a question mark? I don't remember the credits. I don't even remember seeing credits. I think they're somewhere in the middle of the book. Are they really? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember speaking over them. Like after the rules or something. Oh, right here. Yeah. Uh, credits, game design, T. Alex Davis. Campaign written and designed by Ryan Lockett. Night, Demon, and Storybook Illustrations by Andrew Bosley. Nice job, buddy. Art's cool. Yeah, yeah. The art, the, the art and the components are fine. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're really good. Um cover art, location tiles, minions, map illustrations, backgrounds, additional design by Ryan Lockett. Graphic design and typography, David Bach. Copy edits, Kathy Bach, Brenna Aspland, Mallory Lockett. Oh, the wives. <laughs> Development, Ryan Lockett, T. Alex Davis, Mallory Lockett, Brenna Asplund. Uh, this is like a family thing. Yeah. So yeah, when only your family's involved in the development, like, Mel's not going to tell me every time I do something crappy in my work, right? <laughs> Am I not? No, I'm just kidding. I try not to tell her every time, but sometimes I do. And that's why we have the, the sleeping on the couch emoji, <laughs> you know? But uh, yeah, when your family and friends are like part of your small business, like, you need to get outside eyeballs that aren't afraid to speak their mind. Um, people like me, maybe, even to a fault. Because if you don't criticize things and expect better and demand better, you're never going to get better. Pro tip. Life advice. I don't know if it's great advice. It's just life advice, okay? No, we're not going there. We're just saying that it's a small operation. <laughs> Anyways. Mark says, happy Sunday, Robin Mel. I'm off to finish watching the race. Oh, Watch the, the race. Watch the race. Is it NASCAR or F1? Does F1 happen on Sundays? Or is it just it happens, NASCAR? Doesn't, doesn't it happen all weekend? Yeah. It's on Sundays too, right? Yeah. I think it's not. F1, I would say. But then there could be other races. Could be a that's, horse that's race. That's my guess. Could be dirt bike Mark, racing. Let us know. Could be sea do, sea -do racing. <laughs> I, I don't know. There's a lot of racing. The race. This, well, this guy. Like like we know. This the race. I'm, I assumed it was F1. How was your race the race? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, that tentacle wasn't there. What is going on? <laughs> oh, NASCAR. NASCAR. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, yeah. enjoy. I had a friend, a close friend growing up as a kid who like taught me all about NASCAR when I was young. When we were on the playground at school uh, in like grade... Had to be like grade, sometime between grade two and five. Uh, he used to get everyone all organized and we'd each be a certain NASCAR like uh, or driver. And we he made like tracks around the school. So you'd have to like run around the maintenance shed past the baseball diamond and whatever. And we'd literally be running doing laps. Like I think that's how I stayed skinny as a kid. Uh, so all recess or lunch hour, we'd be he'd be running races and counting everyone's poll points. And then the next day he'd make a new track and we, like, I know nothing about NASCAR. None of us did, but we're just little kids and we're like, sure, let's just run around in circles. <laughs> Super funny. Um, but that's my introduction to NASCAR was him explaining which racer we are and what team we were on. And I remember okay. going to his house and his mom was, he just lived with his mom and his mom was so into it too, that like you called the house on a Sunday, you got yelled at by his mom. You couldn't call the house and interrupt the race. Um, yeah, it was super fun. Uh, I've never really been into NASCAR. I think it's kind of funny, the, the driving in a circle, basically, over and over again. But I have played NASCAR video games, and they are fun. Um, but yeah, that's just my... That, that was my intro to NASCAR back in, the, like, the 80s or whatever. And that's... Uh, yeah, it was fun times. But th that family, like, they were, like, obsessed. It was awesome. Like, they were wearing the, the shirts and, the, and the, all the advertising for the brands and cheering on their favorite racer. Um, yeah, it was good times. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, Mark says, sorry, I work for one of the teams, so I'm used to just saying the race. That's I was awesome. Only well, I hope trolling your team wins. Mark, I was only trolling you. I was only trolling you. A lot of road closures now. A lot of raid courses now? Or, oh, road courses. Oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. Like, not just on closed tracks in circles, like back in the day. Hmm. That's cool. That's good. That, that makes it more interesting, that's interesting, right? That's a fun job. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
<laughs> Anyways, that's totally off topic, but still cool. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, stay tuned. More streams popping up this week. More Hoplomachus. We've got to figure out some other games we're playing. Figure out some schedules. So hit subscribe. Hit the like button. Again, love to hear your thoughts on your feedback on this game. Canceled Kickstarters, fake funding goals, any of that kind of stuff I was ranting about. And feel, your score. And your score. Feel free to go in the comments and let me have it. I'm all good. Just I, I'm cool to hear other people's opinions. I can have an open mind. I've changed my opinions on things and can, I'm always looking to learn. Always want to learn and hear other people's experiences and views on things. Um, so yeah, let me know. I, I'm curious. Um, anyways, if you're looking for more playthroughs, hit up the playlist section. Thank you to everyone for clicking the join button or donating on Patreon, the super chats, all that stuff, allowing me to do this full time, allowing Mal to join me, allow us to keep going, allow us to keep upgrading, buying games. Thank you again to Red Raven Games for providing the copy we played today. Um, and we will see you guys in the next, in the next stream. Bye-bye.